You're listening to the Opie and Anthony channel on Sirius XM. Oh, my God. What's going on? It's the worst of Opie and Anthony. It's stupid. Something ridiculously loud and obnoxious. Sounded like the best of Down Syndrome records. <laughs> We're never going to make everybody happy. So why do we have to now make more people not happy? Oh, no. It's stupid. It's, it's audio vomit. If I may use the word duty. It's the worst of Opie and Anthony. Uh, oh, b- yeah. uh, by the way, we do have a copy of a certain song. Oh. Uh, that Joe Curry dropped off last night. I can't wait to hear this. Uh, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is probably, I haven't said the name or anything. It is probably one of the w- most embarrassing uh, moments in band history. How embarrassing. And I said I was going to disavow any knowledge or any involvement. You wrote it, and I want you to fess up right now, because I am just the vocalist. You are the guitar player in this. And you wrote the uh, damn song. Uh, hey, come on. You know what? Uh, bon Jovi was huge back then. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more like um, a very 80s sounding with the keyboard. And I think I tried uh, to put a little Duran Duran wine in my voice. <laughs> now I just pour wine down my throat. <laughs> try, to, try to kill the pain. It's good for you, Pop. <laughs> it's good for you, Pop. What are you guys, are you guys airing that piece of shit? Uh, right now. Right now. Stay on the line if you can. Right now. No. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just uh, lower you in the mix a little try bit. So. To, yeah, try to stay quiet and listen. <laughs> yeah, just stay Joe, I'm Uh-oh. I'm lowering you for a minute, but we'll go right yeah. back to you. So yeah. Oh wait, Joe, you have a setup for this song? Uh, if I'm not if I'm not there when you come back to me, you know why. <laughs> That's the setup. That's the setup. I guess the band was going for a love ballad. Yeah, the setup for the song is well. Oh. I was I was taking uh, real quick. I was taking flying lessons out at uh, out of MacArthur Airport. There was uh, the daughter of this uh, flight instructor that I was uh, absolutely smitten with, and uh, that's pretty much uh, what it, what it is. <laughs> I, I wrote I wrote a song to impress her. Oh. I'm coming down to a gig, so I wrote it in a pinch. Did it work? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we moved on from it, but you actually talked to Paul McGinnis. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I actually, uh, yeah, we got. Holy uh, shit! I'm, I, I can't believe that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm a massive U2 fan. Always have been, even though the last few have been a little rough. A few years, but well, we had to get we had to get permission to play at uh, to play down down in uh, Orlando to play uh, Disney World, and um, that was the only way we could get it was by uh, getting him to sign off on it. Holy it shit! That's awesome. Congrats. Oh, yeah. All right, back to the song. Sorry, I, I'm oh dumb. boy, that's just stuck in my. And head. now I want to preface. Okay, you, again, set I have up from to, you. I have to preface this because you motherfuckers. Um, are going to take this in the context of, you know, it was recorded yesterday. More years have been in front of me after recording this song than were before me. Well, why don't we just say the year? Doing this song. What year is this? This is in the 80s. It's so, some you know, mid, mid... It's early age. I was out of the Army for like uh, two years, so it had to be 82. This wow. is, yeah, this is very early to mid 80s. The sound was, was that was what everybody was kind of... We're talking. Doing, we're talking thirty years, dude. This is the thirty we're talking, years old. Mubarak just went into office. Right. We're talking. Yeah. Anwar Anwar Sadat was barely dead. Right. He was. T- <laughs> he was still warm. Still warm. You can hear it in Anthony's voice because uh, it Holy sounds like he had no nuts. I mean, his voice was was noticeably higher. Back yeah, then. a little higher. Although my range is better now. What were you like? Twenty five, twenty six. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> I was a mere child, <laughs> and uh, Joe wrote this song. I um, <laughs> I sang it. Uh, I believe it, it, Mike Klotz is playing bass. Mike Klotz on bass. Louis Graziano on the drums. Is the drummer. And, uh, and Plankfoot playing keyboards. Joe Curry on the keyboards. Uh, my brother is uh, backup uh, vocals. And, uh, of course, great guitar. It has the obligatory guitar lead in this song, of course. Uh, harmonies and, and uh, vocals that are so mushy. And, and lyrics are so um, douchey, douchey, <laughs> mushy, lovey dovey. They do not reflect my feelings now, which I would write a song saying, suck my cock, you fucking whore. That's what I would write now. I hear a lot of uh, a, a, lo- a lot of ex- Let's just hear it. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. Let's- I wanted to preface it first. No, I'm, dude, I'm what's sure the, it's good. What's the name of the song? I know. The name of the song is the name of the girl. It is just called merely Dara. Oh! Ted, Ted Dara. Bundy didn't apologize and, this much. 
<laughs> fucking plate of things. <laughs> and oh and a cute, a cute it's uh, the longest setup in, in the history yeah. of bad bits. By the way, a cute story. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Stand we by playing... for boiled shit. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing a gig. We were playing a gig, and there was a, a kind of a altercation going on at the door <clears throat> by, by the bouncer and some chick. And... Uh, the chick is yelling like she wanted to get in, didn't want to pay the cover charge, and she's causing a fucking problem. And uh, mm. me and Joe Curry are standing around, and I was like, you know, who the fuck is this bitch? And he goes, oh, that's Dara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this sweet fucking, you know, love ballad is to a flaming cunt. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> flaming. They all are. <laughs> 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 oh no! Okay, hold on. Dara hold on. from hold nineteen on. from nineteen eighty two. I, gotta, I, I gotta cover up. I can't. I am literally covering my That's face great. now with my shirt because I can't fucking watch or look at anyone. Joe and Joe, you. Uh, what's the <laughs> name of the band? The name of the band was Finster. No, I thought this was As Is. No, this is. Oh, you know what? You might be right, Anthony. <laughs> hmm. uh, right. As is with Z's, uh, probably. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Of course. <laughs> why, why, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> right. hmm. Here's Dara oh, from no. 1982 oh, with no. Anthony on vocals. Oh, no, I'm not And uh, Joe, who's now a big, huge star oh, on guitar. Oh, no. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was off a tape. It was off a cassette tape, so relax. That's all right. Oh, no. So, oh, no. Does it really matter? This is horrible. Oh. Someone For one second, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean look, shut you, up. there are endless nights we've all had them. <laughs> your heart was broken. Yeah. Dara broke your heart. Yeah. <laughs> I knew Jimmy wouldn't just let it play. It was not bad. Oh God, it's so gushy, <laughs> disgustingly yeah. fucking uh, generic. What do you sound like? It's driving me nuts. We need um, someone that knows their eighties uh, shit. It's 80s. got a Boy George kind of a uh, Boy George, yeah. Uh, Mixed with shoving Jack Lane's lifeless cock into a juicer. <laughs> Otto will be at comics at Foxwoods tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday. Oh, Foxwoods.com. Yeah. I'm s literally sweating. Why? I'm sweating. Why? Are you still thinking about Dara and how she broke your heart? <laughs> she didn't, I swear. You had endless nights? Yeah. Did you record that in a studio? You should have been arrested for trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, people are asking if me and Joe were back to back singing the vocals. Oh, God. Long hair? Oh. You had the long oh, hair? Oh, well, have the, you know. But it's a mix between an 80s new wave band and kind of like, uh. AIDS. AIDS. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <Jimmy. laughs> They're uh. calling you Aunt Laban. <laughs> Aunt Laban <laughs> coming in from Mike uh, in Woodbridge. Did you have a bandana tied around your mid thigh <laughs> hanging down, <laughs> and a couple tied around the mic stand? Yeah, yeah. I did have five multicolored pastel colored belts. Oh, each one a little looser than the next. <laughs> oh, jeez. Were you guys? Yes, no, where did? Ew, they should have all been around your neck. <laughs> 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 Were you guys? Is Joe there? People are complaining that they've just been ant rolled. <laughs> e Rock saying it sounds like wham. Do you have the photos? Do you have the, the promo photos of that? Uh, There's promo that, photos uh, for as is. Um, oh, no. Oh, Are there? Oh, yeah. Send them in so Ann could tweet them. Oh, God. You got to tweet yeah. that shit, Ann. Oh, God. So did you write the lyrics while Joe oiled your butt? Uh, sounds a little like... <laughs> Were you guys... <laughs> Were you guys hoping it would make a John Hughes movie? Put it this way. <laughs> at the time, yeah. I never thought if we ever got radio play with this song, it would be like this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was really hoping for something a little better. Uh, it's uh, Humpbacks <laughs> from Whackbag, Men Without Dignity coming in. <laughs>
<laughs> Anthony goes to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> someone, uh, someone just wrote, Paul and PA, you've got the tough. you got the power. <laughs> Dude, your heart, your heart was broken. What are you going to do? You sing about it. Yeah. That's what you do. You write like a power ballad. Uh, Steven S. from Bayshore, a suck of seagulls. <laughs> We're a little more old because I was getting uh, into what happened right. with this man's journey. Uh, no. Stop judging him. <laughs> Just give me something, uh, something to help me through the bad times. They want me. I'm always needing you. And this thing is turning to me. He should have been what, singing, what, what, Oh, Daryl. Oh, the pain. <laughs> oh, Daryl, you, you like fucking Vincent, mo. <laughs> Vincent the chin over there, shielding your fucking shameful face. Did she save the final dance for you? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Jimmy said he should have been singing. Puckering. My asshole is puckering. The fact oh. that Jimmy said we should have been singing, Oh, Daryl, <laughs> because this is so gay. Oh, man. It's fucking. But, but, you know, you wanted to save the last dance for you. Oh, Who are you, fucking Tom Cruise and I, Born in the Fourth? You, you ran in the rain to go to your prom? <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, wait a minute. Keyboard player Joe Curry checking in on text. Oh, God. And? He just put his hand into a meat grinder. <laughs> it's retribution. Oh, uh, let's see what you know, the... You know, you know, hey, look, look, if you, want, if you got to get a positive out of this thing, the harmonies were okay. Think about it. Just take everything else... There's no it. positives out of this thing, <laughs> well, no. except for everybody's blood. <laughs> uh, Joe Curry says, I have promo photos, 30 years, wow. and we finally get this shit on the radio. <laughs> wow. Wow, this should have been a hit. Every Dara... Both Daras in the country <laughs> would have loved this. <laughs> Maybe you can update it. Oh, Lawanda. Mm. Uh, ah, shit. I, uh, uh, no, I knew this would be I, really bad. It's not that and, bad, though. Oh, I mean, Daryl is going to save that last dance for you. I understand that. People mm. think this is an air supply tribute band. <laughs> I just uh, I just tweeted a picture of what Ant looks like as we're listening to his old song. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I've seen pedophiles walk into court prouder than he is right, right now. Right. <laughs> I can see the picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this sounds great. like Haircut 100. No. Do, 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 do. Oh, Dara. <laughs> then what happened? Mm. Ba, 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 save the last dance for no, me. I don't think the last dance was being saved. What was it? It was uh, something about romance. Uh, ro what was yeah, it? Yeah. What was yeah, it? I, I, we, I hope sure we'd sure have a fine. Have yeah, fine I'm sure we'd have a fine romance. It, were you, you sure you weren't singing through a hole in a fucking rest area, <laughs> singing a bromance? <laughs> I didn't know Anth and Joe were rock set. <laughs> You'd have a fine romance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently hey, that um, is hey, the line. That's good uh, lyric. Uh, Dan S in Toronto, Kaja, Kaja boo boo, <laughs> Kaja boo boo, <laughs> and then you, uh, UCF Gavin in Orlando sounds like culture flub. <laughs> <laughs> what happens next, though? This chorus yeah, is getting well, me. Can we hear the whole oh, chorus again? Yeah. Oh, I gotta hear the lyrics. You'll hear it again and again. Listen to the words. We don't know when to stop this fucking mess. Did you time say is the healer. time is the healer? I thought I heard fate is the dealer. That, can we rewind that? That couldn't have been what he said. I must have misheard that because time is the healer. 
Sometimes you have to say what you said to Anthony. Oh, <laughs> hey, you wrote it, faggot. <laughs> Wait, but fate, hey, fate is a dealer. Oh. <laughs> You said it. Oh. This is turning brother against brother. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If your ears could fucking hang each other, they would. So you didn't have to hear this. <laughs> Wait, let me hear that line again. Oh, I, I, I want to make sure. That was no. a pretty good one because fate oh, is a dealer. All right, we got it. Endless days, sleepless nights. <laughs> you have that now because you drink till 6 a.m. <laughs> and you fucking... You're killing me. Oh, fuck, oh. this is so bad. Why? It's wow. not. It's, it's, you know... Oh, I can't take this. It doesn't get better over here. And you don't Spank pray. Spanky1684 on Twitter. Tears for queers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, praying that you want me to... When's the last time you prayed and it wasn't over a toilet? <laughs> I swear I'll never drink that much again. <laughs> and Conway Tweedy, he writes, uh, flock of seagulls shit. Mm. Oh, the 80s. Oh, it's wow. quintessentially oh God, the 80s. It's so the 80s. Do, 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 do. hair band, though. Yes. Oh. There's like a, there's, they're bridging the gap between the two genres here. Oh. Sure. Oh, God. I, time. I, can't believe, I can't believe ever being that talentless. We've gotten as far as we have. I just oh. can't believe it. That was just fucking Yeah, but awesome. you know what? It says they picture me doing a slow motion roundhouse kick in the air. <laughs> uh, and the video. What is what is Dara doing in the video? Oh, ho hopefully fucking getting an abortion. <laughs> That's just uh, having a miscarriage. <laughs> no, she's probably walking out the door. Or, or she doesn't like you. She, she never liked you. Oh, yeah. So you know, I, I'd, I'd be rejected. You, you could take this song and put it to Steve Perry's. Uh, oh, Sherry video, and it would fit perfectly. Ah, uh, probably would be. No, they because they loved each other. Maybe I'd see you standing outside holding flowers in the rain, and they're wilted while she closes the door. Yes. Someone says in the video, Dara's flying into a bridge abutment in her plane. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's walking with a Paula Poundstone like pantsuit because it's 1982, and that's what <laughs> chicks wore in videos. Uh, me... uh, they're calling this song "Oh Diarrhea." <laughs> oh, let, me, let me go to Rick in El Paso. Rick. Yeah, is this Don Docking? <laughs> Don. Uh, it, I, I knew this was going to be bad, but this... What, what, was the, what was the stage outfit all about? Was it a Mike Reno thing? Where were you at? Did you have Japanese shit? Zippers, uh, where were you? Yeah, there were, you know, parachute pants, um, maybe a shirt with uh, uh, some Japanese lettering on it. Um, so no, lover boy. no head, was, no lover headband. Boy, right. You no want lover band, but um, you know, multicolored belts, cut off shit. Uh, what color belts? Yeah. Oh, oh, like uh, one a uh, red one, a yellow, purple, green, fucking, and, and one was latch. What is that? That's that the song. Cool. Joe just drove into a fucking <laughs> river. <laughs> Joe's recording something. Right it's better than the song. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Nothing. So wait. And it's you, bad uh, phone. You had multicolored belts. Joe Colback, you and you wear them on your thighs? No, no. I would wear them around my waist, but one would be like like worn like the, the right the right size. Yeah. And then the next one would be maybe one too loose. So it would hang on one side a little lower. Well, is that how the Hulk kept his pants on when he got bigger? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking horrible idea. <laughs> Five belts in case, what, you turn into Bob Kelly overnight? <laughs> <laughs> they were different sized. Yeah, they should have been. <laughs> different <laughs> colors. I don't yeah. say bad, right? Uh, so I mean, you know, if, if if you told me this was Duran Duran or any of those other mediocre uh, bands, I would think, you know, I wouldn't. It sounds, you know, recordable. I don't know. It's but the th the embarrassing part is it, that I, it was ever me. But see, what honestly, so what part. makes it worse is that or? thirty years have gone by. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thirty fucking years have gone by. If you were in the moment in the early eighties, okay, we'd still be beating you up, but. If <laughs> but I was, that was still sound trying, yeah. put it this way, if I was still trying to make it doing this music, then just fucking hang me with yeah. my multicolored belts. That would be sad and tragic. That would be sad. Yeah.
But I, I mean, I had to search out uh, uh, my buddy Joe Curry to find this on a cassette tape in a box of shit, literally shit, and uh, uh, a transfer. I mean, this shit is just part of what, what well, was would, going even on. Even though you were talentless, you were driven. At least you <laughs> well, made something, do like something down I, on the track. I didn't you just want to, you know, yeah. knock tin yeah. and install above the ground swimming pools. Can, yeah. I, put, can I put the bat signal out for uh, Coke Logic? Oh, oh, for what? Make a video? Yeah, I think we might need a video to if we can make yeah. an anima- yeah. animated. I think we might need that there. Yeah, uh, right. Coke Animation, Logic. Yeah. yeah. Coke Logic on Twitter. Let's oh, uh, bother Coke Logic today. <laughs> that would roll. We need a Dara mm-hmm. fucking video. Uh, <laughs> animation, actually. Yeah. A little more Dara. This uh, is good. Yeah. Oh, God. Only halfway through the song. Oh, thank uh, God. God. Oh, Jesus. Anything. Romance. <laughs> yeah, that was the original title of the movie with the, the Tarantino wrote "Fine Romance." <laughs> oh God! Yeah. You know what You're you are? Killing me! You are a drip. <laughs> My, what a, a wet drip. end! <laughs> oh God damn! That's your romance. <laughs> oh, this I really is. Him. You know, Dara's close to sixty, probably. Whatever. Yeah, gives a shit. Busted police now 50s. somewhere. Yeah, uh, with no so, teeth. Yeah, so goes, <laughs> and fucking trailer park. You're somewhere. going to Hollywood, dog. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've heard better sands in a. Better sounds in a paint toilet. <laughs> Dara became a hoarder. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, people, I picture people with mullets and fanny packs dancing to this. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who's been dumped by a girl named Dara is really, this is going to resonate. Oh, God. Look. I fucking warned you that it was really bad. Too bad it wasn't 40 years earlier. You could have been singing Oh Clara. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Phil Rizzuto would have signed up. Since that was his stupid wife's name. <laughs> the times we're going to hear that in a fucking Yankee broadcast. <laughs> Boo, Phil. Oh, oh God. <laughs> uh, this is so bad. I can't take it. It's only proper that you suffer. <laughs> I guess that's it. I'm joking. I liked it. <coughs> oh, no. There's more. Oh, fuck. Oh, I can't work. Oh, no. Now the refrain. Now I'm just crying. Is this, is this where we got to get our lighters out? Yeah. Are, you For this singing, part? are you singing with a clenched fist <laughs> and your, your eyes yeah, yeah. closed, all eyes fucking closed, emotional? And I, I have Ugh. the mic stand rocked back at yeah. about a 45 degree oh, angle. God. Horrible. I'm clenching my fist <laughs> and fucking like, oh, God. Oh, Dara. You smarmy oh. bag of douche. It's horrible. <laughs> you never met Dara. Fuck Dara. There I is, know. There is no Dara. She's some <laughs> drunk trying to get into a club. <laughs> Danny just put up the what final scene of the Breakfast, Breakfast club. club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the fist oh, how raised in the air. How awful was that? Oh, Where's speaking the field? of awful, my opening act this weekend, John O'Rourke. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny up. No, a very fine performer. He's on the bill. He'll me. be singing Dara. I promised him a plug. He will be singing Dara. <laughs> I'm telling you, Otto oh. and George Comics at uh, Foxwoods tonight, tomorrow, and wow. Saturday. Five shows Otto's doing up there I'm at Foxwoods.com. Kill. <laughs> Let's just try to keep the salty language to a minimum. Is, yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that. yeah. More? <laughs> oh, God. False ending. 80s false ending. Yeah. Stay tuned for the drums. It wasn't enough. All right. Oh, God. Oh, that, please. I just heard what that was. Send your love my way. I'm sure we'd have a fine romance. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'd have more respect for you if you said, take out your cock, I'm going to drop my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone's saying, uh, in this day and age, I should sing Oh Harris. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I missed your name. Sorry. Oh, my God. Oh Harris. <laughs> oh Harris. Oh, Dude, the instant feedback and, and the Twitter oh. is spinning like a slot machine right now. And, and the amount of feedback coming in and, is... I, look, I, I told can't, you. Can't even keep up with it. I warned you. I prefaced it, and still, it, I can't take you, it. I am, I am fucking so hot. And, I'll and say. You were back uh, then, too, with lyrics like that. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, though, honestly, though, like, if she had sent her romance his way, <laughs> honestly, it probably would have been a fine romance. If, if oh, Dara. Why? Dara. I can't wait you can, you you can be your celebrating your 30th, your 30th wedding anniversary with Dara. Uh, yeah. With a house full of fucking shit. Yeah. Uh, and she'd see what your love was all about. You know, she sent her love your way. Because endless days equal sleepless nights. A You're fate really... to dealer and a fine <laughs> romance. <laughs> You're yeah. really picking up on Actually, the lyrics. Oh, there, yeah. yeah. Actually, oh. Dara would have divorced you and taken all your as-is money. I, all yeah. my as-is cash. That's right. That's right. I wonder how Dara would feel about Keith the cop <laughs> fucking leaving shits in your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> It worked out for you. Dar <laughs> Wonder how Dara would feel about girls who have to be ID'd when they walk in the door, <laughs> fucking showing their showing their clits as fucking FBI agents are coming by. <laughs> oh, <that's great. laughs> oh, Dara, I'm sorry, I came on that 14 year old in the pool. Send your love my way. I'm a fool. <laughs> Uh, All right, you, you made it, man. Uh, oh, made it. is it over? <clears throat> oh. oh, God. Oh, Jesus. All right. Oh. 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 All right. Wow. Oh, did you say I know it's so real? I don't remember. Now we're freestyling. I have a question, because obviously you're saying it's real, and understandably that Dara should want to spend some time with you yes. just to see how you feel. <laughs> it's just shit. Why should she? <laughs> like, if a girl doesn't like you, spend some time with me. So you, so she knows it's real. She's not interested. Oh, I don't know. She's fucking somebody who sings better, like Yoko Ono. <laughs> You know, as I fleece you out, you got no complaints. And this is where all the guys in the band, they come on the cracker, and then the lead singer eats it, and the video fades out. <laughs> so you can see how I crunch. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, fuck, oh, man. What a delicious torture. That, wow. that was really rough. I am like fucking, I, 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 I feel like I've just worked out. I am um, I'm tired. Oh God! I'm sweaty, and, and I'm on the brink of anxiety. Now know why ran back into Tower Two. <laughs> <laughs> Holy what? shit! What? Playing in the courtyard, Dara. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get away from that? <laughs> Jesus. Otto and George will be at Comics at Foxwoods uh, tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday. Yeah, Foxwoods.com. Uh, that song was so bad. Everybody's going to Egypt now. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> 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 I can't even make fun of Chip. Oh, Why? I knew a girl named Dara. Yeah. That's well, you got that to fall back on now, which is good. Ah, <laughs> which is nice. Well, now that's yeah. part of uh, radio uh, yeah, that's, history. Uh, it's now it's now uh, it's out there in the fucking ether. You're listening to the worst of the Opie and Anthony show. Serious oh. XM. Did you see footage of Rogan teaching George St. Pierre? Did I did I talk about that? Uh, Holy shit! 
He's fuck. He was teaching Saint Pierre how to throw like a spinning, like his the spinning back kick. Rogan is a fucking deadly yeah, fucking kicker, yeah. man. You don't even want to fuck with that guy, dude. He's teaching Saint Pierre on video and doing it better. <laughs> it's hysterical. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> a triangle choke is. They, is this what this is? Okay, there it is. It's where the, you're, the guy's on his back, oh, and uh, his legs are locked around your your upper torso, and your like your. How would you describe that? Your right there. Holy shit, he uses his own arm. He uses the guy's own arm to choke him. Oh, is that what's, what's happening? Yeah, he, yeah. Like, he gets around. Look, now he's pulling his own arm. It's, it's almost like a figure four. That's sick. And then you tap immediately with around that. Neck. Of course. Oh, yeah, you have to or else you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going to be out. <laughs> yeah, the guy, because the guy, you're, you're trapped. It's like uh, you're... you're your head and your arm are through between his legs. He's yeah. holding you there. I'm a terrible describer of things, which is Dude, good for the radio. I gotta just say, there's such gayness. In, Thank you. Uh, in I, that I was sport. just, I was about to say, you think at any there's time these a lot of gayness. any of these MMA guys in the middle of a, a match or something go to themselves, wow, this is really gay. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's two men wrapped up and squirmed <laughs> just... together in the smallest possible package they could be in. Yeah. They're touching every yeah. part. There's never a oops, I'm sorry I touched you there hey, in that kind of fighting. They don't care. They're grabbing you know, balls, assholes in the face. Speaking of they grabbing balls, it's kind of a segue, but there's a story oh. on Long Island. you got a kid with Mercer. Oh, yeah. And he's got yeah. some, like, super uh, strep throat thing, and he's in the hospital on a ventilator. And, they're, and the dumb news is like, oh, they don't really know how he got the Mercer. He's a wrestler. You're like, yeah, there It's you from go. the wrestling mats, you assholes. Ugh, those disgusting the, wrestling mats. That's how you get the Mercer. If you're fucking rolling around where someone else was rolling around all sweaty and shit, you might get what, what they had. Do you know what like you can get? Sweat. You, you get fucking, and I, I found this out, you can get face herpes from the fucking mat. Oh, man. Uh, you have, they have, these guys have to shower. Nice. Uh, Rogan said he uses a special soap. He said, I forget what it's called. It's this really intense soap. He goes, after a shower, just to be safe, he goes, I stand there for a minute yeah. with this great soap on me. It's uh, a Petri dish, those wrestling mats. Yeah. You get face herpes. Uh, all right. Uh, you could get the Mercer, obviously. Certainly could get, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, a bit of the gay. <laughs> a bit of the gay. You get some of the gay. Uh, we've talked about this. I, I just couldn't do that wrestling in high school. Uh. I, 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 I was one of those guys that wanted to try all the sports when I was growing up. But wrestling was one I just, uh, I just no. didn't feel comfortable Too with. Too close contact with other gentlemen. Oh, this is Rogan? Rogan, uh, what, wiping down his mouth? Yeah, he's got to wipe it down. You, again, you're walking in someone else's sweat barefoot. But I mean, this is him doing that. Is he kicking? Oh, this? yeah. Yeah. He, who, who's, uh, uh, who's mad is that? Is that his training area? No, I don't know where that is. That might be, it might even be in Canada. I'm not sure where, where this was, was, was uh, filmed. In a, his basement. No one him. But Rogan is throwing a. Imagine you like look because he puts his hands up and you're like, all right, look, I, I'm gonna fight Rogan. I'm, I'm gonna. He has this. He, he's gonna try to punch me, and then he just spins around and kicks you in the face. <laughs> but he's he's kicking like chest level. It seemed like oh, that's yeah. an, a horrible body blow. Jesus, that's oh, that's God. unbelievable. And he's really teaching it to him. Like uh, Saint Pierre is, uh... and he's so fucking fast. Yeah. He spins around and gets that. You'd absolutely think he was going to punch you, mm -hmm. no, no, and then a foot would be in your face. What I love about that is St. Pierre is uh, videotaping like he's seeing something really cool, you know? Because he wanted to learn it. He goes, can I videotape yeah. this so I can, I can watch this and learn how to do this? I can aim, But Rogan. Joe really knows what he's doing. I would love to see Rogan actually fight. Me too. I've tried to start with him. <laughs> <laughs> he pities me like I'm a drunk woman. <laughs> <laughs> Try to mix it up a little with him. <laughs> he, he could get some damage done, don't you think? Oh. Yeah. He's Crazy. We, we went out and he's just such a nice guy to everybody. It's like he, you'd have to really, I think, push him to to get a fucking punch in the mouth. But if you did, I'm it would a, be very unpleasant. I'm a big fan of the Rogan man. I'm a big, yeah. a huge fan of his comedy. It's a bummer he doesn't come around enough for me to check out. When I was hanging out in L.A. and I, just to get to see him at the comedy store, just kind of working on shit. Yeah. Was, oh my god, it was great. Yeah, he is great. It was great because this shit makes you think. I, I like when some of these guys make your make you think and laugh at the same time. Well, he's like a, a weird. You don't usually get like really, really tough guys that are like complete potheads and thoughtful. It's a, <laughs> he's a really odd combination of people. Mm -hmm. Rogan's like four different people in one. Yeah, guy. really, absolutely. It should just be one guy that could kick your ass, or smoke. Or one pot. guy that smokes weed, <laughs> right? Or one guy that's funny, right. Stand up comic, right. or one guy that thinks about a, a and weird one guy shit. That just sits yeah. there and yeah, you know, like could be a well, physicist. That goes with the pot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That goes with the pot. <laughs> 
You're right. He's uh, he's all three of those. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a really hard combination. He's a renaissance man. Yeah. <laughs> he's a renaissance ass. <laughs> hey, Chuck, what's up? Hi. What's happening, boys? Hey. Hello. Hey. Yeah, face herpes. Talk about some shit that sucks ass. I had that shit in high school. Got it from the wrestling match. Me and half my team were out for a while because that shit spread forever. And it stuck with me. Well, it's forever. But, yeah, the, uh, the herp is forever, man. Wow. Oh, yeah. Totally. And so where on your face would you outbreak, sir? Sorry, where on your face? Just your cheek and your forehead? My forehead mostly. What? Uh, what is it? It's like whenever I'm in the sun, it would, it would bust out real it's, bad. It's the, oh. it's the low-level herp that I got. I don't, oh, it's I, one. It's, right. it's the cold sore herp thing. It's the low level one that most of the fucking population has. Yeah, uh, and I've had it since I was eight because some stupid aunt or somebody kissed me when they had it. Yep. Uh, and I, it's been my fucking nightmare my entire life. But and you and you got it on a wrestling mat. Yeah, man. And uh, I kind of always got to be mindful. Like I got to like douche myself with SPF hundred because the sun can cause breakouts. So to keep me from looking like a shithead all the time, I gotta, I gotta really be aware. Uh, of He's absolutely right, though, man. Wow. It comes out in the sun. Mine is mine is the lip one. It's a fucking pain in the ass. Uh, pain I just heard ass. about this. I a weapon with my ex-girlfriend because that stupid bitch got it from me sweating on her while we were fucking. So, ha, joke's on her. Yeah, <laughs> it's extremely easy to pass along, too. Extremely easy. And most of the population has it. You don't want the other one. No. No. The other one's the bad one, the, the yes, sexually transmitted uh, number one. two, yes. That can be a, a bad, apparently, if people but, outbreak. But you got it from a wrestling match. That's fucked up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking the nerve endings pop out. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Does it look like herpes, though, when, on, your, on your forehead? It, I would never have thought that was herpes on someone's forehead. It looks like, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it looks it like a cold like sore. It's not herpes. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> it, it, it actually, like, it gets hard and... Like, you have to keep it covered with a Band-Aid, and you put some shit on it, you know, the Virax or something, and it'll kind of, like, turn green and, and scab off. But, I mean, it's just, it's freaking gross, man. Mm-hmm. All right. That and, and, sounds and, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you guys got it from wrestling. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah I was, uh, I just couldn't do the wrestling. No, no. Yeah, that, was, that was tough, man. You want to? I'm glad I could bring up the level of the show today, guys. No worries. I like contribute. Yeah. No worries. I, but I just heard about this. Uh, when I was in Austin and Joe and I went out with uh, Kenny and, and Joe's buddy to eat, it was like he was just talking about what we were eating. I'm like, fuck, I didn't know you could. See, you saw Rogan. He, he had towels and all sorts yeah, of stuff. Yeah. He, he knows how to keep his shit clean. His yeah. mat's clean, himself clean. He's got the soaps. I, I guess if you're in that world, you just understand it. You learn. The, I, bet, I bet you most people get it in high school and stuff before they before you know. Like when you're around guys that are professionally trained, everybody knows by yeah, that point. Yeah, but when we were growing up, we didn't have all these and. An Anti, uh, uh, these soaps. <laughs> I'm still fucking tired. <laughs> Antibacterial, I know the word. I'm just tired. We didn't have any of that. We had just one lousy bar of soap that didn't even smell good. Yeah. <laughs> that cleaned everything. But I want to know what that soap is. It's like a, it's a natural soap. It's supposed to be really strong. I'm always looking for a new soap. You want to talk to a guy? Like soaps. I do. You want to talk to a guy who has herpes on his neck from wrestling? Oh, my I, God. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know you could get this. And, and why is it just on your neck? Like, wouldn't it just spread everywhere? That's a really good question because mine is just on my my bottom lip, oh. which I don't get as, as uh, much anymore because I don't, believe it or not, you'll laugh when I say this, but I don't stress as much as I used to because stress brings it out big time. Do you take anything for it? Uh, the Valtrex. Also, there's, uh... The Valtrex, when you do have a breakout, knocks it down, and it keeps it way down your body for a long time. Lysine is supposed to be good, too. It's some kind of a natural amino acid, I think. Yeah. I think lysine's supposed to be good. But I don't, uh, I don't get as much, thank, thank God. But it, 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 it concentrates on one area for whatever reason. It maybe, just rushes maybe, back to the same maybe spot. Maybe Dr. Steve could explain that to Well, me. it's, uh, uh, it's herpetic, uh, and, uh... Let me s <laughs> yeah. Let me say hi to Garrett in Orlando. What do you got, Garrett? Hey, yeah, a junior year of high school, uh, was basically weighing in, getting ready to start a wrestling match, and this guy was just covered head to toe in these doors. And I uh, wanted the medic to check him out. The medic checked him out, cleared him uh, to wrestle, and uh, a couple weeks later, I started breaking out on my neck. So I went to the uh. dermatologist, and um, the dermatologist taking pictures is the worst thing he's ever seen. I've got herpes that break out on my neck that cover my entire neck that just seep and pus 
and it's nasty. Anytime I go out in the sun, uh, my life is ruined. Uh, wow. So do, is, is it on the front of the neck, like, or the side, like, whenever you bend your head? To... Basically, right on your Adam's apple. Uh, it comes out real big and just spreads out on both sides. And, right. and, and, and you get it in the same place every time. Every single I time. I did not know that. I Because uh, I always wondered about the lip thing. I didn't know if you, like, the guy with the forehead and now you with the neck. I had no idea. That is... Yeah. That is horrible. It's horrible. Not it's right. It, just, it, it ruined my fucking life. So how often do you outbreak, sir? Uh, probably like twice a year. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's about right. And it, it, and it just completes me, you know, shuts me down. I can't do anything. Do you do the uh, the Valtrex? Yeah, I used to be on Samfear, and they changed it up. Now Samfear? Master of the Japan flute helps the herp. Yeah. You just crank up his music yeah. and it goes away. That's... And the herpes hides. It's well, terrible. Right. <laughs> I know. When you start talking about Valtrex, everyone, everyone's starting to think out there, oh, fuck, sexually transmit. It's not. Yeah. This is very different, man. But the Valtrex yeah, the definitely one... knocks it down and it helps. Uh. And it's, it's brutal going to the uh, going to CVS, going to pick it up. You know, you look like... Uh, talking to a hot chick behind the counter picking up your Valtrex. Oh, really? You know what she's yeah. got? <laughs> you never, That's what you do. You go, what, what do you have? Stop looking at me. <laughs> what what sa salve do you have? AZT. Right. <laughs> You never try to fuck the pharmacist unless you're only picking up Allegra D. That's a, that's a that's if you pick it up Nexium, you might be able to fuck her. But if you're picking up Valtrex and Cialis, she's yeah. like, "Have you? Do you never learn?" <laughs> they really do know everything about you, the pharmacist. Oh, it's humiliating. <laughs> oh, it's humiliating. Uh, well, you know what? I went recently to a pharmacist. This, the pharmacists are dumb. And I had my throat. Uh, I was coughing last week, so I got some antibiotics just to knock it out. It was something. And I go to pick it up, and my girl is kind of behind me. So I go, and she goes, oh, do you have the, the Z-Pack? Which was for uh, it's yeah, an antibiotic. Strep, strep throat and all that, right. But it's, it could also, I think, be for a VD. It's like, what, the pharmacist. Oh, Seriously? Right, I think right. You, yeah, I think an antibiotic could be used for something right. else. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't care because it's strep, but shut the fuck up. Don't announce what I'm getting. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh. Uh. What's the matter with you? Unless it's are these your Magnum condoms, <laughs> then, then <laughs> what are you doing? Like what a stupid woman! Uh, uh, Fucking I, announcing it. I once <laughs> ran into. Uh, I, you know what? I'm gonna shut up. It's such second nature to up. them. <laughs> oh what? Yeah, I Wait, guess. I guess I. I well, who'd you run into? I. I uh, fuck. What's wrong with me? An old coworker or a friend? I ran into an old coworker at a pharmacy who was who was uh, sheep, sheepishly. Picking up something at the pharmacist and and was like was like oh fuck what are you doing here as I pick this up I don't know what was in the bag but his body language said a lot oh really that there was something uh, mm. was he walking mm. like a he had suppositories mm. in <laughs> do you have a small dog with him <laughs> <laughs> oh no getting some soup <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll shut up now. Sweet. But it was one of those, oh, what are you doing here as the bag is kind of like kinda going into a backpack and, oh, well, I'll well. see you see you tomorrow. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> God, you never want people to see what you get at the pharmacy. Mm -mm. It's just awkward. Yeah, it really is. And you got to say, like, you know, your name. And then and then they go, uh, okay. And then they, they blurt out the name of the prescription. You're like, oh, yeah, okay, that's good. Right. <sighs> hey, um, Hi. we're talking about, you know, the herpes and you know how we have to keep going until we have to tap out. It's Larry in Georgia. Larry, oh, go Larry. ahead, buddy. Hey, oh, hey, happy birthday, Jimmy. Thank you, Larry. First time through. Uh, right. I've been listening for years. Uh, All right, okay. more information, please. Okay, <laughs> uh, same thing as Opie said. Uh, evidently, one of my son's aunts or something kissed him near his eye or maybe on his hand or something, and he rubbed his eye. Now he's had herpes of the eyes for like. Uh, I always wondered about this herpes of the eye. We've heard this over the years here and there. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. This yeah. guy's saying it, huh? Oh, yeah. What does that mean? He's on, on bowel tracks. It's the same time as the other guys said. Anytime sunlight wow. hits his eyes, he yeah. just well, blind, that's, man. Well, the good news is your eyes don't really hit sunlight ever, so. Jesus. <laughs> Danny. Yeah, our house looks like a dungeon. How old is he? He's 12. Ah. And 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 what does it look like? Is, is oh. it around? Is it around the eye? No, no. It's, um, you really can't even see anything with you know by looking at him. His eyes look fine, but anytime the sunlight or a bright light hits his eyes, 
they just starts crying, man. I mean, just there's so some that are on the oh, outside yeah. of the eye, but then there's some that are actually on the eyeball itself. All right, thank you, Chef. Yeah. And, oh, and no. you can get a her, herpetic infection ah, on, on the to... eye itself. All right, what would you take, herpes of the eye or the dick? Mm. Wow, Jesus, Jimmy. Yep. That's I, I ask that to every date. <laughs> <laughs> and they say I have both. So no, that's not what they say. <laughs> oh, well, well, I guess you could, I, I, I I'm guess you could get both. <laughs> I guess you could hide the herpes of the dick. So I might have to go dick. Yeah. Wow. Who wants to walk around with a uh, herpes sore around their eye? And your eyes you use for everything. <laughs> yeah, but you the dick. big reveal. True. The big reveal. If you're like, hi, oh. look at this. Yeah, but it, hey, suck on my chop meat. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it was a tough question. It wasn't like, would you rather have uh, herpes of the eye or an ice cream sundae? I'd go with the sundae. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking. <laughs> of course, both both answers are going to be rough. Yes. <laughs> you want another one? Uh, Jerome in Florida, and then uh, he's got the herp of the eye. I need to learn more about the herp of the eye, Jimmy. The line tree. Uh, Hello? Like hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Hello. Jerome. Yeah, I got it when I was about 12. I'm 28 now. And uh, really, when I was younger, uh, it, it just it's like a cloud, like a, a white cloud kind of covering covering my vision. It disappeared in, into a cloud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it happened when I when my my uncle, he dropped a beer bottle. It cracked, it cracked the cornea in my eye, and then I took a flight across the country. And uh, I guess whatever bacteria got in my eye. Happened and I was in the hospital for All like right, three weeks. I'm never leaving my house. Oh. And uh, I took medication and basically whenever I'm sick, my body's weak. We just go straight to my eye. Can't see very well and then uh, you know I get better and it's fine. Ah. I don't take anything now. I don't take anything now because now I'm like I don't I don't have any reactions. But I also used to get it on my face because of it and on my lips. So herpes. Fucking annoying. Yeah. Wait yeah. a minute. Herpy you think mess. that all came from a dropped beer bottle? <laughs> no, stupid. It came from me oh. flying. From what? He said uh, that it, I, I guess his cordy was cut or whatever, injured. So and then yeah. uh, you know it left uh, it open for bacteria right, right. from the airplane to get in. But that's how you wouldn't get herpes that way, sir. Mm, well, I've had. That's that's how it, they said. Jerome. It. He probably went into the bathroom and then rubbed yeah. his eye. Jerome with, with fucking yes, what happened? What what Dominican sat on your face? <laughs> oh. You got a little bukkake in that cut Come on. in your eye, didn't you? Where were you when the hooker sat on your face with her dirty ass? <laughs> but he thought it was a good idea that. because you were still a virgin. <laughs> Wait, how old were you? Uh, I'd say I was probably 12 or 13. Uh, now, I might be a little too young. I think someone's mind made it a beer bottle, but I think oh, something else yeah, might have right. gotten rubbed on his uncle's face. beer bottle, yeah. was it? No, no, no. Would he shake it up in your face a lot? No, <laughs> that idiot. beer bottle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> would it have? Would it have two little cozies? <laughs> two cozies. <laughs> was it a long neck? Ah, yes. <laughs> Let's do beer jokes. Yeah. Was there a little piece of skin that went up over the top? <laughs> uh, you came to the right place for the sympathy. So. Yes, sir. We apologize. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, Jerome. Right. Bye. Thanks. You're listening to the worst of Opie and Anthony. It's the worst of the Opie and Anthony show. Serious XM. I understand why a guy robs a bank. I really, even though it's a terrible crime, and but if you rob a bank and don't kill anybody, you're going to do 25 years anyway. Yeah. So you might but as well if you kill fuck somebody. a kid, so you might as well shoot your way out. Absolutely. Yeah. You might as well shoot your way out. Well, that's why they. That's why they have. Uh, yeah, that's why a lot of times they do go shooting because they know they're going for for the rest of their lives. And why would you ever look at the robber? Fuck that. Would you take a peek when you're on the floor? Uh, no. I would just look straight down at the floor. That's actually. Why would you ever look? That's that's the the, the always the wrong move in every fucking bank robber. I would take. I, I would. I would have to take a peek though. You would take a if, peek. See if his back is turned, and then just blast the back of his head out. Well, you got a gun. <laughs> no, you already. They already checked you for shit, and you're on the floor. Check me. Guy ain't checking me for nothing. Oh, I see. They usually come in and go. On the floor. No, they, 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 most bank robbery is just some guy that goes up yeah. to the window. No one knows the bank's being robbed until uh, he's a out. Mm. It's not like the movies. And why, like would, that, the, like, why would you the, be the, the dummy that uh, pushes the button? It's the not my money. On the, I'm not the moving. Town? 
You see how they robbed that bank in the yeah. town? They just yeah. burst through the door yeah, and great. just start smashing faces. And, and That's how you got to do it. Yeah. But why would you be the teller that has to nervously try to go for the button? Fuck that. Yeah. You're not paying me enough. No, fuck that. I'm not going for the button. I was in an armed robbery, and I did look down. And I told my girlfriend at the time, look down. Really? Oh, yeah, well, years ago. What happened? I was in McDonald's many years ago in my in North Brunswick, and I was the girl I was dating, her name was Tina at the time. I'm getting chills. And uh, Seriously, that just gave me fucking chills. We're sitting facing, this was McDonald's in North Brunswick. And it faces out. Like, I mean, we were sitting at the counter looking out at the parking lot. And Tina and I were sitting, it might be nine at night, it was late. And I see the left, the, uh, there was two entrances, one to the left and then the front entrance, which is to my right. And I see three guys coming in. Uh-oh. Or two guys coming in wearing parkas. Yeah. Ski parkas. And it was August. And I immediately uh, knew we were, oh, shit. there was a problem. So the one guy comes in. I forget what he said, but he's got a pistol. And the one guy comes over to grab me and my girlfriend. And, Did he uh, say oogly boogly? <laughs> yes. He's like, you, got I love gra- you got grabbed by these guys? Yeah, but not. It How many was, people uh, were in the McDonald's? Not that many. Maybe 12. It was late. But they um, grabbed you out of everybody? No, 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 no. They were just trying to get everybody to the front of the store. Okay. They were just. So they grabbed me and Tina. He just corralled us. Right. right, right. And, but she fell getting up. Uh-oh. He's like, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, they're going to rape her in the back. I was really scared oh, about that. Oh, man. So we walk up to the front, and I was holding a couple hundred dollars of her money. This was like, I mean, this is probably 1988 or 89. That's before I did Santa. Wow. And uh, I remember the one black woman ran out the front door who worked there. And there was somebody corralling people from the front. So we, we were all up at the front, and I had my hands up, and I, I was like, I just told Tina to look down. Don't look at him. Do not look at the guy. Look at the floor. Look at the floor. And we could hear the guy in the back screaming, open the safe! Open the safe! He's screaming. And I, his pistol I actually saw. I was wow. Pants, I was man. nervous. And the guy, but the guy we were talking, who was out with us, goes, no one's gonna, we're not going to hurt you. No one's going to get hurt. Uh, but then you get scared. They're just going to take your girlfriend. You, they're gonna for, as a hot. It's like it was fucking horrifying. Uh, Holy shit! I never told that story. Yeah, and, we, no. and we're just standing there looking no, down Jimme at the did. floor. Yeah, I, I remember. We're this. looking down it's at the floor. Year, it's been a bunch of years, but oh, yeah. Man. And uh, but that was my first instinct was do not look at them because you don't want to. You just want to be a, a piece of the furniture, right? If you just stand there looking down, you don't want to make that eye contact. You're not the a guy threat. goes, oh fuck! Now he, he he could possibly you know pick me out of a lineup or something. Yeah, fuck do that. you feel violated? Oh, what do you No, think? I almost gave them the money in my pocket, but they didn't they didn't rob us. They did not rob the people, yeah. they only robbed the store. But did you feel like what after it was over, what happened? Like, um, I was scared when the cops came. Like I didn't see anything. I was just so scared cuz a gun had been way. I, it's like, you know, again, now yeah. I would just tell them what I mean, I did tell them what happened, but in that moment you're in shock. You know, you just had a gun pointed at you. Whoa. It's scary. It's fucking scary. Fucked up. Um, but violated Hard to say because they didn't rob me. Like the guy didn't. Uh, the, even the guy who, re- who she just happened to fall when he was corralling yeah, us. Yeah, didn't up. rob you, but they made they they made you do something that yes, you they did scared not us want a, to do. They scared us a lot, but it was it was a pure store robbery in yeah. the sense that the, even the guy who was out with us, you know, he was robbing the store, but he he wasn't abusive to us. He wasn't shitty to us. You know what I mean? I knew it. Like th- there was nothing personal with us mm. we were just window dressing just stay here yeah, and shut yeah, the fuck yeah. up and everything's fine this has nothing to do with you and That'd it didn't be great if your chick was like why don't you people get oh a my job God, great <laughs> i would have raped her <laughs> great right but that is what i was scared of is that they were going to grab her on the way out the door so you never know like, and then, yeah let's and then, take this and then the relief when they were gone a tremendous of relief course. but they ran right out but then hearing that guy yell in the back i mean he's gonna kill that guy that's got to be very scary when you're being forced to open a safe. Open the safe, motherfucker. Yeah, I don't remember what he was yelling, but he was really fucking yelling. I would forget the combination. Oh, dude. Oh, it would just man. leave my mind. Boy, that, that really is one of those things where it's like... Don't fuck it up. Yeah, it was very, 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 very scary. But again, there was like three Hamilton, guys... Like Hamilton trying to open the safe. <laughs> open the fucking safe! Leave, motherfucker! <laughs> you don't know how many had guns. Even, even if I had a gun, I don't know if I would have pulled it because... Yeah, when you got more people There was three one, guys. That's and it, rough. It was like, what are you going to do? Blast them all and with, nah. risk getting other people shot? It, that that would have been a tough call. Yeah, that is. That's one of those calls where it's like, ah... Oh, just stand here and... Just be prepared, but... Don't do anything. Yeah, right. that, that's a situation where you gotta you got to roll with them. Because there was a guy in the back who would have been shot. If you start hearing gunfire, oh, different. then you got to start, you know, self-preservation mode. But, yeah, you can't endanger. There's not a situation. If, you, if you're legally allowed to carry a gun concealed, it doesn't mean every time something happens, you pull it out and start right. fucking shooting. 
because uh, you could definitely fuck the situation. Well, up. you can get yourself killed because there was a guy yeah. behind us and the guy. It was like there was just they weren't all in your sight line. You know, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was. They're, uh... But they were literally the one. Those guys were just watching the doors. Just they just wanted they wanted to get out of there too. Right. Wow. How long did it take for the cops to show up after? A couple of minutes. I mean, the North Brunswick Police Department was literally a half mile down the street. Wow. Those guys are probably from New Brunswick, from the projects, or from Franklin, which was not yeah. that far. But were they, they African American gentlemen? They're black guys. Yeah, they definitely were. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but that's what I, I, I didn't say that when they rocked. I thought I said that when they were running. There were three I just black assumed. guys. They ever uh, uh, the catch them? I don't know. To be honest with you, I mean that's so many years ago. I don't know. Mm. Wow. Well, that's fucking harrowing. Yeah, that was fucking scary. Man. All right, here we go. Uh, Brendan in South Carolina. Brendan. Morning, boys. Hey, good up. morning. Uh, good. Uh, similar story to Jimmy. I was actually uh, my first sales job and walked into uh, a bank. I hadn't made a deposit because I was bartending on the weekends to get some extra cash. I probably had, I don't know, 1500 bucks, two grand, and was making a deposit into the bank and, you know, kind of chatting up the teller. And had an, you know, kind of elbow leaning up on the counter, looked left, and saw this guy walking into the bank. And I was like, wow, he's dressed oddly warm for July. And uh, he propped the door open with a little uh, uh, little footstep thing and uh, walked right in with a ski mask, handed a note right over the counter with gloves on. I realized what's happening and kind of put my hands right on the counter where I could see. He was a little bit shorter than I. He showed the butt of his gun in his waistband. And, you know, 30 seconds later, he was walking out of the bank with a bag full of cash. Yeah, it's the that's the best way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking, you know, don't get involved with it, no, the, no. especially if they're you fucking get yourself killed. Most times, I'm assuming, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's those sociopaths who want to hurt somebody. Yeah. But I really think most people just doing a store robbery like that, uh, with a lot of people in it or a bank, just want to get the fuck out. It's get... also the late night ones where a store is closing up yeah. and the employees are there. That's a dangerous situation yeah. because a lot of times they're just like. Well, all we got to do is kill these motherfuckers yeah. and uh, and no witnesses. Uh, more importantly, did you get to eat your happy meal? I don't oh, remember. Man. I said, "Don't take my McNuggets, <laughs> you black <laughs> son of a bitch." <laughs> I really white guyed it up on him. <laughs> or you just throw a McNugget at the back of his head. Here, here eat this, chicken lover. <laughs> Things you can do that will get you shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Let's say hi to Scrambler in Chicago. Scrambler. Scrambler. <laughs> morning, boys. Uh, hey, man. Yes, yesterday, my uh, uncle was a uh, huh? gentleman rang his doorbell, uh, dressed in snowmobile gear, you know, the, the coach, the bibs, and ski mask, and I asked if he had any gas or snowmobile ran out. Oh, yeah, you, you tweeted this last night, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, saw, I read that one. And uh, I talked to him. He called me before surgery. I talked to him real quick, and I talked to him right after he got out of surgery yesterday, and uh, so he said, you know, here, the shed's over there, help yourself to some gas. And then, uh, one was black, one was white, he could tell through the match. Mm. And, uh, so then they rang the doorbell a little bit later and they got into, I don't know what happened to lead to the tussle, but he said he, you know, kind of got into it with one of them because he knew that something was going to happen. And then, uh, he got like, you know, one of them hit him over the head with the gun and uh, they shot him in uh, one shot in each of his inner thighs, and uh, they missed everything, no arteries or anything. Oh. One went in and out, and the other one was lodged in. Um, and so he had to go to certain, you know, obviously when they left, he, he uh, called 911, he crawled upstairs, grabbed his 380, uh, crawled back downstairs and uh, waited for the, uh, you know, the police to get there, and he was... Uh, Four hours later, he came out of surgery and uh, talking to me on the phone. He was, uh, he wasn't, uh, seemed like he was all right for a guy who just got shot twice, you know. Jesus but Christ. That does make Anthony look less nuts for having yeah. his gun on him, though, because your uncle had a gun. I mean, it's like you do have to have it on you, I guess, because people don't wait for you to run upstairs. I, I don't, I don't answer the door, uh, without one. Like, if I see somebody knocking on my door and stuff, I'm like, who the fuck is this? Mm. All right. But then I just, I smile and open the door. Hi, how are you? Who, who, what do you need? <laughs> what do you want? I do that too. I make you know if somebody's coming like a service guy or something, I always make sure I got it on the hip and it's, you know I open it you know and that's the first thing they see. But yep. I don't, you, know, you don't talk about it, but you make sure that the first thing no. they see is the you know the, the the grip hanging out of your waistband or sticking out of your holster, and you know. Yeah, just you know, let them let them let them know. Um, no oh, shenanigans. See what you ought to do is you got to be subtle about it when they you go hi sorry for the delay I was just. 
Buffing my bullets. <laughs> Buffing your bullets. Yes, whatever it is gun people do. I don't, I don't know. Do you have buff bullets? I was washing my gun. <laughs> I was washing the bullets. <laughs> you don't wash your gun. No? No, no, How about no. you say, sorry, I had my bullets on tumble dry. <laughs> I was removing them and putting them in my gun. <laughs> well, we're glad he's doing well there, wow, sir. that's, uh, well. That's a hell of a story people. you got, Scrambler. Yeah, exactly. God, people are just brazen. Brazen. Those home invasions. Wisconsin, the only other state besides Illinois that doesn't have a, a legal carry law. They do have a loophole where you can open carry, but you can't have it on you in your car or in restaurants mm. or shit, so it's kind of worthless. But it is the only other state besides Illinois. No concealed carry law. Wow. All right. That's something. There you go. Damn. All right, sir. Have a good morning, boys. You Goodbye, too, mister. Let's go to Nate in Delaware. Nate. Hey, morning, boys. Morning, hey, Nate. Um, when I was in college, my uh, I got a phone call, and uh, I got a call from my dad saying my mom was robbed at gunpoint while manning uh, their car lot, uh, family-owned business. Uh, she was 40, nine months pregnant, and uh, there's a black gentleman. He came in, showed her the gun, uh, asked her to get on her knees, tied her up, and my mom just said, please don't kill me i'm pregnant and he said i'm not going to hurt you ma'am he stole a car hundred dollars in cash dumped the car about five miles down the road and they never found him she, your mom got very lucky wow when you said he pulled her on her knees i was like this story's about to get great like, oh God. <laughs> great <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Uh, she, she laughs about it now you know she tells the story and she had no fear it was just it was amazing god probably i probably look at life differently right i bet she thought she was getting hurt. oh yeah Fucking back of the head. Let's say hi to Robert in Wisconsin. Robert. Hey there, Bab. A couple more of these, and we'll move on. What's up, Robert? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Yeah, when I was 19, I was a manager at Wendy's, and uh, this two guys came in with shotguns with ski masks on. I thought they were just my friends fucking with me, so I kept pushing the shotgun away oh. until he smashed me in the face. <laughs> oh, God. And, yeah, and then I was like, oh, fuck, this is real. And then they took me back, and I'm trying to open the safe while I have fucking blood coming down my face and shit. I'm like, oh, man, I was all fucked up. Why would you assume it's your friend? Exactly. Yeah. You never... Oh, you silly oh, gooses. I just... I didn't think it was real. I was just too young and stupid. I was just like, I don't know. It just didn't seem real to me. It would be a great prank to pull on your friends if you knew no one else was around, but... Yeah, exactly. But so fuck. Just a cop comes in and blows your head off. Yeah, exactly. You're standing there with a gun. <laughs> wow. All right, guys. All right, man. Let's say hi to Charlie in Staten Island. He's retired NYPD. What's Charlie, up, Charlie? Charlie. Yeah. On the silent alarm, they got a delay on the button. Um, it's like three or five minutes, so that gives the time for the robber to get out so there's no hostages, hostages wow. taken. Wow, look at that. Did Never they really that? do that? Yeah, there's a delay. That's a long five minutes for everybody. I know. Yeah. What if they're abusing people and hurting them? Uh, I don't know, but they, I guess they don't want a hostage situation, kind of like dog, dog day the afternoon. afternoon, right. Okay, that makes sense. Logically, wow. I guess it makes sense unless you're in that situation because you, you you would hope yeah, someone comes like, immediately if you touch you know push that button. Yeah, you need help immediately. But why, Charlie? I got to call you out on this. Okay. All right. So there's a delay because they don't want a hostage situation. But why wouldn't there be no delay? But the NYPD allows five minutes. Ah. Oh. You know oh, what I mean? Well, well. So you know exactly when the button was pushed. No, they. they through the system somehow. When you when they push the button, it's all it goes automatically. But the delay is on NYPD's end, the dispatch for end of it. Oh. Well, that seems like it could be a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah I think that they probably uh they probably wait out I bet you they wait five minutes before they enter the bank. Because you, 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 you could probably walk outside and the cops are waiting for you. I don't see a five minute delay. What if they're murdering people? What if they're in there spray painting graffiti or whatever they do? <laughs> Guy who just goes off point. <laughs> Jimmy, I don't know why they do it, but I know that it's. Done. What if they're in there no, turning the chairs done. upside down and throwing the pens all over? <laughs> then what happens? And ripping the calendars up. Putting the deposit slips where the withdrawal slips go. Yeah, what if they're doing that using all the ink in the pens? <laughs> then what do we do? Go ahead, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. All right, Charlie. He's had it with us. Yeah, just oh, a little beep, beep, beep. But don't, don't be the person trying to push the button. No, don't do that. 
No heroes. No heroes, because, you know, the company doesn't care in the end. They're not going to give you a big fucking bonus if you survive no. the, the bank robbery and save them money. I would be a hero, and I would stand up, and I would tell them, I'm not standing for this, and I would point at the table. I'm, <laughs> I'm a hero. You think that would cause problems? For my teeth, yes. One, <laughs> one fucking gun butt to the gums. That must have been something just seeing young Jimmy Norton with his head down. Huh? Uh, don't, look, don't look at him. Don't look at him. Were you able to communicate anything to your chick while while this was going on? Yeah, we were standing. Just... I just said, just I just quiet. I was like, just look down. Do not look up at them. Don't look. What'd you say, motherfucker? I said. What'd you say? I said. <laughs> what do we expect from you people? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we expect. This is why gentrification. <laughs> it was on a long forty-five minute discussion about gentrification. <laughs> <laughs> a debate. I'm not going to debate you, Jimmy. <laughs> this isn't a debate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's that from? That far go. Oh, yeah. right. That's okay. You're listening to the worst of the Opie and Anthony show, Sirius XM. We have William oh. H. Macy outside, and he only has a few minutes. Uh, so how it. are we going to do this? Triple, you, you want to stick around? What do you want to sure, do? Sure, I'll hang. All right. You know William H. Macy? Yeah. Yeah. Bring it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking to Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him in here. William there H. Macy. Is. How are you, sir? Hello, sir. All right. We got a full house today. Yeah, I know. Triple right? H from very the WWE. You? you got Patrice O'Neill, very funny comic. Bill Burr, very funny hey, comic. Hey, Anthony. God damn, OP. How you what a head of hair on you. Jesus. How about that? Pleasure Man. to meet you, sir. He's dressed just like the other hey, show. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm yeah, that's, that's definitely. <laughs> I would assume that that is uh, hair for the role. I would assume yes. that's hair for the role. For shameless. <laughs> but that's good that you could grow a head of hair like that. The Jesus. ladies like it, I gotta say. I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah, my wife. Yeah. You're like, Damn, I can't grow hair like that anymore. That's the best part of being an actor. No matter how you look, you can say, no, it's just for a role. Yeah, it's for yeah, a right? role. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, The reason I'm so toasted in the morning is for research. It's research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was reading something. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, your, your character uh, on Shameless uh, drinks. Yeah, drinks a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, now, you, you stopped drinking? Volume. Yeah, turn up his volume. Uh, Someone to, roadie that mic. Right, right. E-Rock, help him out. Help out uh, William H. Macy. Shouldn't have to do that himself. He's a big star. Well, yeah, his character drinks a little bit. Yeah. Yes, I, now, uh, I, I've been known to drink a bit myself. I'm taking a little bit of a break for it. It turns out I like drinking a whole lot. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Like, because uh, because I was reading that you, you kind of stopped, and uh, you're what are you, a Scotch man? I do like Scotch. You like a good Scotch. You can tell by the color of my hair. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it seems to do the follicles well. <laughs> Every once in a while, I think it's a good idea. To, I I've suddenly realized I have limited number of brain cells left, and perhaps I should marshal my forces. In Just the kind of uh, twilight of my <laughs> twilight. Of, yeah. Well, you seem to be able to uh, work. Um, you, you know, so it's, it must not be out of control. <laughs> what was the I first mean, part? Well, yes. no, he's able to work. He's done a, he has, he has a great what? body of work. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. not like it's gotten in the, getting in the way. Well, it's, it's great to play a character that's lit up all the time. I mean, for the first time in my life, sometimes I'll hold the line so I can make more faces. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Mm. It's a, it's a great thing. I, we, Frank, the guy I play, is a drinking alcoholic. He's an addict. He'll take anything. So every single scene is just, <laughs> there's no wrong possible in that role. Are, are you going to get up off the floor and act? Because I'm, yeah. I'm early in Shameless. The yeah. first couple episodes, you don't see uh, William H. No. Well, you see. He's on the floor sleeping. And I'm like, what is he gonna, <laughs> that's his show. When is he going to start <laughs> acting? It was a contractual thing. I said, I want to get a lot of rest in the okay. pilot. No, I, I, I bring that up because everyone says, no, it, it becomes, uh, you know, you know, you're way well, you'll more see in it. A lot more. But I'm only two episodes to. in, and so far, you know, the Did rest you see of the, the characters. Went to Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me off in Canada. yeah. The rest of the rest of the characters are holding their own, certainly. And and William H Macy shows up to sleep on the floor. That's what. That's so far what I've seen. Yeah. My entrance into the series. is yeah. Unconscious. <laughs> yes. Mumbling. In the you right. know you've made the big time when you can sleep and get paid big dollars. <laughs> right. That is the yeah. ticket right yeah. there. Yeah. Is that what made you sign on? You're like, all right, I get to sleep for the first like, three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> totally chill. We're just yeah. beating him up. He's a great actor, obviously. <laughs> uh, Shameless is based on a British show. I did not know this. It's a great series, too. Same title. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we've got some of the same people working on ours. The creator of the thing, Paul, has been helping with us, and the guy that directed their pilot directed our pilot. Mm -hmm. It's at once the same and completely different. Right. It's an American version, and 
I believe, like uh, like The Office, it's a it's a successful transfer. Yeah. Are you glad it's uh, not on a, a network that you're able to really go go the full distance? Because sometimes shows seem like they have so much potential, but they put them on a network, and it's like, ah, oh, come on, I want to hear realistic speech. I want to hear some real language. It's a double-edged sword. On one hand, on the networks, you make the serious money because they <laughs> do so many more. Uh, but you're right. Uh, having written for television a good bit, it's tough. You, you can have no language, no... No re- drinking no sex, for the most no, part. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I once wrote a thing where a Nothing. 14-year-old girl was smoking a cigarette. They said, you're joking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's wouldn't quite, even consider it. Like it never happens. Yeah, fourteen year olds. There's don't something smoke about cigarettes. just taking reality out of uh, uh, network television. I know. Which is not uh, only can insulting. people not smoke cigarettes, but if they do smoke cigarettes, they better die. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know this uh, this shameless. They're smart too. It it opens up with uh, William H Macy's teenage. Is she a teenager? She's probably in her early twenties, I guess. Running right. the household. Just walking around trying to get everyone ready because, you know, he's irresponsible. He's drunk somewhere. And she's walking around the house in just a T-shirt, no bra. And I'm like, okay, I I can handle this show. Oh, she's Very fine smart. Looking at Emmy Rossum. She's the, and then she she's the naked by the end of the first episode with the, with the guy from the club having sex on the floor. I should warn you already that you're going to see me naked. Too. <laughs> oh, I was going to bring that up. That's the one episode I saw. My girl was like, yeah, William H. Macy's in this. She you know, I love this so guy. Sorry. And then I see your ass and I was oh, just did? like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> it beats working. <laughs> uh, I thought it was bad enough in his boxers trying to get out that window. Yeah. Uh, is in, this in the, the hotel? <laughs> that was great. We're, okay, all right. We're, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to hold back. We're all huge farts. Nah, who is it? Huge farts. Great, great line in that thousand show. times. Say, Mr. Smith. They go who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who? <laughs> just every what a just a catastrophe of screw ups on uh, on that character's part, which oh, is yeah. just what a brilliant character. It's like a a despicable yet such a sympathetic character, and I think uh, you. You've pulled that off so well over the years in a lot of the, the characters you played. Not that it's a typecasting or anything, but um, like the the other one. What was the one? Uh, uh, Boogie the Nights. The, yeah, Boogie Nights the, was another prime the example cooler of just was a great this character poor too. son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh my god. Well, it uh, turns out if you can do that well, you can have two homes. Yeah, uh, apparently. So. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. Did, did he just him. nicely say I'm fucking rich? <laughs> yes. Good guy. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think got to practice what, doing shit like that. I think that's what he said. Yeah, you, just, you, you just say it in a matter of fact way. <laughs> if no, I sympathize my way yeah. to two homes, my friend. In, uh, right. in the cooler, <laughs> you were able to take that whole kind of you know loserish character, but that was a leading role for yeah. you, and uh, it kind of. It, it turned around uh, during that movie where you turned into more of a, a winner. Well, are you a method actor, by the way? Are you like when you work in, are you like a drunk guy? And I can't like when the guy says cut, you're not like, hey, so I like life. Or are you like still fucking <laughs> drunk guy? Like, were you Fargo the whole time when you was in Fargo? <laughs> Fargo. <laughs> no, no, I. I don't do that, and I, actors who do that are really boring to do. <laughs> God. Tell a joke or something. I know, it's just acting. It's not, you don't have to I, have I've never don't take yourself so that. seriously. To me, any, you know, I mean, it made a few movies here, and there's so much waiting around, you would be off camera more in that character than you would be on yeah. camera. Yeah. It, I so never I have some that. fun. I can't yeah. have fun. I have to stay in this character. I'm a serial mm-hmm. killer. Yeah, it's, and it's, it doesn't help. <laughs> doesn't help in the end. No, it's exhausting and it doesn't help. It just annoys the crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They probably want a human being there to to deal with. And That's the most important actual. fact is you can still have two homes without it. That's yeah, right. see, so. it seems to have worked. I got to ask you something. Something we were all curious about in uh, Boogie Nights. A line you said, whether it was a flub or not. Uh, she has a, an ass in her cock. That's right. Uh, was that a flub? <laughs> I did take one. I said it correctly. Take two. Uh, Paul Anderson said, you said um, ass in her cock. I said, I did. I'm so sorry. Um, take three, I did it right. Take four, I did it again. He said, you did it again. I said, I didn't. I swear to you, I didn't. <laughs> so uh, he, it ended up in the film. There was some um, there was some hidden truth in it, uh, I guess. Well, you know. a cock, yeah, like is, used, a cock is, ca- is, a, is, is, is a pussy. Like it's a it's a street lane. Since when? Four, yeah. yeah. Right? Wait, who's who? You've been talking to? I'm saying. Trees? I'm telling you. Pimp talk. A cock 
is a is a twat. As the official brother of the room, <laughs> yes, he's telling. I'm just us. telling you. That's white why people are going to pick up on this. I think in it was two more years. like yeah, yeah. that's a two year buffer period we yes. got to go through as white people <laughs> to pick up on black vernacular. So William H Macy that. was ahead of his time in that fucking movie. <laughs> no, he's that trying that to help was, you out, William. That would be something that character would have done. It's like to screw up because yeah, just so, so frustrated angry. in that moment that you're, yeah. you're screwing up. I think that that was uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> More of the angle they were going for there, Patrice. <laughs> were, you, were you ever afraid of, even though the characters, uh, though they had similarities, were a lot different, were you ever, ever afraid of becoming typecast as like, here's this guy, you know, this poor sure. sap kind of guy? Really? Sure. And, and Still uh, what, am. Did, did uh, you, are you really? Well, yeah. Because this you do something well in Hollywood, they'll certainly ask you to do it again. Do it again, right. Be well, this role, The Cooler, is a good example. Mm -hmm. I turned that film down about three times. Great I thought, movie. i got to call a moratorium on this loser character right. that I'm doing. But it was too good to turn down. That's why mm -hmm. I like Frank Gallagher, the character I'm playing mm -hmm. now. He's, he may, he's certainly a loser, but he's got a lot of power to him. Yeah, so yeah it's him. not the pathetic no. being no, stepped not at all. on not loser. At all. No, uh, that you, know, you usually play. I, I, yeah, I realize we haven't even really explained Shameless in your in your own words. What's the what's the show about? It's tough. I play Frank Gallagher, the uh, addicted alcoholic parent of six kids. Uh, they make their way through the world as best they can. Hilarity ensues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get guidance. I'm on um, board. I'm going to watch. You. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> i say, it's great. It I, really is a great show. I don't show. like anything, and I particularly <laughs> usually don't like the stuff I'm in. This is fantastic. So was that your reaction when you, got, when you first got offered the project? I mean, because I, I would think that you have just have a stack of scripts outside your door every day. I'm glad you think that. No, that, that doesn't happen. Really? Outside what level do you have doors, to get to? Two doors, Bill. Two doors on both coasts. <laughs> right. I think there are about four actors in the world that get, have the choice of anything they want to do. I'm not one of them. Um, I, I, no, I liked it immediately. I read the script by John Wells. It was a fantastic script. And then I saw the series, the British series, and right. I was sold. Oh, wow. Do you have a trouble uh, changing the character a little to adapt to you uh, when you see uh, a series that is being adapted from a British series, I would think it's kind of hard not to try to almost do an impression of the guy. Well, I stopped watching. It was oh, you did. It's good enough that I realized I'd better not watch it. I do that with trailers now because movie trailers give, give away too much information. Yeah. So uh, if I have an on-demand movie and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to see that, and I hit the trailer, I'm like, okay, good enough. I'm watching it. Like two seconds They in. show you all the way up to the resolution of the third act. Yeah, I don't, yes. I don't need to see that. I don't know why they do that. The best, one ever, the best one ever was Speed 2 when they actually showed them getting off of the boat and <laughs> running around the island. So it just killed the whole suspense of how are we going to stop the boat? It's like, well, obviously they stop it they somehow. They figured it out, right, right. That was another thing with, uh, what was that <clears throat> Tom Hanks on the island uh, movie there? Castaway. 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 Oh. During the trailer... I mean, they show him yeah, back home and trying to get into uh, with this relationship <laughs> with his, his ex-girlfriend. It was like, well... They show the oil tanker picking him up. Now he gets off the island. Right. And the whole thing that he's going to kill himself or yeah, something sure or, or live the there forever. Right. It just... Uh, trailers, they really have just destroyed... Uh, Movie watching. And is there, is there a, a neighbor, Will. Is yeah. there a Hollywood... Yeah, uh, 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 is there a Hollywood stigma... To doing TV after you're doing movies your whole career? Do, do they look at you like, like, I can't help it, but I look at Chris, Christian, uh, what's his name there? Slater? Oh, Slater. Slater, like, uh oh. No. Like, I, like, to, like you know what I'm saying, but is, is Hollywood look at it like, oh shit, William H is doing, sh oh, he's on Showtime? Could be. I, definitely there used to be, but. Used to, yeah. In all honesty, I gotta say right now, I think the best stuff being done anywhere is being done on television. Yep. I gotta agree with you. I see the uh, the little indies that come out every once in a while. There's one that's great. There's a, a a film or two each year that comes out that's great. But the most challenging stuff, the best stuff, is on television. And I think you're cable. seeing a lot more actors uh, with reputable careers yeah. uh, going to, uh, especially the cable outlets and uh, things like that, uh, and putting out some good stuff. You oh, know, totally. Buscemi, Steve Buscemi. He's fantastic, uh, going to isn't his he? show, yeah, uh, uh, Boardwalk Empire. Also, I really like to act. I like to do yeah. it a lot. And when you do a TV show, you get to act a lot. And mm -hmm. as you were saying, when you do a feature, you get to sit around and wait a lot. Yeah, so there's not a whole lot of working involved no. sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Another person on instant feedback fun. going, "Look, uh, William H Macy isn't in the show, but he's telling us that he's going to be in the show a lot more. This guy's two uh, episodes in. 
yeah. saying that Macy's just kind of laying around so, no, so far. You'll, you'll see more of me than you want to. <laughs> I like the fact that, uh, <laughs> you know what else is good about this this time we're living in is uh, on demand and being able to you know, look at some of these shows on Showtime without having to be there uh, and watch it live. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's a lot more convenient. I know. Have yeah. you gone back and tried to watch television where you have to sit through the commercials? Oh, God. It's it's ridiculous. It really is infuriating. Yeah. <laughs> They're louder. There's more television than there is programming. It's, yeah. Uh, and I mean, then I like when the local spot jumps in and the sound is so bad because uh, it's like some local car dealership I know. that they went to. And I, I just love that they, they, thought, they thought if they made it louder, that would like, like commercials were already <laughs> yeah. annoying. Let, let's, let's, you know, <laughs> yeah. let's we'll badger them, them with that. Not, I've, I've, I've heard they actually do things now, you know, because the TV. TiVo, you don't get credit uh, as far as like ratings. Like TiVo doesn't count because they know people fast forward, oh, and fast they have this thing now. Where you, if you fast forward these advertisers, they have like ways of like when you fast forward, they'll still have their product, so you still kind of see it yeah, on some yeah. level. It's it's oh, really uh, gotten to a psycho level. That's why you know, hey, Showtime, gotta love it. Yeah, subscribe, because pay for it, you, and you don't have to. Yeah, because uh, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> you, yeah, you're not dealing with commercials. Yeah. You get the whole show. It's not like you, you're getting 20 minutes of programming and 20 minutes of commercial. Hate that, too. I know. Our show is 55 minutes long. My wife's on a TV show, and hers is sometimes 42 minutes mm-hmm. is an hour. Yeah. 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 Who's your wife? Felicity Huffman. She's yeah. in Desperate Housewives. Yeah, yeah of course. Felicity, she delicious. Delicious. <laughs> 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 so would you, you said your wife is Would delicious. you have got that without Shameless, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think Fargo got him that one. <laughs> yeah, Fargo. Yeah, might. Yeah, yeah, the Fargo, maybe. You, you picked the wrong show. Come on, we're mm-hmm. all out of our leagues. We all know it. <laughs> Just it stop. It doesn't hurt to be married. <laughs> Oh, that's great, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, She's so, also on Sunday night, too. We just barely missed oh, really? with each other. That's that's good that that didn't happen. Yeah, that would uh, probably cause some uh, That would friction. be another show idea. Some, there you go. some friction. Right. <laughs> and uh, I guess no haircut in the future. Well, you gotta live with, got to live with that. Of, I might do an indie. Uh, i got a couple of films. We're on our hiatus right now, so it... Remains to be seen whether I can keep. I'm sure they can make a wig out of that, like a, a, f- a fucking shameless wig. Oh, that looks pretty. That looks pretty Wait, so he's, he's keeping the hair, waiting to see if there's another season. No, right. he said he's going to do a movie. He's not playing. Nah, he's keeping the hair for shameless. Ah, we're going to do another season. They haven't yeah. picked it up yet. But do I'm you? Sure. It's obvious. Are you I, always acting? Or do you take time off right or right now? Something? Yeah, much more than I wish. Really? Sure. Yeah. Oh. But Felicity that's... Huffman being on a popular show, you could take some time off. Ain't nothing wrong with. Digging in her pockets. Hey, you know, <laughs> that's true, man. Fall in love with a rich Y'all girl get divorced. She's gonna fucking get you. Bad <laughs> no, no. Take her money now, save it, and give it back to her when she, <laughs> after the divorce. I live in California, man. It's our money. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Brutal. No, wouldn't wish that on anybody. Believe me. Yeah, yeah it went through it. I ah, yeah. went through it that like years, years ago and. Oh boy! You've been free for a little while now. Took a while. Yeah, for many years. He's been free for no. I mean, free from the the check oh, writing. from having to write that check. Yeah, hey, oh, free from the check writing. Can, you can have I ask to a, a Fargo it. question, sir? I'm sure. a I'm a big fan of of the Cohen brothers. Yeah. I, I love the Cohen brothers. What uh, is is their process like? Is that, are they cool? Are they are they weird guys? Or like, is it is just is it a fun thing or is it a a really professional thing, you know. I, like I don't, you know what I mean. Uh, like they yeah. cool. Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> they are weirdos. <laughs> they are sort of uh, film geeks. They've seen every film ever made. They are exquisitely prepared. They're very fun to be on the set with. Uh, uh, it's about it's about the best working experience you could have. They're not they're not mentioned when people talk about great filmmakers, man. I think they're But they made they made fantastic great films. Yeah. When you I mean if people start talking they'll they'll be they'll talk Martin Scorsese's, they'll talk uh 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 Jesus Spielberg. You you don't hear the Coen brothers. You do to people who love movies, but you yeah. don't I mean I think they're under the radar still the Coen mm-hmm. brothers and mm-hmm. they make great films. Miller, Miller's Crossing is one of the best that, gangster movies ever oh, made. True man. Grit was fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was. I, thought oh, that I looked, think their their place in history it. is assured. Looked great. Patrice, yeah. no, not so much. But I'm never going to get. T- I, I I love them, and I need you to do me a favor, sir, is to <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> let them know that I don't 
remember any black goddamn characters in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need you to do is just say sirs, Cohen brothers. Feet, yeah, I, re <laughs> I remember. I'm text them right now. <laughs> I remember Fargo. I remember Miller's Crossing. Every great little. The There's Dane. no black people in Fargo. The, no, I'm saying, I'm saying it's the just movie. nothing. I mean the city. It means Fargo. <laughs> just, uh, but I'm saying, put one yeah, in. The Coen brothers are into realism, so like, they're going to do Fargo. They put a they... Chinese guy in fucking Fargo. There's <laughs> Chinese food made a... <laughs> everywhere. There's Chinese <laughs> restaurants everywhere. For Chinese. I got sushi it's... in Nebraska. It's hard to love, love the Coen brothers like I do. And they and there's just no no black characters in there. They've never pushed one. They're playing the percentage. I mean, the they, 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 they fucking put over... um. Javier Bardum, this foreign guy. They put him over. Just put one black character over. That's all I'm saying. Patrice O'Neill. No, I'm not even saying me. <laughs> just I don't anyone? know if I can pull it off, oh, but yeah. they're, they're great. But I'm saying it's hard to stay focused. That's you, ever, you, ever see him, uh, you ever see him get uh, upset with each other on the set? Anything like that? It's kind of no. got to be hard to work One's kind of like in that. charge, though. Like they, they, it, yeah. It's never directed by them. It's like directed by one of them, <laughs> and then the other one's like the well, writer. Or something. Ethan writes more and Joel directs mm -hmm. more, but they both do both. I mean, they're both. They're amazing, set, man. They're, they're, they're sure. damn amazing. And oh, one of them's nice. married to uh, the, the star of Fargo, uh, Francis McDormand. McDormand, yeah, right, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What a great incestuous business. <laughs> <laughs> I love I this made business. Movies before they got married, though. Ah, uh, uh, they they said it again. They were making films together before. Oh, Francis McDormand, right back in. But Fargo is her big, her big one though, right? She won an Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. What is your favorite role you ever did? Like, just like you go, man. I, I, you I felt was... good when you after you did that one. It's like naming your favorite child. You can't quite do that. But uh, I did a little film called Happy Texas that I just adored. Nobody ever saw it, but I liked mm -hmm. it. Uh, there's a mammoth film called State in Maine. I had a great time in that. Mm -hmm. What? I did one of the Jurassic Parks. That was... Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, That's, you did the, yeah. one of the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Holy fuck balls. <laughs> they were just running out of dinosaurs. <laughs> How about we invent one with a fucking... Oh, hey. That has a smiley face and a hat. And it's... <laughs> He's trying to make friends with this guy. No, I'm saying uh, he yeah, knows. Well, but he maybe oh, doesn't. Goddamn knows. What was your favorite? Like, uh, uh, I want to go back to Happy Texas actually, because you okay. said you liked that film. Yeah. Why didn't anyone see it? I don't know. It did, is it a it film got... that people should have saw? Yeah, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. You can rent it. It's out. There. But is it? Uh, was it a marketing issue? Was the subject matter maybe not for the mainstream? Or no, I think a marketing issue. And yeah. so, you know, you can make a great film that no one wants to see. Right. I don't can think anybody's tell, ever seen, seen a movie that had the word that had the word happy and, in it. I like. I, I will say that I don't know if there's any happy, happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Come on, man. That's not fair. <laughs> I mean, like, a, because happy in serious movies is always turns into something very sh sh but, weird. Like, yeah, uh, but that's can, can you tell? By the way, can oh, you tell yeah. when after you've made a movie when you see the marketing? Can you tell at this point? Going, oh god, they're not marketing this right. This is going to tank. Can you tell? As you like, you're sitting at home watching. If you're excited about a movie and you're watching the advertising and just the way they're marked, like, did you know as they were marketing Happy Texas, like they're doing this all wrong? You know, it took me a long time to get to this, but the people that do marketing do have a talent. Right, they're, they're good at it. In the history of film, no director has ever said, "I love the way they're releasing my film." It's just never <laughs> happened. Okay, yeah, everyone's. But uh, yeah, I, I've seen it where I thought they. Uh, the marketing people try to sell it as something that it's not, and uh, that well, never works. Well, my point is that it's got to be frustrating for you. You know the movie <laughs> Happy Texas is a really good film, and then you see other films that everyone's seen, and you know it's a piece of crap I know. film. That's got to well, be just infuriating as an actor. For a while, a the really independent good... film market was a viable market. Mm -hmm. Right, people right, right. See it. But now that's... Wait, because of the new technology, that's in the me wait, that's a mess. We we have to unfortunately wrap up, but uh, shameless. Uh, I gotta acknowledge Joan uh, Cusack is in this oh, film. She's she's Joan amazing. Cusack, she's an amazing she actress. Is amazing. She's still and, cutie pie. Too, and uh, I'm I'm being reminded because my girl's way ahead in Shameless. I'm two episodes in, and she's all in. And uh, there's a scene coming up with you and Joan uh, Cusack. Yeah, and a, uh, a very large dildo, sir. <laughs> very large. <laughs> this is how I want to end the interview. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And Showtime, by the way, is making a real big push, like to yeah. challenge oh, yeah, for yeah. the dominance of uh, this whole. Well, you know, they're doing great stuff. Yeah, yeah, but there's uh, there's a scene coming up there, William. 
Oh, there's a when, couple of scenes. Wait till you see how when, this thing ends. It's William H. Macy shameless. takes it in the poop shoot in fucking well, on Showtime, uh, baby. Got an ass on that cock. Yams it up to poopster. Well, but it's from Joan Cusack wearing the big uh, the big dildo. I know. <laughs> this oh, is how dude. crazy this uh, the show is. <laughs> I knew her when she was a young teen girl. I babysat her. I, I saw oh, you do an interview you? where you discussed that. Uh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. Wow. Yeah, what, to... Joan Cusack? You babysitted Joan Cusack. Yeah. And now she's giving it to you with a dildo. Cusack. That's right. Cusack. What's her name? Q. 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 Ah, you lucky I remember some of these white people's names. <laughs> you lucky, you lucky he's not William J. Macy, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give me a fucking Jesus break. Such, I know who she is. But you used to babysit Joan Cusack. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, she's a weird she's place. Now, she, now she's <laughs> yamming <laughs> something up his keister. That's right. <laughs> That's fucking and, hilarious. And I'm hearing it's a, I'm hearing it's a very... <laughs> That's hilarious! <laughs> I'm hearing it's a very large dildo. Uh, something. Oh, God. But this show, Shameless, I'm yeah. telling you, it's one of the best shows to come around in Shameless. a long time. Sundays at uh, 10 p.m. on Showtime. On Showtime. God damn, what can you say? William H. Macy, we've, uh, Wait, we've, now I'm getting we've a... quoted you a thousand times oh, yes. uh, on and off the air. Oh, good. Oh, good, <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's, oh, it's my deal, right? <laughs> that whole... That oh. whole time, the the anger with the ice scraper. That was I was just going to say of that the best emotional scenes without a word being spoken yeah. starts out just yeah I got to scrape my I'm not getting the fucking money. <laughs> like it's just perfectly done. It's a great film. Yeah, he goes, he, he goes all the way man. through the anger to then the, just the, the, the way you swing it, the sadness. And, and, oh, you've heard it a thousand times. Absolutely brilliant. I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times when when you're sitting. Uh, on that bench in front of the door answering your son about what's going on and, <laughs> and the dead father's in the trunk and they, and you're just like okay yeah no no everything's fine I'm gonna go to bed yeah I'm gonna go to bed <laughs> 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 just hope, hope it all goes away it's oh, so oh I mean, the guy's tragic. trying to get he's trying to get the numbers off the the burnt sienna <laughs> yeah. or whatever thing, and he's just saying okay okay yeah. no I can't read the numbers yeah alright okay I'll fax him right. no no I mean message him <laughs> oh shit it's it's amazing it's great only, writing I that's even no, not great there's not a also, weak character in that actors. movie, man. This, that, that's not like improvising any of like that's no, the, no, no, no. I no, couldn't no, imagine no. anyone God, else playing phenomenal. that though. It's it's phenomenal. you do such a great job that that character just comes right off the, the screen at you. It's you do such a it's, perfect job playing that. I feel like it's poor a comedy motherfucker. too. Yeah. Is, there, is there a story, I, sir, of, of you of how you got that movie? Is there like isn't it a there's a either somebody turned it down, you got it, or you fought really hard to get I it, or fought hard. I was a workaday actor. I went in to read for a, a smaller role, and they said, "Do you want to read uh, Jerry?" And I said, "Yeah." So I went out into the other room, worked on it. They said, "That's real good. You want to come in tomorrow?" And I said, "Yeah." So I was up all night. Every actor I know was at my house running the lines with me. I went in the next day and I read again. And because I knew, I knew not only was it a great script and it was the Coen brothers, but it was my role. Yeah. I mean, I could just see it. it was written for a portly bald guy. Really? So it didn't work that way, but I knew it was my You were such a, a great, like, and then they went to New York. salesman. Did, 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 did you feel what when after you did the audition, did you walk out going, I, I nailed that, I got I that? I did nail it, and then I found out that they were in New York auditioning, so I got my skinny Lutheran ass on an airplane. <laughs> and, uh, it's not an apocryphal story. I walked in and I said, I'm scared you're going to screw this up by giving the role to somebody else. I read again. Wow. And uh, I said, I'll shoot your dog if you give this role to somebody else. Because <laughs> <laughs> Ethan has a dog. <laughs> Yeah, uh, isn't that amazing? Like you still it. like yeah, yeah. I read it. It was Definitely. like it was more. It was bigger than the average. Like you read and got it. It was yeah. like they had somebody else, and he just okay. would not let him go. Yeah, we, yeah. we got, got just one. Just one. One more quick thing. Was there ever any story that you even heard from the Coen brothers as to why the character needed that money? No. No. Never, okay, so that never was never asked, resolved. And yeah. it's not important. Yeah. Every, it's just, I've always felt everything you need is on the page. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, Backstory has never I think the character it. itself, you, you realize he must have screwed something up sure. and what, needed the money. When was the last time you saw the movie? Like, we could put it on tomorrow and, and enjoy it again I easily. Just, Can I, a, couple I'll, I'll, a couple of years. I'll huh? be perfectly honest. I, I was watching it last night. <laughs> last night. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's, 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 got, it's got insane rewatchability. It and, really does. And I'm telling right. you, I mean, Shameless is yeah. a great show. I haven't had this much fun it's, in a long time. It's a uh, great show. Great. The characters and the, the situations, it's unbelievable. Let's get him out of here before we get in trouble. Yeah, All right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, boys. Yeah, thank you. you. And you got to say it, though. you got to say it as he leaves. Oh, yeah. He's fleeing the interview. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's fleeing the interview. He's fleeing the interview. Yes! 
He's fleeing an interview. Why don't you go uh, talk yeah. to oh, Bill Deal? Oh, 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 he's fleeing an interview. End of story. The great William H. Macy. Gonna get a quick picture, and we'll be back. We got Louis C.K. in the studio, the Brigada Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. That's that's uh, that's a great gig for Louis, and uh, man, you should go see him. Obviously, I saw oh, yeah. Louis. Oh, we talked about it the last time you were in at Carnegie yeah. Hall. Yeah. What an amazing show! Thanks, man. That's just an Borgata's amazing great. show. Yeah, it's Borgata's perfect for such it. a cool. F- perfect for it. It's the only place in Atlantic City that's. It really is like Vegas, kind of. That it's got that Vegas vibe. It doesn't feel like. Like I stayed in a, another hotel right on the boardwalk once, Ooh. and I. It felt like I stepped into the 70s. And it feels like yeah. you're in Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know you're in Atlantic City. <laughs> right. The, like, the Brigada the, could trick you into thinking, man, I took a fucking like, flight yeah, to Vegas. I went to Vegas. The, the, that's exactly the difference, yeah. There's some old diner waitress bringing yeah. the drinks at this other casino, bringing the drinks to the, the table. And you're just like, ah. Oh. And then you look at the Borgata babes and shit walking around. They're just stunning. No, the Atlanta, the other Atlantic City places, it's like you're faced with the economy you're hurting with everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's supposed yes. to be more of a buffer there. Yeah, yeah. Where you can get lost in it. But Atlantic City, the dealer looks at you like, thanks for fucking up my hometown, asshole. <laughs> Would you like another card? <laughs> like, they just look depressed. God damn, that is it. You know? Yeah, yeah. All my, my father owned a house, and now I live in a fucking shack. <laughs> right. So that you could play blackjack. I yeah, hope you're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, Blackjack. I would hit on that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you so see the corruption. All you have to do is just drive around a little bit, less than a mile yeah. from those beautiful casinos, and you realize they don't give a fuck no. about <laughs> the local economy. No, it's all being sucked out. <laughs> it's like, and, I don't know where that money's and, going. It's another kind of tick, but it's a remote. It's like a, it yeah. doesn't even spread nearby. No. It's no. like a scientific taking money. It's like a tick that has a long-distance <laughs> sucker. <laughs> Yeah, they must have helicopters at night that literally lift, lift it the money up into the sky to make sure it does not touch even touch yeah. the local economy. <laughs> Anybody and there. the politicians, they obviously just look the other way. Yeah. It's like they you're not even going to throw a dollar into the economy. No, who, no. Who, who, who are you talking about? Yeah, what do you mean? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? Who, who, what? You, who, what? You, who you're who you saying what? is, what? is what? doing what? this? What? 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 <laughs> you're right. Yeah, exactly. We're already in in a weird spot with uh, Donald Rumsfeld. I bet, yeah. he, I bet he knows where that money goes. You know what? I think Atlantic City's beautiful. <laughs> oh, every inch of it is beautiful. The Borgata. No, it's, it's fantastic. So Go see Louis. Jobs. There. They got yeah. jobs. They got jobs everywhere. For jobs. 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 How many people they employ? Jobs. There weren't those jobs when it was uh, no. before the casinos. I don't know no, what there was went on there. No, just a really kind of a nice area. Steel Pier. <laughs> what the hell happened? Where someone could actually open a store and try to have a business <laughs> instead of a job. But now they got jobs. They get to wear a vest <laughs> and deal cards to fucking assholes and Qaddafis. <laughs> Yeah, Qaddafi. Oh, that's fucking, great. Uh, uh, jobs. Yeah, you mean people jobs. used to open up their own family business down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like bakery, a, or right. delicatessen. Yeah, wherever the fucking like wherever the, the Trump down there is, is, does he have one down there? Oh, he's oh, got yeah, the he Taj Trump and the Marina. Marina. I don't know how much. Yeah, he Trump actually Marina really is sitting where some guy used to have an old fish <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> from he had the restaurant from 1850 in his family, <laughs> and now it's a fucking Trump Marina hotel. It's right I there was, on the I water. worked that fucking place. Or is the Trump Castle it was called? Uh, I don't know where I, that is I now. Think, uh, yeah, I think I they know. changed the name at but some point. I did. I worked at Trump Castle, and uh, I, I remember just watching people. I had never really been down there before, and I'm just watching these fucking old ladies from around the country <laughs> yeah. come on buses. Like from the middle of Ohio or Kentucky, literally. Yeah, like you see yep. a bus that says, like, Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and these exactly. fucking old women come out of the bus, <laughs> and there are like they took they took a medical hit from the trip. <laughs> like you just see them, uh. <laughs> and they get out of these fucking buses. They they were in for hours, days. Yeah, blood just clotting in oh, their legs, <laughs> helping each you know the sixty year olds helping the seventy year olds off the bus, and they go get shit rooms. Yeah, and then they pour buckets of fucking coins. All of their fucking retirement, all they got left, they yeah. just pour it in buckets into these machines, <laughs> and then they leave. It's leave. A, and then, so I'm watching all this, and it's all says Trump all over it, and I never, and then I was in an elevator, and Trump got on, 
with Marla Maples at the time. Oh, yeah, okay. And everyone was like, oh, oh, there they are. They were really excited. They saw them. All the, oh, my God, there's Trump and the woman he's fucking illicitly. <laughs> <laughs> And they get on the elevator, and uh, and uh, Trump looked miserable. I was in the elevator alone with him, just by chance, and he just looked miserable. Uh. He looked so unhappy. Yeah. And all that money, I realized, is a weird. Like, he has all this billions of dollars, but he's fucking miserable because he needs a hundred billion to look in the mirror right. and not want to kill himself. He needs that. These old ladies from Kentucky, they don't need anything. They have, like, maybe $1,000 in the bank. Right. It's like they're coming. It's like a religion. Like, they're coming to help him feel better. Like, they're <laughs> coming to giving, give him money. Giving him the money. He's like, I have $100 billion, and I don't fucking a fuck everybody. It's not enough. <laughs> and these old ladies are like, I have maybe 1000 You can have all of it. I'll, I'll, I'll that give help? you all of it. I'll take a bus all day to give it to I, you. We could have pumped it into our own economy where we live. Yeah, I could have given maybe... it to my neighbor's store that closed yeah. last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I figured I'd come all this way just to dump it into Hopefully this make machine. make you a little happier. Yeah. Uh, That's cool. With, yeah, with the, the only buffer being <laughs> this vague hope that I might yeah, leave with more. Yeah, that I may more, be one but, of the trillions. But it ain't going to happen. So no. it was just poor... Poor money. <laughs> I want to know more about the family fish business. <laughs> the little restaurant. That, that was poor there. guy. That's forget that. <laughs> little, forget with his that. little boat. He would Maybe just a little go bait out shop every day. Bait shop on the pier. No, oh, he used shop. to wipe off the table when you walked in yeah, and he'd feel nice, real proud. Right? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> You'd smell like the ocean air. It was open Ooh. windows in the summer. What was his yeah. last day like, you think? Uh, <laughs> wrecking Trump. ball. A bunch of suits a, a and ties. With the whole family just no. outside crying. Yeah. And you now in that exact same spot. It's ring, 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 Plowed asunder. Over. That was there for 150 no, years. Yeah. You know, and it's Amer It's not <laughs> the fault of some corporations or Donald Trump. It's like Walmart kills all small yeah, town small economies. And... But it's not Walmart's fault. It's the fault of the fucking people. I used to have a house upstate in upstate New York, and I and there, and there was there was a town that had these beautiful old diners and general stores, mm -hmm. and they all closed one by one because of Walmart. But it wasn't fucking Walmart's fault. It was the people that lived in that town yeah. that don't give a shit about their neighbors. But is it giving it's, a it's shit? It's the American basic consumer who's like, well, okay, I could spend I could spend thirteen cents less on a mop. Yeah. So fuck my fucking neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my neighbor who's had that store in his family for, you know, who's who's taken care. You know, there's like a million George Bailey moments in there, that town's history, where yeah. the whole, well, I'll give I, I'll give a check to your, you know, baseball teams with names, John, John's General Store. You're right. Yeah. Like those, the whole community coming together to do stuff. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that. I want to buy a Jim Carrey movie three pack. <laughs> For seven dollars, so <laughs> fuck the old movie theater with a Wurlitzer organ. <laughs> but think of like, think of Blockbuster Video. Now that caused a big thing because it pretty much closed down all the little mom and pop video stores, yeah. which was a great family business. Which was a family business yeah. and yep. shit like that. I remember those things and having to go Green in. And lawn, you'd have to buy nice a membership lawn. fee when you yeah. first get in. It was like a hundred bucks, and and that was just to try to keep the stores, yeah, to keep the alive. store open. <laughs> like, but then Blockbuster came around. Now, what do you want to do? Go into the mom and pop and wait a week for the the latest release yeah why don't you why don't because you because i want wait it a little now bit? i want it now. so fuck the family <laughs> that opened that store yeah. and by the way fuck them that they used to think about what movies you might like <laughs> that you might walk <laughs> in and they go anthony you like comedy Anthony, we got a whole section for you Do you even know Remember who that francois tati right, is right, and right, they'd right, show right. you something that we went and found this blockbuster <laughs> would never do that for you i fuck them <laughs> I, I agree with both of it but so that you can uh, the, the local, save a little bit of fucking money. The local place that Ann's talking about, you had to wait for some asshole to bring back the nice new oh, movie. It's, it's yeah, out. You'd be and like, it's out. It's like, it's what? A, when is it coming back? I want to watch that yeah, fucking so, thing. Again, and then Blockbuster fuck said, the fuck ability. that. <laughs> the Blockbuster said, look, we could just put 100 copies mm -hmm. on the shelf. So you're thinking the, the whole uh, uh, loyalty thing should outweigh the convenience? Absolutely, because you're supporting somebody who... 
who is there's a human being and a family who's living off that business and they give a shit about you. But given by the way, where's Blockbuster? It's I fucking know, gone. gone. So they leave a vacuum. Digital. You digital can't rent a fucking now. video anymore. Yeah, but, but why would you? you digital if, delivery. If there was video stores, you know why? It's like bookstores. A mm -hmm. bookstore is not just a place too, man. where you can buy books. It's a place where somebody expresses themselves by deciding what books to put out there and what books they want to offer their community. Right. And that gets replaced by Barnes & Nobles, which means you get the same fucking books that every place in the world gets. I mean, not just America. Right. Everybody, every bookstore has exactly the same books now. I mean, yeah. that's a map. People don't realize what a massive. <laughs> it used to be you go to that bookstore, you're going to get some weird off color books different. of this kind, or right. you're going to get maybe a right wing bookstore, a left wing bookstore. That used to be how people fucking. <laughs> and yeah. then it's so block. So Barnes and Nobles comes, and the difference is a family business will hang on through the tough years if they have half a chance. Yeah. But a, a corporate business will go, oh, we're making. We're not making a ten trillion dollars. Just pull up stakes, <laughs> and they're gone. So now there's no more fucking bookstores. That's fucking amazing. Or, or uh, video stores. Yeah. No bookstores. No video stores. Right. The, yeah. The big Barnes Noble on the Upper West. But yeah, because those are predatory gone. businesses. Given if, your thinking, though, wouldn't we never progress? Like, wouldn't who's the, progressing? That's the well. That's I, not mean, with, with, I mean, with everything. Like, wouldn't we? Not look at the automotive business, which yeah. is horrible now, of course, because of the outsourcing and everything. But early on, there were guys working those lines. Um, what about the technology to come in and use robots that did eliminate jobs, but it makes the car better and faster? And, and yeah, but and, that's exactly the thing. These things like bookstores and video stores, though, they weren't improved; they were destroyed. And, and and a book is not a car. It's not a product that needs to be perfected like a technology. It's about the oh, having a way of life. But now you just download it on Kindle. Yeah. Like no, it's... exactly. But it's rubbed out a whole getting out of your house and going to a bookstore, meeting the bookstore guy and other people. You used to get fucking laid by going to bookstores. <laughs> a way that people used to get laid is by going to a bookstore and standing in a section that makes you look smart. <laughs> and then a chick comes around. Yeah. Oh, do you also oh, like really? this book? Oh, sure. oh, I'm perusing hey. this. Yeah, uh, you, you can't do that there? anymore. When I grew up in Boston and there was a wow. place in Harvard Square called the Coffee Connection. And this was a place that was obsessed with coffee, and they had coffees from all around the world, and they'd have stuff like you'd get a you'd get uh, um, like a cappuccino, and they'd shave chocolate onto mm. it, not like a canister of chocolate powder. It, it took time. I mean, you, like, they had a yeah. cheese grater yeah. and a block of chocolate, and they'd shred chocolate onto the fucking thing for you. That's like how good it was. You sound like, like my grandfather. No, if my you, grandfather talking to me. You don't even understand no, the old no days. Idea. And <laughs> I know the you point is about over, to make, You'd man. go to the fucking coffee connection, right. and you'd sit there like trembling, and they'd bring you this thing that would just change your life. You know, they go, hey, you want to try Turkish? We have a new Turkish coffee today. It's a weird oh, that thing. Sounds good. Never tried it. So then Starbucks opens down the street, but this coffee connection hangs on. So Starbucks opens another one, like, on the other side of them. <laughs> Starbucks isn't doing so great that they can open another one. They're just trying to fucking kill. <laughs> oh, shit. So they open, like, five within a block of the place until coffee connection goes, this is getting hard. And they <laughs> sell themselves. They go, go let's just yeah, be at Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then Starbucks buys them and then closes the other ones, and then you're just left with fucking just one choice. You get and, Starbucks. And the quality of Starbucks is horrible. It's now. okay. And the it, instant it Starbucks all right isn't when they making first... a profit, they'll yeah. give up, and then there won't be a fucking place to even get coffee. Right. Then we go back yeah, yeah. to having no coffee again. No yeah. coffee. He's right. So I remember wow, the yeah. I remember the lumber stores. I remember we did a lot of uh, oh, renovation on our lumber. old house because we had seven yeah. kids, small house, where so we were constantly adding rooms and this and that. Mom and pop lumber and shop. Mom and pop. Yeah, I would yeah. get in the car with my dad. I remember like it was yesterday. We go to the local uh, lumber guy. He knew my dad's first name. We got this for you. We made your pile. It's Putting all a dormer set. on the house, are you? And, and yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, yep. you're but gonna know, need some of that. No, don't. I'll, I'll come over here. I'll help you out. But it, you need that for the joysts. But, but there was a, it was a social thing, too, man. How yes. are the kids? And Lumber how stores are your were kids? very and love, social. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, the Home Depot. It's a fucking massive warehouse, and no one wants to fucking help you. It's you're and just mad and right sad when you people in. working there. Right. Yeah. The, bu the buying of the lumber is not a happy exchange. It used to be that you could say <laughs> to yourself, you know what, if I get, if I invest in a good saw, 
and I and I get some trucks. I could go out and get some fucking poplar and cut it well, <laughs> and people will come here and build fucking houses with it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you go and you go, hey, you got some nice poplar, not as good as Joe Wilson's. Yeah, right. well, mine is down right. three cents. Right. Well, I'll buy yours then. This was like a. This yeah. was. A, and so by the way, we angles. don't improve through this shit. No, we actually don't. It's like. It's it's what happens is the more the second place product always wins by being more vicious to to yeah take like over Microsoft the... versus Apple right. Microsoft is is bullshit software it's hard <laughs> compared to Apple I know, believe me it's horrible but Bill Gates is a capitalist and he was vicious and he fought Apple and so for some years anyway yeah yeah America lived on shitty computer technology because of his it was a point ambition. Where we all thought Apple was gone. Yeah, it's VHS it versus VHS beta. versus beta. Beta yeah. is still used today. Yeah, beta videotape is still what most TVs are, as TV shows are shot on. Yeah, and we all watched VHS tapes <laughs> because the VHS people said. We make the second best, so we're gonna fuck, be cutthroat and fucked up and and pay off people. And uh, go to <laughs> litigation and like sue Beta and Beta's like we just well we're making the best kind we can't even get people to buy it yeah <laughs> and so everyone gets VHS unbelievable this is Tesla and fucking Edison Edison it's always and Tesla yeah one guy's a genius and is selling a beautiful thing the second place guy copies it doesn't do it as well and then takes him to court in every over. fucking state in America <laughs> <laughs> and muscles him and fights him. And outdraws his him, credibility. Get some fucking Texan to pay for it, and then uh, we all have to buy the shitty product. You're fucking brilliant. It's so true. That, it's the same with cars. They would be better if the, what you're saying was actually true. If it was like the guys still on the assembly no, line. Yeah, or, you're, yeah. You're, but the, your coffee story is deeply depressing. It is what happens it was, everywhere. This, I was thinking as you were uh, talking about that, like the Starbucks popping up are like mm. weeds. Yes, taking out the really nice fucking crop. Yeah, the nice that's flowers. what they do. They're and they're just, only they're interested just putting in the... weeds all over the place right. to destroy it. That's right. I... <sighs> and they don't even make money. Like Harvard Square is a good example. I love Harvard Square. It's Those been a while, but used... I love you won't love place. it next time you go. It's been it's years. Not... It's a, there used to be a place called the Tasty and like the Worst House. All these places that have been there from the 1900s. <laughs> it's a sunglass hut and an Abercrombie and Fitch now. Jesus. And I was talking to one of the local business guys who owns a cigar store. He's like the last guy left. <laughs> Look at you. No, I'm talking this shit to the fascinates local me. businessman. I and I asked this. him, "Are you going to go under too?" And he said, "He, he said, you know what? Because he he went to Harvard Business School and then he opened his little his cigar business. store. <laughs> oh God. He said Abercrombie and Fitch and Harvard Square doesn't even make a profit. They lose money every day. They are not that store." It, the rent is so high for what they built there uh -huh. that they can't. If they could sell jeans all day, they're not going to make a profit. They're not there to make a profit. It's just a billboard. It's a 3D billboard. Oh, it's there so that you'll buy Abercrombie online and to keep it visible in your mind and your yeah, head. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. There's like the Nike store on 50th or what? All those stores they don't make a fucking dime. They lose money every sure, day. It's worth I mean, having a the giant global billboard. Yeah. It's like a billboard. Yeah, that uh, you walk into. That's how far away this is from, like, <laughs> guy, mom and guy has guy. an idea, right. puts it out there, <laughs> right. I love this folks love it, and they start buying it. It's not even... Wow. It's not, we're not even close to that anymore. No. Like, I'm nostalgic for the guy who started Wendy's. Like, that's that's <laughs> yeah. now, like, a great American. He's, like, a revolutionary. A great American story. Yeah. Or, or Ray Kroc from McDonald's. Yeah, he's like the Che little... Guevara, whatever his name is. Like, he, <laughs> yes. He's like, oh, God, a great they're, man. They're sort of making a comeback. But remember, just the local uh, burger joint was cool. Are they making a comeback? A little bit. You, you see more burger joints popping up. Maybe they're a part of a whole corporate thing. But they, Well, like in New York, there's five guy burgers here. Right, right, right. right. But when we were growing up, the, every town had its local burger guy, yeah. and they, they bragged about their burger, and it was better yep. than the, the guy's burger mm. from the next town over. And, and then you watch those slowly. The one in Huntington, the Choo Choo hamburger oh, right, place. Right. And their thing was... Well, we'll bring your burger on a nice fucking train right yeah. in front of you. Right. Oh, here comes my order. Train. You see it fucking rock in the restaurant. <laughs> yes. and it comes around and stops at your, yeah. your you know, your your counter spot. Well, that's what and it that used thing, to be like when things were more spread out. That everyone had to have their own idea of here's right. what here's why you want to come here. And then I think yeah. instead of like if you come here, it doesn't matter because we're across the street too. Right. <laughs> Fuck you. Just eat this shit. You think it's going to get better once these big companies take over? The product goes down. What do you they don't think have to about compete anymore. like online purchasing? Then you must do a lot of that, though. Yeah, I do. 
Yeah. No, I think that's prob that's probably the next version yep. of it is that you can throw together a little product and sell it online. And just be the mom and you pop online yeah, thing. You don't need a store anymore. And then someone will figure out how to fuck that over. Yeah, oh, but yeah. you can't They'll because it's not real estate. You can't take over. You can't push somebody off the internet. Yeah, that's, they'll always be there. That's true, but you can no, be the better online. Yeah, they'll make or you the bigger and they'll make you have the website with dot .org. <laughs> yeah. They'll give <laughs> you a dot something find, that no right. one does. But if you're uh, like a mom and dark. pop thing and you're selling like say electronics or so, you'd be like, "Oh, great. They don't have that." Let me go to Best Buy's website. Fucking and, no, that's and, absolutely true. That's hard. Yeah, hard to sell. Yeah. Just to add to the discussion, I used to be a big uh, music store guy, mm. and every music store was a little different. And this guy, if yeah. you got to know him, he's like, I got some fucking bootlegs you might want to see. Right. And it's completely illegal, oh, well, and we know it. But yeah. I've seen you in this place en enough times that I know you're not a rat. So why don't you follow me? Well, that's Remember exactly that it. it. Guys like like Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop becoming popular was a good thing, I think, for America. It's a good yeah. thing for the American voice that guys like that would... But the reason he came up was because certain record stores would go, I've, I'm fucking digging Iggy Pop, and I'm going to make a... I'm going to sort of take a gamble that my customers will like right, him. Right, right. So they'd, go, they'd order, like, give me 10 Iggy Pop, uh, you know, 12 inches, and they'd put them out there. Right. And the kid with the leather jacket, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> right. I'd try him out, kid. you all right, old man, fuck you, you know. <laughs> and he'd try Iggy Pop, and he'd go, holy motherfucking shit. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Iggy Pop yeah. is flying off the shelves. When I was growing but up. But now, if you're not on fucking iTunes, right. like, yes. the whole country has to make one decision of who we like. There's no sort of local guy. God, that's... Okay. It's, that's a massive, massive difference in how Absolutely. the culture grows. I, I just loved, when I was growing up, go, I would go to the village and all those underground record stores. I would spend all afternoon there. And yep. every place had something a little different. So what yep. is this? And Dude. bootleg, like, concert shirts it, and... Like, you, well, you know what it does? the bottom line of what this does no to one society? Even, no one even has, even young people don't even consider the idea that it's a good idea to be off out in the fringe which is where good ideas come from. Yeah. Like, people are almost, like, begging the government to take over and the corporations to take over your life. Like, people are excited that when you take a picture of yourself on your phone and put it online, it says where the fuck you were. <laughs> Why are people yeah. excited about well, that? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> like, I remember when Easy Pass first happened. Yeah. Everyone was like, I don't want oh, everybody man. knowing when I went to the Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> right. Like, what are you, fucking carrying secret documents? Who the yeah, fuck yeah. gives a shit about you? Right, right. But people used to think that way. Right. Cameras in the in Central Park for crime? Yeah, but what about my privacy? But now people are like, guess what? If I take a picture and send it to somebody, the whole world knows exactly where I was. Where I was at that and given And I can moment store and... all of everything I have on a computer in North Carolina. I don't even have to. <laughs> and they get to have all my stuff. And Facebook knows who all my friends are <laughs> and what I've said to all of them. Every single fucking conversation I've ever had is, is a public record in the fucking Library of Congress. Yeah. Hey, cool! <laughs> that is fucked up, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> cool? And we worried about Easy Pass off mere yeah, three no, years ago. Yeah, people oh, three years ago, right? <laughs> it's everything true. you tell somebody, I think I might be pregnant. It's in the Library of Congress now. now. It's forever. Cool. And there's a fucking geo tag on it saying where you were standing when you fucking said it. A, a fucking coordinate. Yeah, a, a global coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> fucking of where you were standing and longitude. The, why do people? Why would you when you said that, that but we didn't want you use, took a picture. But we didn't no. want to use Easy Pass three years. Yeah, ago. that is really it's fucked sick. up. It's it is really fucked up. You have to belong to a fucking club to listen to a song. You have to have a credit card to like listen to a song. You can't yeah. go buy a record and play it. You have to if you fucking lose your credibility. And your iTunes account gets suspended, you can't play any of your music you're, on anything. You're done. You can't listen now where it's on satellite radio. You have to subscribe yes. to listen to the radio. Like the only way to listen to music without being a credible American citizen with a credit card at belonging to a corporation, the only way you can fucking whistle. That's about the only way. <laughs> That's how you're going to hear the song. <laughs> That's the only whistling to yourself. <laughs> the only time you can, unless you want to join some. Yeah, because there are a lot of uh, the the 
music stores don't even carry fucking. It's no music stores. There's no it, music stores. You like, got to go to Best Buy. And yeah. they got their CD section, which is dying of. out. It's being pushed. Yeah, like, and it's just away. And it's just a reflection of what's on iTunes. Yeah, and what's you don't on, have. Yeah, yeah. Amazon. Nothing. You don't have a guy taking care of that section, so it's all just kind of willy nilly. You're not finding something new and eclectic. No, the problem there. And the problem is what Louis is getting at is with uh, corporate America, only a few of the people in corporate America actually make the money. Then everyone the else decision. is just slaves to that yeah. fucking corporation. And they're not even American. I mean, it's all right. offshore. All the companies right. are unaccountable and they're offshore. And most but, of them are foreign or owned anyway. Yeah. yeah go with yeah. the Tower Records. Each Tower Records probably was easily 10, easily 10, you know, mom and pop record stores. Yeah. And those yeah. guys were actually making a real living. And now, like you said about Atlantic City, Tower Records moves in, and now you used to make a living. Now you're just working for that schmuck. Yep. And then Making Tower Records less. is gone. Tower's so they gone. leave a vacuum. It's right. not even the, this idea that everybody's like, yeah, but come on, but that's this is good for what? It's the like, convenience is it's like locust. It's like locust. Benefiting. <laughs> they right. just yes. come in, right. eat, eat it all, and then they're gone, and right. nothing's left. And yeah, I know, but still, it's probably you know, if we didn't do that, Progress. you wouldn't have the I, thing I, that uh, wouldn't I, have the polio vaccine. The cars run worse than they did in the seventies. <laughs> and I, I could go you back. You need a computer to fix one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't work on your car. No, anymore. that's true too. You cannot pop the hood on your fucking car just, no. and work on I'm it. Full I remember. I remember yeah. if your car stalled. You would you would you ease over the shoulder and uh, you lift the hood yeah and, tinker, and you'd look, around with it and exactly you'd be like right. you'd be like all right I know enough about the distributor I think this yeah. is something I think maybe Let me see if that's tight yeah I think jiggle tighten this a little my bit points, my I'm gonna points jiggle are this touching. cord right? yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna gap it with a matchbook cover <laughs> you that'll get me home do that that'll get me home it'll run a little fucked up but that'll get me home. Yeah, you if could you knew do where the that. fuel pump was, you could jiggle it a little bit. Yeah, give it a little throttle. knock. No. If you, if you cart it and start this, you hit the starter a little bit, and and then boom. And I had start a '68 Mustang, and I used to fix. it. I worked in a garage when I was younger, and I used to fix it. So I like the like the 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 fuel pump would go like the fuel pump that was in there since 1968 <laughs> <laughs> died in like 1993. <laughs> And then I put in a new fuel pump, and yeah. that fuel pump died in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> and I went through three fuel pumps on that car. Same, every part of it. Ah, the shit. starter that this car was ma that was put in by some fucking heavy Michigan hands in 1968. <laughs> when I was one year old, some fucking guy with a cigarette dangling put that starter in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then went to a very beautiful home in Flint, Michigan, which oh, is now yes. uh, a fucking crack house. <laughs> He's been dead for years. His white picket fence. His yes. wife was waiting for him to come home. And then finally, that starter that he fucking personally tightened every part of finally just went, I can't do it anymore, <laughs> and died in 1994. Yeah. And then I took it out, and it was heavy, and it was beautiful. It was like a piece of art. <laughs> yeah. And then I put it in with this, I put in this thing I got at a parts store. And I asked them, I, I said, give me the best starter that available and they gave me this starter, and the metal it was made out of is some weird composite. You could see, like, Coke can pieces in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it in the way anything, and I stuck it in, and it lasted, like, six months. Yeah. And it just, bang, <laughs> just came apart. <laughs> when you used to That's drop progress. the starter motor... It was like when you when you oh. pulled those bolts out. Yeah, it was uh, heavy. Yep. And then the new one, you hold it up with one arm as yeah. you're threading the fucking <laughs> look, bolt. Look at, the, look at the You're right. Look at the picture Danny just found. You, you can't work on <laughs> no, that engine. That. You can't That's work what you on see that engine. Now. Right. Yeah. Just a big block with a logo on it. Right. <laughs> That's it. That's like, a Cadillac. It looks like it, Cadillac. It looks like it just all melted together. You can't get at it. It's no, all just can't. cowling that they put on, so you dare not even look no. and see what's under there. Uh, you can't work on it because it's all computerized. Now, if your car breaks you down, you hook a computer up to it in a yeah. corporate place. If it breaks down, you're lucky enough to get out of your own car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> might exactly. not even be lucky get out you of out. it. Right, you'd be lucky if you could at least leave the car. Yeah, holy. I shit. keep going back to the coffee thing because uh, I, I was a big coffee guy as well. Yeah, and when Starbucks did hit, it made it convenient that there were more nice coffee place around because you really had to search them out like you're talking about right and i didn't live anywhere near harvard square so a starbucks was like nice instead mm -hmm. of shitty diner coffee right but then starbucks uh didn't care about their product in the end at no. first the coffee was amazing yes yeah, but you've watched it drop compete. over the years yeah they had to they uh, had to compete now you know the beans they're getting have to be just shitty yeah, of course they are they have to be it's they're just, not going to work hard many... for your money why would they they've got I explained at first they needed my... your money so they worked hard for it exactly I explain this shit to my kids all the time because we will go off the beaten path. We'll go three blocks over 
and spend 40 more cents <laughs> that what are we doing with this precious money that people are like well i'm saving so that i can buy some fucking video game have a video game experience for 10 seconds <laughs> that evaporates from my existence later what are we saving the money for but i we go a few blocks over put, spend a few more cents to go to like a butcher yeah, yeah. Instead that, of going to, you know, that price chopper, we go to a fucking New York City butcher. Yeah. Where the guy's got a red face. How you doing, my man? And, it, you know, blood all over his fucking little yeah. apron that he's wearing. Gets his steak from his steaks from a fucking place where there's like a direct line from the cow to the house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of this fucking shop, right. You know, probably some human parts in the steak <laughs> thing. I, I was go, going to. Uh, like somebody go, oh, you want to get something for lunch? Let's go to like Subway or something. I'm like, why would you not just go to a deli? Like yeah. and get a real sandwich made on a, a hero roll that was in a bakery that morning, and, yeah, and exactly. the driver took it over to the... a place where they're not going to measure the meat. No, and it's I remember like, yeah, I was a, a guy all pre-cut where the local guy goes, oh, sucks. Anthony, you know, you've been a good customer. Here's a few extra slices. The yeah. Subway, it's they a... actually weigh their their yeah. meat and their yes. tomatoes to make Terrible. sure. It's the proper weight. I was in a subway once in somewhere in Arizona. And I was driving across the country, and I stopped. And it was a subway inside of a fucking Sunoco station. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and boy. there was the fucking kid working there. It was this depressed-looking kid with his... That he cut his own hair like there was chunks. <laughs> cut his own hair. <laughs> skinny boring. fucking... Act, just <laughs> yeah, depressed-looking, yeah. pale American. And the kid he's serving... Is this exact same person? Oh like, shit! Like he's just barely, just different colored version. <laughs> you know, like in Star Wars, there was R two D two, but then there'd be like a red version of it, <laughs> yes, like the red R two D two. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of basic. And one guy, and he's going, "What kind of sauce do you want?" On? And he's like, "Um," and like, <laughs> I guess I'll get go ahead and get the, the green one. And he's making it for him. And I wanted him to say, should I just eat it, too? Does it even make a difference which one of us eats it? <laughs> like, everyone's just on one side of the counter or the other. There's right, no identity right. to any American. Nothing. The only identity you have is what your sauce choice is. Yeah. Like, that's the, the only thing damn. you get now is like, well, I like, I particularly like... You do make this grim the number two kind sauce. of image of, I, I don't see... I don't see this going to a good place. No, it's not, man. No, <laughs> no it's, it's not. not. Man. No, it's not. not man. The only good thing that could happen is that it all falls. That it just all collapses. It all dies, and everyone has to look re- around them and go, what could I piece together yeah, and maybe, sell? Maybe right, recycle right. for my friends. Bit, maybe. Post-apocalyptic hey, yeah. lifestyle. Would kind be of terrific. A, yeah. We got a timing issue, so we're going to take a break, because we got Rummy uh, calling oh, right at 8.30. Oh, boy. <laughs> what happened? Just Rummy. Oh, uh, Donald Rumsfeld. I can't wait. <laughs> His new book, Unknown, Known and Unknown, excuse me, a, a memoir. So you we're think we'll know him. some of the unknown? I ain't you think no. he's going to fess I'm, with the unknown? I'm you know, I'm going to go word. ahead and tell those Opie and Anthony fellas stuff yeah. that I never gonna... told anybody. <laughs> 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 There's the show I'm going to break all the news yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, more with Louis C.K. Just... That was a good time as any to tell him that <laughs> Gerald Ford is still alive. <laughs> why not? Why not these guys? Why don't we ask him? Why don't we ask him that weird shit? Then <laughs> see what he says. Yeah, but Roswell, uh, yeah. Louis killing, killing this morning, and oh, uh, Louis C.K. is going to be at the Borgata April twenty third. For tickets, go to Borgata dot com. B O R G A R T. No, that's not it. What? They misspelled the website, right? That's awesome. Borgata. Bor- there's no R in the end of Borgata, right? Borgata. Bor- Google yeah, it. No, it's B O R G A T A dot com for tickets you know for the CK. If you just, you have a computer to go online, right? Right. Just Google the fucking yeah, thing. Borgata. Like, I never Does anybody like, need to know the website? Spell it like really kind of. Anything you uh, can't spell. Even the. Just th- throw it in. The browsers finally, you just put it in the URL. Right. Someone right. figured out these yeah. fucking people don't yeah. get it. They said, hey, dummy, <laughs> yeah. this is how it's really spelled. Yeah. Just write it with your finger on the screen. And <laughs> right. Come we'll up. figure it out. I don't even use like dictionary.com no. or like Miriam Webster. I'll just go to Google, type in the word that I'm, I know I'm misspelling. Yes. And it says, did you mean the correct spelling? Now you know the correct spelling. I know. Yeah. And you don't even need to know anymore. it. You yeah, can no. continue spelling it wrong after that. You know, you yeah. used Doesn't to matter. have to go to a library and speak to the librarian about that. That's right. And uh, she would uh, direct you to a book. That's, That's right. right. Libraries used to be kind of cool, too. Man. Libraries. 
Uh, New York is very that. different. It's just the, that's where homeless people shit now. Do you, yes. library. Oh, speaking of which, we got the bench story. Oh, uh, yes. Right. With the and drugs and the sex. Uh, uh, one, one last thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, encyclopedias. The house that had the encyclopedias. But then they would become dated so quickly that uh, a few short years later, you know, borders move and people you know, take over power. And, yeah. and you just read these encyclopedias. But that was like your Internet. That's that right. Was, uh, the only information you were able to get at the drop of a hat was in your encyclopedias in your house. You used to sit there and toil if you didn't know something and couldn't find it out in your house through some kind of book or well, newspaper. By the way, where, you didn't know it. Where this stuff is good is things like the Internet, because if you lived in, you know, um, Oshkosh, Michigan or someplace, you weren't going to get a cool book. You weren't going to yeah, get Alice yeah. Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and you weren't going to get an Iggy Pop album. Right. You were going to get a Pat Boone album <laughs> and whatever, and Encyclopedia Britannica. That's Britannica. it. You had to live on that. Yeah. yeah. We you know, but now. hey, you just throw on a leather jacket and leave town. You fucking, what's your problem? <laughs> this is the worst of the Opie and Anthony show. You guys suck, suck. Serious exit. Without just glossing over a comedian and his material, what more are you trying to get in? Like what the mind of a comic and what what makes them like that? Ah, well, we're done with you. <laughs> there he is, Norm. Did you get my fucking text about oh, your show? No. <laughs> I, said I was love it. Come to see your we're show. It's okay. Yeah, of course. It's good. They're uh, greeting each other. Oh, hey, Norm McDonald. Hey, what's, what's up, boys? I do my YouTube uh, videos and, yeah, it's and, awesome. and stuff. It's fun, you know, you fuck off a little yeah, bit yeah. here and there. Kevin been, Farley, Kevin how you doing? Good to see you. Sit down, Norm. Take to see a you. seat. I think I we, we're kind of running out of seats. Take the take the uh, couch right Hilarious there. special, too, by the way. Uh, that was nice. Oh, my God. Right. Saw the special the other We're night. We're not on the fucking radio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that. Yes, we just, you, you can say on. fuck and fucking. That's how we roll. We're on the radio right now? We just bring it in and <laughs> let right. it roll. That's how that works. <laughs> I know. You're looking at the picture. Yeah, Alan's looking at a picture of Hitler. <laughs> that's, a, oh my that's my room. I'm looking for different motifs. <laughs> that's your screensaver? That's my <laughs> screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put on my cans, you know, man. Jim Norton. Yeah, we just saw oh, Jim, yeah, yeah, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy Norton. Yeah, man. I can see it. I'm... See, we like bringing everybody in at different times. The host of the show, the <laughs> this guests. Is fun. I saw just... you guys on the YouTube. You know, I saw oh. you and Jim and you. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. On oh, YouTube, fun on the YouTube. Yeah, you never watch fucking YouTube? What the no, fuck? What's wrong with that? Yeah, you watch the TV. This fucking guy. I know. TV is <laughs> no shit. TV's like extinct now. TV's for the old fuckers. Uh -huh. I watch the YouTube, fucking <laughs> face, uh, all that shit. Yeah. Hey, what about this new thing? What's that? <laughs> no, it's called Colors. Have you heard about it? Oh, we were just oh, talking hey, about that. I'm a fan of Colors. We were just talking about Isn't that. that. The picture weird? <laughs> no, but it's, it's only 150 yards. Yeah. People within 150 yards. Yeah. You got it yet? I don't know. It seems a little fucking weird. It yeah. is weird. <laughs> like a guy in your apartment building can, see, you know, know, can see what you're doing depending on where he is. Yeah, maybe you could figure out where a lady was, like uh, looking at the layout of her apartment, and then maybe I don't know. I think it'll, yeah. I think it'll come in handy for. I don't know uh, what it is. I think it'll you're come in handy Colin for, what it is, for football players on the field because it's 150 yards, so he pretty much covers the field, yeah. and they could probably figure out what the other team's going to do yeah. based on what they're doing with That's their right. color. You don't watch a lot of football, right? No, none at all. <laughs> 150 <laughs> yards. <laughs> well, you know, you got to consider the end Canadian zone. Football. I was considering the end zones. Oh, okay. I got it. You know, still, the entire uh, field. You're still yeah. off, though, a little bit. <laughs> Why? How long are the end zones? Uh, Ten, right? It's got to be longer than ten. ten no, it's not. It's got to clear. It's, it's, it's clear. Canadian football? No, no, no. Uh, no, got, real football. You got the hundred yards, <laughs> and then how how uh, wide is the it end zone? It seems about ten, right? Yeah, let's go with ten. That's it? So yeah. you, you were off yeah. by 30 yards. 30. What about after there, but, but behind the end zone to the wall? All right, now you're talking 150 yards. <laughs> what if they <laughs> jump in the stands? Yeah, I've seen that happen. Give me a break. Green Hold Bay. on, i got to get this up. So, Norm, you were on uh, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> what a professional. Yeah, until Colin showed up. <laughs> I know. Colin took your gig. He took my gig? He took my apartment? <laughs> Did he take the apartment, too? Yeah, I moved in the same building as Norm. No, no you really are a fuck. Single white female. <laughs> no, there was one moment. Colin probably doesn't remember it. Uh -oh. But I was walking to the uh, to the uh, elevator, and he was coming off the elevator. Do you remember that? Uh, what did it happen all the time? No, I know. This is, <laughs> this this is a little more detail. This is, time after, you took the elevator. this is after I had left and you had come on, and it was like, it was, 
I don't know. It was poignant to me. <laughs> oh, 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 sort of a changing of position. You went to yeah. shake Norm's hand and he spit in your face. Do you remember that time? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I get, he, no, Colin was awesome. Though. You didn't have any animosity towards Colin. Not after towards that. Colin. No, I love Colin. Now, I heard no. you were taken off of that show because of uh, uh, the OJ situation. Nah, who knows? I don't think it was really You don't that. think that was it? No, I don't really think it was Because you that. gave OJ a little guff, and most people were just treating him like a saint. Yeah, but no, I don't I, I know people no? said that and shit. But I think, you know, I think it was because I didn't get laughs all the time time and shit and like old Meyer was watching leno who would get laughs wall to wall every fucking yeah, night but that isn't what it was about i know but i can understand his point i kind of liked the uh delivery and the fucking very dry wit of that whole well thing. the and problem is if one guy don't like you and he owns the cameras you're fucking yeah sick. but i think it was also that old Meyer, <laughs> when he actually would say something about like oj like, you know, if you get pissed, then Norm would just say, all right, fuck him and do, like, five more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Other people would go, like, hey, okay, yeah, like I'll they'd keep back. my gig. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we didn't listen to anybody. And, <laughs> and also, I don't think also we were listening to people within Saturday Night Live, which was probably a mistake too. <laughs> you know, because Jim was. You know what I mean? Yeah. How about my impression of Jim that everybody hates? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I hate it too. How could they hate that? It's yeah, great. That's great it's right on the money. I don't even know who it is. It sounds like him. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> hey, man, who got a comedy award? Anybody here? Damn, oh. I think one person did. Huh? Who? Y you? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I've never, the comedy I awards. Never got, big, no, the comedy awards. You don't know about the comedy awards? It was a big event the other night. Yeah, big yeah. event. Well, I wasn't there. The Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, Tina Fey, I think. No, Eddie. Eddie Murphy. Well, that. No, what did Tina get? The Mark Twain Award. Why do right. you get that one? You have to be as good as Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's a dumb fucking award name. Dude. I was nominated for one, but I didn't. I didn't get anything. You didn't get Mark. No. Uh, shut no, out of you were no, nominated, nominated yeah. for anything. I was nominated for special. Shut out of most consecutive roasts. <laughs> I was nominated for <laughs> fucking network. Ah. No. Yeah. He doesn't Colin like edge, that yeah. very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I did edge him out. <laughs> you were shut out of fucking roads without me. Why are you screaming at me? We both hate the same people. It's not each other. Remember the time you two were getting in the elevator <laughs> after that award show? Yeah. Colin, fucking yeah, why don't you do roast, man? That roast you did already was fucking awesome. Oh, because they don't fucking bring me on as roast. Why? I don't know. They should be very funny. They don't bring Jimmy on either. They always no. want the new people. The, oh, hey, guess what? There's a young girl that's uh, middling attractive that swears a lot. <laughs> Let's get her. What? Is that the new fucking thing? Yeah. Sarah Silverman. Hysterical. Right. Who's funnier than her? Nobody. No, except dudes. But, no bother. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think she spawned these other ladies. That, yeah. that uh, they forget that she's funny and that ho they think the whole point is just to be semi hot, you know, attractive, and then s talk about sucking cock. And you got to show a shit. lot of leg, you got to show a lot of leg yeah, with little yeah, skirts yeah. on, and then you, yeah, talk about sucking cock yeah. and manipulating yeah. balls with your hand, and, and, and it's hysterical. Bring back Phyllis Diller, <laughs> <laughs> some ugly old bag, Rosemary. Rosemary, those are funny Marie. ladies. Wow, whoa, that is old. The <laughs> funny ladies always used to be ugly old bags. Yeah, uh, or Roseanne, you know what I mean? Or, no one was funny. When they would have a comedian on, like, uh, What's My Line or something like that, a comedian. comedian. They never called comedians. Now a chick can be called a comedian, but it was always a, a very funny, whenever I'm at a, com a club and I hear, let's give it up for a very funny comedian. I'm like, oh, it's uh, time to take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> time to take a fucking piss. I tell you, man, you guys got to get this tape. I don't know if I ever show you this tape, but... You know, everybody thinks they're edgy and all this shit. I got a fucking tape, uh, a DVD, a CD of uh, Lawanda Page. You know what oh, that shit. Was? Oh, yeah. And Esther. And Esther. Esther. This was from the fucking 50s or 40s or some shit. And she's in Harlem and, uh, doing oh, damn. the filthiest stuff. Like, yeah. really fucking funny. You can't even believe it. You can, you know? you can all ah, wash them. my ass. You can yeah, almost yeah, imagine because, yeah. yeah, Red Fox and Peanut her, butter and, pussy. Obviously. <laughs> right? What was that joke? I'm sorry, son. What was it, Joe? Oh, pe peanut butter pussy? What you had? <laughs> oh God! Easy to go? spread, something like that. <laughs> Easy to spread. <laughs> Who this Lawanda Page? Lawanda Page, Aunt Esther. Fucking funny as shit. Yeah. I like Red Fox, and he told her he's gonna slam her face into cookie dough, uh, into cookie dough, and make gorilla cookies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> I saw him one time he had a joke. He said, "Man, I think uh, one of those." Uh, he goes, uh, 
He goes, I saw this lady. She's taking uh, uh, <laughs> fuck. It's all right. So you had you got the, you got the, the voice right. I can't That's remember. He goes, he goes, this lady. She's taking the male hormones, and uh, oh man, God, she had uh, she was an ugly lady. She had. She had a hair all the way from her neck all the way down to her dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good impression. No. That works. Ah, the choke's there. Yeah. yeah you're fucking uh, special. I watched it the other night. It's hilarious. Uh, it's yeah, thanks, fucking man. Great. Uh, was... So good to see you back on uh, TV like uh, that. Yeah. Yes. It was so fucking good. And, was and, fun. And, and the thing about you, I don't know what it is with that, that, that voice of yours. When I read your tweets... Everybody that I talk to also reads them in Norm's voice. (laughs) And it makes it that much funnier. Everybody started, during the Oscars, we all start tweeting our shit during the Oscars, past Oscars. And um, one of my buddies, Travis, actually uh, retweeted and said, you got to follow Norm MacDonald. I'm like, I didn't even know you were on or shit, so I, I started following you. And they were hilarious. Like, uh, like the, the funny thing, when are you going to thank the computer? <laughs> Every fucking tweet. When are you going to thank the computer? Just shit like that is stuff that no one else was tweeting. It's out yeah, of your mind shit. Out. I just found out about that tweeter shit. I it's great. And it. you got you got so it's many followers now. really quickly and didn't have to pull a Charlie Sheen with it. It was just funny shit, man. It's But when you go to hit the sand, you fuck for a second. You go, wait, like because it's just off the top of your head. And right? it's right yeah. there, yeah. And and, and I don't do drugs or alcohol, thankfully, because uh, uh, I, yeah. I'm sure guys could really fuck up and say bad things. They have. They yeah. have. Like, you know, Louis C.K. has had to delete entire threads oh my of God. things he's Twitter. Oh, exactly. worst, oh yeah. The worst thing is too, and especially why, if you have you know, a lot because of that's what he does. Though I mean, oh yeah, yeah but, but sometimes even I guess like he'll even feel bad about it and oh, just go yeah, back and go God, delete. God, a yeah. lot of times, if you tweet something uh, and you want to delete it, even a second later, if you have a lot of followers, they got it. They, it's already been been retweeted, yeah. and you can't delete theirs. So you know, if you got ten followers and you write something about, hey, those Japanese people, by the way, and then uh, they can retweet it. Yeah, and then it just goes on and on. That yeah, shit yeah. was censorship, man. He man. went for the, <laughs> he went for the nuclear breakdown. It's censorship. You know, we should be able to talk about anything, man. But it's how about America. The fact that Norm's tweets, like some of them, are not supposed to be funny. They're like profound, yeah. like funny, <laughs> yeah. poetic. Uh, yeah, I, I deleted a lot of those because <laughs> <laughs> I'd read They're my responses. Cool. They go, "You fucking asshole, you're funny." I'm like, oh. <laughs> "That's just it. You can't stop being like if you're funny, and then you got like a serious comment. Like uh, I, I would, I would tweet some ridiculous shit, but then I'd go like." Ah, you know, Obama gave a speech. Let me give a little feedback on what I believe Obama. You racist, fucking yeah. conservative, fucking rich motherfucker. Some people too, fucking <laughs> think it's serious. Like I tweeted, I, I tweeted one that I, th- I said uh, my uh, some I don't know. I said like. Uh, my father was brutally murdered the oh, uh, last week, and it's only now I can look back and laugh. <laughs> and then, these people would fucking answer. They go like, "I'm so sorry." Like, uh, uh, it's closure takes a while. And I, so I had to go. No, no, it was a joke. That's cool. That's How funny. does anyone read that and not, especially from you, and not think it's a goddamn joke? <laughs> so people retarded. get are so stupid. That's something. This whole thing has opened up where you're you're kind of communicating with people. You never would talk to or meet that that you know don't understand uh, what a sense of humor even is. So the responses you get sometimes like just vi- like hey P- I was like hey you know God uh, it's spring but I'm looking outside and there's still a little snow on my back table. At least you're alive, motherfucker. You know I. T- that was Why from the, a dead guy? He, he, well, I, I, I guess I'm getting tweets from the dead. <laughs> I guess he had a loved one pass on. Oh, yeah, perhaps yeah, yeah. a father that was brutally murdered a week ago. I guess to sum it up, everybody's a critic, huh, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Your special should have been called the voice of reason. <laughs> uh, there it is. You, 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 you're, do, you're doing a sports show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I... Uh, I, I guess I didn't know you were that into sports, but I'm then again, I don't sports. know much about football. I'm into sports a lot, but not enough to, uh, like, now I have to go on fucking, like, these sports Yeah, talk you're going to be like the sports guy. I don't know that much shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know I know a lot about sports, but if you ask me, like, who won the Super Bowl six years ago, I'd have to really think about it. Yeah, those are those sports guys that just know stats yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and so shit I go on, Now I have to go on these sports talk shows where they know everything, and then... The fucking f- phone callers. What do you call them? 
Uh, phone the call. Phone call. Yeah. Yeah. The fat guys in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know even more. So it's like, hey, what do you think of uh, some guy you've never heard? Like uh, stats that year? So fucking... <laughs> yeah, you're like Frank Mahovlich. I know Frank Mahovlich, the big M. How do you yeah. know him? <laughs> you throw me softballs. Yeah, I have no idea what that's about. Uh, he was a hockey player. He knows them. He so knows only know things from the seventies. So what's going to be the the gist of this sports show? Is it it's going to be like, uh, yeah, just me doing jokes. Oh, okay, about sports. Yeah, about sports. But it's going to be a, a, accessible to people that don't know nothing about sports, too. Oh, that's good. See, that's me. guest going to be on? Hmm? The guest going to be on? Yeah, I was hoping you'd come on. Yeah, oh. of course. Colin. I know everything about nice. sports. You do know sports. Yeah, tell us from the 70s, I know. Colin knows yeah. sports when, like, they wore leather helmets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those good, <laughs> the good old days. What do you know about sports, Colin? Give us some knowledge. And, and ask me anything before 1973. I know everything. But after that, I don't know nothing. No, oh. Norm, go ahead, man. Okay. Uh, this is his audition. Uh, yeah. I, would ask I could be the announcer. Norm McDonald. How many... Uh, how, sports show. How many... Uh, uh, how many, I guess I'd say, how many uh, World Series did uh, Babe Ruth win? Five. <laughs> he goes, he was making the three thing. He goes, five. Yeah, and it, was, it was three. He won one with the Boston it, Red Sox. It was three. As, As a pitcher. He was a pitcher. Yes. No, oh, yes. no he went two with the Yankees. I'm talking about like 1968 yeah. to 73. I, who, oh, you have five years, years to 73. I fucking you stink years. at sports. I'll give you an easy, easy one. All right. Who was the quarterback on the Colts uh, against... Uh, Johnny Unitas. The, Earl Morrill. Against the Jets in 69. Johnny Unitas, then Earl Morrill. Who played in the Super Bowl? Both of them. Johnny Unitas yeah. played like five minutes and Earl Morrill played the rest of the game. That's what happened impressive. to Johnny Unitas? He was old. Tendonitis. <laughs> he was old. Five minutes old, older, and he they had to take him out? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's pretty impressive. That, that is pretty impressive. impressive. That, that you is, do you both can be on the Orb show now. God you never damn. saw that That's again. good. That's I almost a trick that question yeah. there. It's mm -hmm. like a trick question. And Johnny. you gave me a trick answer because I had no fucking yeah. clue. No, you didn't know? <laughs> no, that's why you said two. I'm like, oh, <laughs> five minutes, they took him out. I had yeah. no idea because he was yeah, old. they brought him in like, you know, symbolically. Oh, like, hey, he's they brought him in at the end. That's what happened. Oh. Earl Morrill started, but then at the end, they're like, Duh, we're losing to the fucking AFC. And they so put, let's put in Johnny. You're really good, man. You, you haven't the... gained any weight or nothing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. He looks hey. the same. Because hey. we worked together in Boston. We did this movie. Oh, what a yeah. blast. We yeah. had. We but had did fun. Grown Ups. Oh, Grown Ups. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot you guys were in there. It's the uh, highest grossing picture yeah. of all time. Yeah. <laughs> it, it did make a lot of fucking money. It did make a lot of cabbage. You got any points on that one? We didn't get any Maseratis. They gave, they gave Maseratis, Maseratis, yeah. They wow. gave out the Maseratis. Maseratis. They gave Sandler. Rob Schneider, Sandler gave Rob Schneider, Rock, Spade, and Kevin James Maseratis. Four guys that don't need him. <laughs> Me and Norm need Maseratis. <laughs> what did you guys get? iPods. <laughs> what did we get? <laughs> what did you we get? get? Nothing. We got Ugats. No. Ugats. No, 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 no. What did you get? Got, he gave you something. I thought he had a joke. We got, we got, <laughs> we oh, yeah, I did have a joke. I said they gave us... Uh, a weekend, they gave us a zip car for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> nice setup. Yeah. You guys work yeah, well that together. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. But I we see walk the magic. Around, we walk around Boston every day. We go shopping oh, yeah. for yeah. clothes. <laughs> and we fucking... Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> this, this son of a bitch, every store we go into, it's like the nice part of Boston, Boylston Street. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's all these nice stores, so they know us. You know? I don't know. I've never dressed in my life. I don't know how to dress. He know. dressed like a hip hop kid, like for you know, like a 16 year old black I, kid. No, I just wear whatever's the loosest thing. Yeah, yeah it's comfortable. It's like, Do you not like your body? That's I why I wear no, loose clothing. I don't, I don't like my body at all. No. I don't like anything that shows my body. My tits or my stomach or the side no, fat. I hate it. But you I seem to, to be in shape, Norm. He's I'm not in grand shape, shape at all. No. That's because well, you wear I, loose clothing. Well, you're not, you're not fat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something. Yeah, yeah. This is weird because I, I was I was fucking skinny, right? And I go to the doctor and he says, We're going to measure your fat. I said, No, nah, man, I'm skinny. I don't need what are you fucking measure. I'll call the doctor, fat? man. He checks. <laughs> he, <laughs> checks <laughs> he was Dr. Man. He checks my butt and my, he goes, No, you're about fat. He goes, you're both skinny and fat. <laughs> like he said, fat. basically like bones and fat. <laughs> like the muscle. Wow. Like, there's no muscle there. Oh. So uh, not a good combo. But anyways, he takes me shopping. <laughs> I take him shopping. Every store he goes in, he creates a fucking ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> They're like guys like, we go to this like semi, you know, metrosexual guys. Like, oh, metrosexual. Would you like to now, go what, the Don't you think if a person <laughs> said you look metrosexual, isn't that the same fucking thing as saying you look gay? Exactly. Yes. What the fuck's the difference? That's gay. But then the guy's like, we're in like these nice stores, and the guy's like, hey, why don't you go in the back and change, take off your shirt? 
What? <laughs> I don't like your You want me to take body. my shirt? Hey, this guy wants me to take my shirt off. <laughs> Starts screaming. Everybody that comes in the store is like, yeah, I don't ask them to take their shirt off. <laughs> no, I just man. accuse them of like, like trying Jim, to sexually I swear to God, fucking so... When I was young, I was fucking skinny and shit. And when you're skinny, when you're a boy... People don't talk about that. They all say, well, fat girls have to, uh, tough. But when you're fucking little or skinny as a boy... And people can beat you up. It fucking sucks. So man. you didn't. You were. You were. Uh, didn't take a shirt off. Even I would as a kid. wear. This is how stupid I was when I was in grade three or four, or whatever. I'd wear five shirts over each other just to look bigger. Thinking I fo- was fooling. Did you used to have to in gym class? I know they used to play like shirts and skins. Right. And I hated that. And I was like, please make me a shirt because I, as a kid, didn't like fucking taking my shirt off either. Yeah, you were probably so, thin. Yeah, I was a very yeah, skinny yeah, yeah, kid yeah. and everything. And and I was like, please. God. And then when they say skins, I'd be like, I. How can I get out of this? Yeah. And then I'd have to go, oh, I got a stomach ache. I... There's two kinds of dudes, you know? Like, there's ones where they can go through a shower and shit. Oh, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Locker room Guy's naked. 12 years old, fucking yeah, showering. Yeah. Got a hairy big <laughs> cock. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> and, well, you know, you, two guys fucking a lady and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. No. How about Norm played hockey with Gretzky when he was a kid? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But the finest one was, I was there. You got fucking hot stories. But there used to be a guy on the Philadelphia Flyers by the name of uh, Dave, Dave the Hammer Schultz. Schultz. Oh fuck yeah. yeah! This guy was a he was an animal enforcer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was a little kid, you know, at the fucking uh, uh, where the Canad Zam played, you know, at the Forum, uh, I was back at fucking Schultz. You know, the big fucking bad flyers and shit. You know, I couldn't find Bobby Clark, but Schultz was standing outside the bus. With a big fur coat on, looked like from Slapshot or something. <laughs> and so I ran up to him. I was a little kid. I'm like, hey, man, can I get your autograph? You know? And he was smoking a cigarette. He threw the cigarette at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <Jesus. laughs> it was so funny. And then I was traumatized. But then later on, I was like, that's way cooler than getting a. a yeah, that's a lot of Yeah, <laughs> being burned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were you good at hockey, Norm? I was. I pulled my tendon. I pulled my fucking tendon. You guys are young, man. Yeah. Well, not really. A fellow like me, yeah, getting up there. Less, yeah. I've listen. Did you have a shot? Listen, as as uh, Colin Wells knows, I've uh, I've seen more sunsets than I'm gonna see. Oh no. boy, no, but uh, <laughs> no, but I, I tore my tendon, and this is the first time I've been immobile in my life because I still have this crazy competitive fucking thing where I'll play, you know, twenty year old kids and pick up basketball and get the shit beat out of me, mm-hmm. but I still think I'm young. Mm-hmm. But this was the first time I was immobile for about three or four months. If you guys ever get there, it's a fucking portal to the future. You go, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I notice those uh those aches and pains that start coming you know? up that you didn't oh, yeah. weren't there before. All of us. And yeah. you just kinda now Sucks. you gotta work through them. And Louis C. K talks about it too, when he goes to the doctor and it's just like, Oh, that's just you know, oh that's what it is. That's never going away, yeah, ever. Exactly. There's no cure for it. There's nothing. you got to live with it. And it's like, oh, great. That's just the beginning of the right. falling apart right. sequence. Ba- you never my fucking cardiologist, 68-year-old man, I'm, he's like, you got to keep walking. He goes, at our age. I go, our age? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and then I realized I think I am in his bracket compared to my kid, you know, who's 18. I'm not in his fuck. I'm closer to this 68-year-old. Yeah, father. yeah. Uh, Whatever Whatever happens, happens. I talk about this in my new book, Perspectives. Perspectives. (laughs) That's good. But you wish you had the... You know what everybody fucking says? They're like, hey, man, I don't care. When I get to be 80, I'll just do heroin. That's everybody fucking says. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. But I think when you get to be 80, you're like, oh, you're just scared. (laughs) (laughs) The whole time. You're not going to do heroin. I I noticed during (laughs) your... I'm hoping young people don't... (laughs) Fucking beat you up. <laughs> Imagine you walking down the street, every fucking guy can beat every fucking guy and lady. <laughs> just kick your oh. ass. Yeah. And they don't give a fuck about you. And you don't. I saw an old guy. This is another thing. You ever notice this? You see a fucking old guy, like 80, fucking looks like a, a skeleton or some shit, right? In your stupid head, you don't think you're going to get like that. No. I don't right. know why, but. And you think it's going to be just so. 
like long and and something might change in science yeah. or something yeah. like, like i've noticed on your special you do have a lot of bits that are very funny but like very dark as far as the um death death the and opening. growing about, old and disease and things like that one of the funniest goddamn things you were saying was you know your odds of getting attacked by a terrorist are a million and one but your heart attacking yeah. you oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just so funny. your heart attacks you the heart's not not. What are the odds of your heart attacking yeah, you? Your heart great. attacking I you. I thought that was offensive. It was, it was very well, offensive. Well, the people who've had heart attacks, Colin, it's, it's a good very point. Offensive. It's funny to us. It's too soon. But, <laughs> too soon. but like, where, where, is, where is that? Like, where are you as far as that goes? Are you authentically petrified of the end or of, of falling apart? Which I isn't mean, it? I shouldn't think about it as much as I do. You do? Do you lay there? I go fucking, uh, <laughs> I get a lot of tests done. Do you? Yeah, like make dad, sure everything's cool with cholesterol. This happened and... to me one time. Because like, people say, oh, you're a hypochondriac and shit. But I'm like, no, fuck, that's not it. It's like the only chance you got is early detection. That's yeah. all you got. And uh, so I, I, I used to go to the uh, Mayo Clinic, you know, in Rochester, sure. Minnesota, every year. And I would have, this is what I'd do. Because I don't, this, <laughs> every... this is what doctors do. They'll, they'll just uh, fucking, uh, you go, hey, I got a cough. That's probably a cold. Right. You know what I mean? They just uh, brush everything off, especially if they know That's you're That's what they told Jim Henson. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So what I would do is I'd go to the, this is what happened to me. I went to the uh, Rochester Mayo Clinic. And I would exaggerate all my symptoms. <laughs> so I, I go to the fucking, I go to the stomach guy. He goes, "What do you got?" I go, "I fucking shit and blood." <laughs> I'm coughing up blood here. Holy fuck. So he'd give me a full thing. I wanted to make yeah. sure I got a full thing. Oh, so God. every fucking guy, blood was coming out of my nose and ears and my <laughs> asshole and everything. So, uh, so anyways, just so I get a full, clean bill of health. So I did, and then that's that's when I'm most happy is just when I'm walking out just, of that place. Now, how long does that last? It doesn't last long because obviously, <laughs> something can obviously pop two up. days later, the fucking thing can start. But uh, oh. then... I fucking, uh, six months later, I decided I never had insurance before, so I decided to get like life insurance. Couldn't get it, right? So I was like, holy fuck, because sometimes they mix up files and shit. I said, something, I must have something wrong oh, with me. Shit. Oh, no. And uh, so I, I fucking uh, said, why the fuck can't I get, and nobody will accept me for life insurance. Anyway, it turns out that the life insurance people are privy to all the doctor's notes. Oh, so you so were they saying... they got the doctor's notes. <laughs> Even though I had a clean bill of health, they go, this guy's shitting blood. <laughs> fucking blood everywhere, you know? I can insure this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So they said, uh, he must have some unknown disease. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so it took me a long time, and then finally I had to get that fucking uh, Ed McMahon life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I like those guys. They're like, hey, man, will nobody fucking give you life insurance on account of you're fucking old and sick and going to die? Here, we'll give it to you a dollar a month. If you're 65 or older, you could get term life insurance. Yeah. And then it says doesn't kick in for three years. Premiums, you know. And, and, and uh, Plus, imagine if you're the fucking guy that's asked to do that commercial. And it's like, and no medical tests. It's we like, won't ask any yeah. medical questions. <laughs> right. Imagine you're an actor, like you're fucking like Robert Wagner, and you, yeah, you know yeah. that's a t you know. Yeah, like, hey man, do you think about death every fucking day? <laughs> like me? Did you never fucking take, think of taking care of your family at any point <laughs> until right now when you're on your deathbed? Yeah, until now. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, man! Yeah, I, I did notice uh, uh, during the special there were a lot of those things, but you you make them fun. There's, it's very rare that you could use the word cancer in a, a bit and actually make it funny. <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah. No, I'm not like, I'm, that's not what I talk about. Stan, that was just a certain period. Of no, time that's when what I, I mean. Was you know, it's, thinking uh, about shit. Okay. Like that. Do you? Uh, do, I noticed because I I'm very bad with me being alone with my own thoughts at night. A lot of times, if I'm just in a quiet oh, room fuck. without the TV on. Like, I'll just think too much to go to sleep. Yes. And, and it could be anything. It could be like, oh, there's a kind of a program I want to maybe work on tomorrow on the computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or it could be, hey, I wonder when I'll die. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that. so I like having the TV on yeah. just for that. Are you are you good with your own thoughts just no, laying there in the I'm quiet? I'm no good. No? I try to, because, you know, you try something to get off the whatever the fuck you'd use to, <laughs> to quiet your mind. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whether it's booze or whatever the fuck, sure, pills, sure. whatever it is. But I try, so I try uh, meditation, try that, you know. F to me, it worked the opposite. Like, I'm sitting in a room of people, they go, just close your eyes. 
They go, thoughts will happen. No fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Racing hellish thoughts, you know? And then the guy's like, just let them go. I'm like, ah. And then you open your eyes, you look at some other fuckers right beside you. Yeah. And uh, I, I tried it three times. I could never get to any place of quiet. No, I need a lot of distractions. And I, I could still operate and work. Like, I could, yeah. I could make myself, uh, you know, go to sleep. Or if I'm working on a computer or something... Uh, I'm good with the TV on or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But I need you this need constant little distraction because if you're just left alone to your own devices, your Fuck. thoughts will turn horrid. I tell you, I stumped a fucking psychiatrist once. <laughs> <laughs> I said to the guy, because I was fucking gambling all the time, shit, right? I had a gambling addiction. Uh, right? I'm over it now, but shit. But he said... I uh, bet you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. He almost lost everything. <laughs> oh, shit. shit. <laughs> you haven't met Chip. Yes, Chip Chipperson is very funny. <laughs> but he said, the psychiatrist, he said, you're using gambling... You're using, uh, you know, you're fixating on gambling in order to escape your real thoughts. You know? mm -hmm. And I said to him, isn't that why you do everything in life? <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I stumped him. He had no answer. He was yeah. like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he recovered and tried to make it. But isn't that why you do everything? Yes. So you're not sitting at home. Just thinking. Thinking about what? What was What's your, really uh, going to happen to us? <laughs> where, where it all ends? <laughs> what was your gambling poison there? What did you, what did you enjoy? Sports, 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 was sports the worst. gambling. Yeah, sports is the worst. You were a casino guy, or no? I did everything, but yeah. sports was uh, sports was the one that uh, you think you can pick. Ah, uh, you know what I mean. You delude yourself into going. You've sports gambled. I've I'm never sure. sports gambled. Really? I, I, In but your I, life. I, I, it, well, maybe once I got that slip and I knew nothing and oh. I filled shit out and some guy I could have won. About you? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. not not no, like you. you. It, I've right? heard the norm stories. I'm a blackjack yeah. guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I play oh, blackjack. Oh, do I love what was your biggest loss? Do you talk about it? <laughs> nah. Not really, huh? Nah. I don't blame you. A lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. You're over it though. I did a stupid thing one time. <laughs> okay, he's ready to talk. <laughs> you know, uh, this was my big. Uh, this was my big statement. I threw uh, uh, over at uh, Atlantic City uh, mm. on the boardwalk. I threw sixty thousand into the ocean. What? No way. Yeah, to quit. That was my thing. I, I'm going to quit. Why didn't you just quit and keep the sixty? <laughs> It was it was like it was supposed to be like uh, I felt like I was in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a symbolic wow. kind of a thing. Yeah, like, yeah, was yeah. it money or chips? That was What's money. that? Was money? money? Holy shit! <laughs> Chip. <laughs> I said chips, and he goes, "What's that?" Wait, so you threw sixty grand because you had a moment where you're like, "This is cleansing. This is yeah, like just, to yeah. the ocean." The I way, it. The same way a drug addict would throw his drugs sure. into the right. ocean. Right. So How long after it left your hand did you regret it? I regret it a pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would have thrown the fucking dealer into the... That's how I would get over it. I'm always surprised, that, idiots. I'm surprised that people like dealers don't get... Uh, killed. Killed. Yeah. It, it really is amazing because they can piss you off. I've seen dealers do things where it's like... And, and oh, where in, in succession where you're like, all right, look, I'm finally getting good cards. I'm pulling 20s out here. And the dealer is consistently showing a dump four or a three. And that seven, eight pops up. Oh, yeah, and yeah, here's yeah. the ever-present picture card. Or any time like, they're dealing around and I'm like, okay, king. And now they go around yeah. for the second one, four. And, but whenever you see them showing a, a picture card, that, fa that uh, down card... It's always a face card oh, or an ace. It's every time. Insurance. Is that insurance. your game? That's your game? Yeah, nice. I have I have yelled. I've gotten to the point where the, the guy, the guy, my security guy, Keith the cop, had had to get a pillow and bring it down because I was turning around and punching him in the shoulder so hard when they would pull this bullshit on me. And I was yelling where, like, the floor guy would come over and go, Hey, Mr. Comey, you're going to have to keep it down. Because I'm just like, God, you motherfucker! Fuck! So the pillow... Do some people recognize you? Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah yes, yeah. it's humiliating. And, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I would also use the pillow to bury my face and go like... And I have to tell the dealer, look, it's not you personally. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's the cards. <laughs> you were yelling. You reacted to an ace of diamonds the way most people react to a rape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screaming into a pillow. <laughs> well, I fucking had an 11 and I doubled down and you're throwing fucking, you got almost 30 grand out there and they give you an ace. <laughs> Dude, I never get you, an ace. It's funny when you see a famous guy. There used to be a guy, a weatherman here in New York named Spencer Christian. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. I remember Spencer yeah. ABC, uh, Good Morning America. I think he also wrote, I think he was a smart guy or some shit. But anyways, I seen him in the casino at the, at the Trump, you know. And you can spot a compulsive gambler. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. His eyes are, and he's on a bad roll. It's that kind of <laughs> roll where you keep leaving the tables, and they're like, better luck next time. <laughs> you know, that kind of shit. And he's just the next table, and he's putting money. Everything's losing, you know, and he's just saying, anyway, this big, fat fucking family from Ohio. They go, there's that brother back. Oh, you know? no, you don't want so to talk to anybody. No. So they're taking a picture, and he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and deal. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Oh, exactly. I, I hear you. And the other fucking horrible thing is you like lose money. You walk away from a table, a fucking craps table, right? Down like thirty five fucking thousand. And as you walk away, some motherfucker goes, Yeah, it's like two bucks for us. Yeah. Hey, go, no, yeah, it's right. not it's asshole. Not. It's not. Yeah. Norm, can we move you oh over one God. seat? Well actually, to college? Yeah, actually yeah, yeah. Oh, Brock Lesnar is here. I'm here, Norm has yeah. to go. Oh, you have to I leave? Your people yeah, Norm's a busy man. Your, oh, your people go. are telling us that you have to go. If you want to stay, it's up to you. You run, I'll we just is that that a few minutes. I'll yeah, talk go, to Brock. Go, go, you go, go. Okay. Yeah, I just want to... Norm and Brock will sit there, and if you can stay, you can oh, stay. Yeah, if yeah, not... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a picture of Norm. Meet you guys, man. Oh, <laughs> Norm is just... Oh, so. All right. Colin, you're out of here, too. Oh, my guys. Guys. Later, buddy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Where'd Colin go? Colin just ran out. It's a cluster. It's a cluster fuck. Norm's just... What is going on? This is the worst of the Opie and Anthony show. Serious XM. Hi. Back. Uh, back from vacation. Wow. Looking very tan. Well, uh, I'm a reddish, reddish, tan. reddish tan. You know how this works. How slappable are those arms? Oh, God, I want to just take <laughs> Not one big <laughs> slap. Spatula right across can I, those can arms. Can I slap your left <laughs> arm Spatula. and Jimmy slaps your right arm? Well... Look, it's not that bad. No, it's 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 uh, the first couple of days. But I bet your back is it was nice and red, right? No, nah, I'm all I'm Are all you right. tight. You got that sunburn nah, tightness. You know what I did for a pull, uh, for a, a a little while, yeah. for a, maybe a day or two, and then the 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 guinea in me comes out. The you look, guinea. You look really healthy with a tan. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all tanned, <laughs> tanned up, tanned up, yo. Now I was uh and kind of, of course uh, it happens when you're and you're kind of in a bad mood because what because I'm back <laughs> no because <laughs> uh, I had to wake up early <laughs> you had a nice two week vacation you should be nice and relaxed and ready to go I yeah. I, I know there there there's just there's a couple of things uh, just uh, first uh, I just I want to say a, a high and hearty fuck you to American Airlines. <laughs> Just, I mean, give me my fucking luggage, you cocksuckers. You don't have your luggage? No. <laughs> no. That's you why. You motherfuckers. <laughs> it's just better not to go away these days. I'm telling you. And you know you, what it is? There's always a problem. You have such a good time <laughs> on vacation, you know? Yeah. You have a good time. And then it has to end Fun. Horribly. And then you got to somehow get your ass back to where you, you started. And, uh... Now, look, I know I can't blame American Airlines for deadly fucking storms that, that were up the entire East Coast. Well, you lost your luggage. People lost their entire home. So. Well, you know, it's a, a flip Take of the coin there, Opie. Yeah. It's a flip of the coin. There was one, what, uh, tornado went right through that house. You see that video yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That, that, was, that was a nasty one. Yeah, but we don't know those people. We know Anthony Cumia. That's and right. And he needs his luggage back. I just know my luggage. And uh, that's what I want, my how, luggage. How did it get lost? Well, let's see. I, uh, I, I My flight back was uh, on a wonderful first-class seat in a spacious American Airlines 767. Oh, shit. Oh, you it's know the plane. white body. It's a big and, uh, when, and when you um, when you have all those buttons for your seat, you know the button you get in the back? There's that one button that's like, here you go. Your seat will go back. An inch. Yeah. There you go. Hey, 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 pull that up. We're taking off. Hey, hey. An inch? What? Really? And it, and it doesn't go back smoothly either. It's just... No, no, it no. Thud. thud. And the guy behind you is like, what hey, the hey, fuck hey, happened hey, here? Hey, and hey, hey, 
hey. Well, well, these uh, these uh, first class seats are pretty much their own pods. The lie flat seats. Yes, yes. You could lie flat in it. There's a Sam uh, Roberts has just popped up a lovely picture of me before I knew the disaster that was waiting ahead uh, of me. Which makes this picture so much better. I know. I'm laying back. <laughs> laying back. My like, entire look at me. my entire seat now from feet to head takes up. Four windows. By the way, I like the little thing of nuts. I can see that you've, you've already been given some warm nuts. I in was first given class. some warm nuts. <laughs> oh, and I, I have a a, a nice uh, glass I, of a uh, red wine with I see me. The, I see the big nuts in his fucking pants. Yes, pad. yes. Jesus. I'm laying back. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I'm laying down. I'm got, all full of testosterone. You sure are. That's got, a vacation <laughs> cock right there. You got two <laughs> giant coconuts yes, in your jeans. I was smuggling them. <laughs> wow, that's four four windows. Yeah, four windows. How any of those seats in first class? There, I don't know. There were like two. No, no there's a uh, hold on. Two, four, yeah, ten. No it's way. Ten, ten of those ten. seats. Yeah, there's two, two rows of two, and then there's one in the middle one that's the isolated. Middle. Like the Captain, uh, Captain Who would want to be the chair? isolated? I'd guy. love that one. That's the best seat in the plane. That's Why? the one where everyone leaves you alone. No one left or right of you. You have your yeah. own seat in the middle, and if you're in three, the up front. Yeah, in first. No, no, I mean, like, the first row? No, the first row is not as good because there's no place to put your no, bag. I'm yeah, 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 you don't so like that. So where's the isolated seat? Right in the middle of first class. Why would they do that? It's just a space There's not for enough seat. room. Like, you have two seats, aisle, so one the, seat, aisle, two seats. So they'd go 2-1, two, 2-2? One, 2-1-2. Two, two? Two, two, one, two. Two, one, two, right. Now, yeah. if it was a 777, it would be 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Yeah. Gotcha. I think. I think. All right. Yeah, this so, but but suffice to say, what a comfy seat. Yeah, oh, it looks. I'm it. laying back, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing uh, some uh, some uh, little uh, chatter about delays mm -hmm. because um, there was a, a big rainstorm in Miami, and then there was a ground stoppage at Kennedy because of high winds. It was bad. If you remember, it was yeah. very windy, very stormy, a lot of thunder, lightning, rain. What the fuck? I, I actually felt my uh, building move for the first time. It's crazy. It is it is scary. They say these fucking buildings sway. Yeah. Finally, after a few years living there, I finally felt it. You're it's moving. scary. It's weird. I don't know if it's scary. It's just strange. <clears throat> yeah, so we, no, it's cold. We were, uh, so we're sitting on the plane waiting. I, I don't give a shit. They uh, uh, they put us in that parking lot area where right. when there's a ground stop they just keep backing planes into this area. Oh god! And, and then they said, well, you know, when we finally get to get a go, we'll we'll go. Mm -hmm. So we get the go, and uh, we go out to the runway, and and then he's like, oh well, look at this, we're gonna have to go uh, go back to the gate because there's a total ground stoppage at Kennedy. Oh. Like, and I'm just thinking, just just fucking take off. When we get to Kennedy, deal with Kennedy. Fucking whatever. Yeah, you'll find a place to land. Ah, just get us in plenty the air. of places to land. Get me I've close. Seen, you look down any time. There's a runway down there. Just get us close. Oh, get us close enough. Get me to Philly or <laughs> Cleveland. I'll fucking drive from there. Just get me somewhere in the area. But what I hear is they're taking us back to the gate to refuel us again because we had been sitting there for so long with the, yeah. the motors running. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm, I'll fucking go to sleep in this thing. It's mm -hmm. like a bed. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's wonderful. So, uh, uh, look at your smug face. Oh, I'm so <laughs> smug. <laughs> just, rubbing it, great. just rubbing it into anyone that follows you on Twitter. Oh, or if anybody was walking past in the aisle, they look at that and are just like, you motherfucker. Well, I, I paid for it dearly. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they finally canceled the flight. And this is directly because of the rule where you can't have a plane sitting uh, and not taking off within a certain amount of time. How many hours is it? Because they, they've canceled a lot of flights just so they don't have to pay fines. They don't want to pay the fines anymore. Uh, they just don't want to pay the fine. I don't even know how long it is, but they don't want to pay a fine. So they just <laughs> cancel the flight. Everyone get the fuck off the plane. Well, that's, grab your shit that's and get off. Is it terrible, though? I mean, how many hours do you think he would have <clears> sat there? I mean, he had a good sat seat. there. Obviously. I would have laid there like a king. Three, the problem was that the airlines had like five and six and eight hours where they would just hold people on planes who wanted to get off. That's obviously yeah. terrible. Terrible. But this is like legitimate. Like this is storms and there's a ground right. stoppage. I think what they should do is before you get on the plane, they should say, look, we don't know. But we may have delays of up to four or five hours as opposed right. to three. If you don't want to be on this flight, we'll try to accommodate. They should give people a choice when it's pure weather. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was an equipment malfunction. It's like 50-mile-an-hour right. winds. What are you going to do? You can't take off. Exactly. Right. That's all it takes, 50-mile-an-hour winds. You can't uh, take yeah. off. Well, you can't land. In that. You, you might be able to land. take off. In it, but you can't yeah. Land. yeah. 
good pilot could do it. Yeah. Come on. We've Colonel seen, Tibbetts. We've seen the videos. Doolittle. Doolittle and his, his men could have done it. <laughs> yeah. They didn't give a shit, and they were yeah. being shot at, for God's sake. What we, is the limit, I wonder, on wind? What, we, we've landed in, like, 35, and it was very, very rough. 35's yeah. rough. And the guy, and I asked the guy, like, what was, I, I asked the pilot, it was, a, it was a flight coming back from Florida, actually. And you were wrestled to the ground. Because <laughs> I, I was kicking the door and yelling, go, ha- go back, I'm frightened. <laughs> frightened. But frightened. I, I said to him when we landed, I saw him in Starbucks, I'm like, how bad was that wind? And I think he said, eh, it was about a 7 out of 10. I think he oh. asked a 1 out of 10. It was, it was pretty bad. So I wonder what the limit is. I don't know. I, uh, I would bet close to 50, man. Maybe 50. Probably. Yeah. I would think they could Probably. do it in 50 mile an hour winds. It's not going to be fun for anybody. Well, I got to tell you, I, I can I can give you a first hand experience. Of what oh, really? 50, 50 mile an hour wind landing is like. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's scary, was fun. isn't it? That was I feel fun. the whole plane like rocking back. We, and forth, oh right? my god, it was insanity. So we uh, we uh, we had to get off that fucking plane, and now our baggage. That's that's where the the thing is. Our baggage is on that plane, and they go. Well, there's a plane going to LaGuardia. It's leaving in 10 minutes. I'm like, whoop, pew. Wait, so they don't want that plane to take off that's going to land at JFK, but there's a plane that lands at LaGuardia? I don't know how it works either. Is that what? uh, Yeah, yeah. You're going to fly into JFK? Yeah. Because I got something on this. LaGuardia is scary if there's no wind. I know. Because they have a short, they have what, short runway? Short very yeah. short runway. So they make, like, banking turns to, to, to line yeah. up for these oh, runways. They certainly do. And then the runways are really short. LaGuardia is really scary to fly into. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. That wait. doesn't make sense, Ann. No, it didn't. No, you know what it is? Here's what it was. Because they probably knew they had to wait another hour. Right. I guarantee there was a delay on that next flight, right? Oh! And the problem is, if he was on the original 767, <clears throat> that would have gone past the time. The LaGuardia flight was probably not going right. to go past the time so for penalties. You're right. But, but the whole delays are because of bad weather right. and wind. And yeah. I would never fly. So they were lying, is weather. what they were doing. They were oh, lying, okay. saying 10 minutes. So it was boarding in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, uh, me and uh, my girl, we jump on this plane, and now it's a uh, 757. Because they can't land the 767s at oh, LaGuardia. Boy. And uh, oh. I'm in the back. Oh, boy. I'm in the back. No. I'm in a regular seat. With no. The, with the common folk. Feeling. Um, <laughs> what happened to that guy? That guy got. <laughs> what happened to that guy? That guy got fucked in the ass. <laughs> As we look at your picture. That guy got fucked. <laughs> look at the guy with his warm what happened nuts. To that guy? <laughs> sleeping with his glass of wine in his hand. You know what happened to him? He was in the back <laughs> with a fucking tube of knockoff Pringles and a fucking water. No. Yes. <laughs> It was so upsetting. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fancy. And I couldn't have the fancy. And the worst thing is, there is a first class section on that plane. But they I had fall. to walk through it and look at another guy laying back with a glass of wine. Now you know how it feels. It sucks. When they walk by you, sir. It sucks. And I had my first class ticket. And I just kept saying, you know, I was supposed to be in here. Hoping the stewardess would be like, oh, we're sorry, sir. We'll bring you every amenity that the first class people have back there in row fucking uh, 20. It doesn't said, work that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You're only as good as the flight you're on. Right. I don't care if your name is Frank American Airlines. <laughs> when you're in coach on that plane, your name is fucking Gary Garbage. <laughs> it really is. You are absolutely right because that's, that's exactly what happened. Wow. I sat there and was just like, motherfucker. Uh, but you know what? All I'm thinking is, I'll just get my ass the fuck home. It's from Miami to New York. It's not like it's a cross-country flight. It's you know, three not hours. that way anyway. Two and a half hours, right? Well, without a billion mile an hour headwind, which increased the flight time to three and a half hours. Oof. Yeah, three and a half hours. That's that rough. was if it took off at that point, which it didn't. Um, it uh, We sat there for quite some time waiting to take off. Uh, my flight, my original flight, was leaving... Miami at about 2 p.m. That's when 2 in the off. afternoon. That was the one I wanted to get at right. 2. We were supposed to be, as they say, wheels up you at been, about 2. You would have landed by 4.30 tops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was it. Okay. Um, I don't think we left the ground. Uh, it had to be about uh, 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 6 hours later. 8 o'clock at night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now without my luggage, you know, because the luggage is on that other plane, and God knows what that's all about, because now that plane isn't going to New York. It's just not going to New York. 
So they take all the luggage off, pile it up in Miami somewhere, and whenever they decide where that plane's going, they load the new luggage and people on, and there it goes. How long were you sitting in the coach seat? Ew. I mean, three and a half hour flight, but did you have to wait before you took off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had How wait, long? <laughs> um, maybe an hour or so. I, uh, if you had waited, like, what did the people, like, what did uh, you with your parents and Keith, so what did they do? Oh, well, I abandoned them. See, I ran my ass off you to the off your counter. Own family? Look, I had to get home. You can't blow off your own family. I know. I understand you blow us off, but you can't blow your own mom off. Look, I, 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 I love them. Did but, you really? But I, I had to get out of there. What were they going to do for and them, though? Like, what was the airline slow. doing? Well, I, I don't know. It was, <laughs> it, was it really, Wait, it you, really. You left them behind? It was really every man for himself at that point, and I had to just. Uh, it's your mom. I know. I felt bad, but they walk so slow these days. <laughs> they walk very slowly, and they I do? don't think I would have made right, that on, flight. Hold on. So, so <clears> you <throat> find, found out if, if you could <clears throat> run, you could get another flight, and then you looked at your parents and realized they can't <clears throat> run anymore and said, bye-bye? Yeah. What yeah. you, what was what 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 what'd you say to them? I really didn't. Have you talked I to just them since? Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. I pretty much um I pretty much gave them to, to Keith and Ange. And said take care of them. Um well yeah, I, I didn't even have really time to say that. I just fled the plane <laughs> and ran. Ran like OJ in the old commercials through the airport. You guys gotta all stick together. No, 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 no. This is every man. I knew we wouldn't get a seat on the same flight at this point. It was pandemonium because we were one plane going to New York. Mm. There were a lot of planes going to New York, and every one of them were being canceled. So there was this. They said, now go to gate. Uh, go, please go to gate uh, 37 for a reassignment of flights. I'm like, all right. So I go to that gate. I'm waiting. I'm first on line. I'm right at the desk going, motherfucker, man. Here we go. You just wait. And I'm waiting for the person, waiting, waiting, waiting. And I'm thinking I could get, you know, seats for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I notice there's a big line at some other counter oh, that's shit. starting up. And there's only a few people behind me. I'm like, there are a lot of people on these planes and shit. And I look over, and it's that customer fucking service thing. It wasn't. I, I was not. I made it first. Right. Would have been first on that one. Right. But they, they, it was the wrong place. Was it your fault or theirs? I think it was theirs. They said the gate. They said 37. They said the gate. It wasn't the thing next to the gate. So I, I take my bags. I go, I'm not fucking waiting. So I just grab and I cut everyone. In, I cut in front of everybody, went right to a, a woman, and, and I hear eh, 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 from behind. And I turn around and go, I work for American Airlines. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I want it out. You pull off your own parents and then you just indict everyone else. I, I work for American what Airlines. The He's the greatest. That's, wait a minute. So what did the American Airlines people say? Well, I did it so they couldn't really oh, hear course, it. Yeah. I turned to the people that were uh, the angry mob, as it were. And I told him I work for America. <laughs> oh and 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 then the guy, one guy, actually goes, "Well, you're going to be getting a letter from me." Oh, really? <laughs> I'm like, "Yes, yeah, sure." Angry I am. letters because you're sure I am because you work. Please for... send it to Sirius XM Satellite Radio because that's where I really work. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went right up <laughs> to the woman. It's kind of smart. For American. It's kind of smart. Went right up to the woman. I say, "Hey, you know, like I canceled that. We need this, that, the other thing. Why not? Why not just like bail on the whole thing and take another day or two right. in Miami? How did we got to get back? Why? No one's no one paid attention. I know. They don't even know you're back at this point. In in look, in hindsight, you're absolutely right. The, who runs this place? I don't even know who runs this place anymore. It, like I said, in hindsight, you are right. Because it's a crazy airport situation. The weather's horrible. You go, you know what? I'm bailing. Yeah. You make a couple phone calls and, and now you're nice on South Street in Miami. I'm hearing you. That's but, what I would have uh, done. But I got caught up in that airport frenzy where it's like every man for themselves. Every man for themselves. You got to get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go there. You got to find another flight immediately. Bye. Oh. Ah, it was crazy. Yeah, I would have bailed. I would have done what he did, though. I'm, I'm an ass like that, too, where well, I would just panic and leave. The only reason I, I would have bailed just because it's Miami. Miami's all right. If you're yeah, going to be yeah. stuck somewhere, Miami's all right. That's true. It's not like you're stuck in Cleveland or something. That's true. I know. I, I should have. But, uh, like All right, said, so I now you tell everyone you worked for American Airlines. I worked for American Airlines. <laughs> what, are the, what are the people behind the counter? Did they ask for your ID no, as no, an they, American Airlines employee? That's just it. They didn't hear it. Uh, I said I turned and said it to the angry mob smart. that I had just cut in front of. 
And and they were so busy with other people already mm. that they weren't paying attention to me. Mm. So I made myself next in line mm. in front of what had to be 90 angry, angry people. Definitely an asshole move, but def- oh, yeah, yeah. but also very smart. Had to sure. do it. Had to do it. Very smart. Cause, cause Almost that, brilliant. And I was first online at the place they sent me to. So I figured I was entitled. And I was first class. See? So I, 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 I'm entitled to first online. So you said, I want to get on this plane. They said, yeah, first I said, is get sold me out. on a plane. And they go, first is sold out. I'm like, motherfucker. And as you're doing this, you're, your parents are just wandering around the airport lost. <laughs> well, Keith and Ange are wonderful uh, with, with taking care of them. And I, and, and I, I was can't trying wait to, to get... hear when they got home, by the way. <laughs> well, I was trying to get a flight for everyone. That's why I wanted to get first. Are you just I trying to get there first? Are you saying that now? No, no. I, I wanted a flight for everybody. <laughs> you did. I wa- but, you know, I would have needed six seats. And all they had left were two seats. I would have done the same thing. So I had to take the two seats. I don't know if I would have had the balls to do it, though. It's like the old lifeboat in the Titanic uh, thing, you know? It's your mom. Yeah, sometimes. (laughs) She sacrificed a lot for you. I know, sometimes. Did they pay for the trip or did you? Well, uh, well, they paid for theirs. (laughs) Paid for mine. Oh, you didn't pay for that trip? No, no, they they got, <laughs> yeah, they got saying, money. I thought he paid money. for the trip. They do all right. They oh yeah, money. I'm sure they do. Yeah, they do but uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, I, like I said, caught up in the frenzy, had to make the move. Mm-hmm. So got on that plane, and um, and uh, Keith found a, a a flight to come back on also. And uh, when, when does that take off today? <laughs> <laughs> now it's a little later. A little. Come on. I think they got back to the Fast. house sometime. Uh, I think they wound up getting home about three in the morning or something like that. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> it was it was bad. Actually, that's not bad because <clears throat> you you left at eight. It was bad. Yeah. Uh, so we finally get like and again, all of our luggage is gone. We still don't have it. Everyone from the trip. Keith. Uh, my parents, everybody, everybody's luggage is just lost somewhere. In how horrible for them to not handle that better? As an I know that's just it. What are they they don't handle, and and then I I get a call, and you're supposed to call a number and give them a number, and they, and I got somebody else on the phone. They're barely speaking English, and uh, <clears throat> I just want to know where my shit is. But, and but then, then they never know. And and I said, I go, you know, I go, could you do me a favor? Walk me through the process here. I don't know. I'm not just going to hang up with no knowledge of what happens, what right. the, the protocol is. Where is my baggage? How does it make it back up here? When does it? When do I know when they've found it? And how does that happen? Like, don't just tell me we can't find it yet. Right. <clears throat> yeah, but you're fast forwarding. What? I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're on this plane. I'm on this You're not in first class anymore. You're in the back with your horrible uh, potato chips and water. Yeah, I'm in the shit <laughs> section. And you finally take off after you've been on the plane an hour or so? We finally take off, and the pilot's like, uh, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we had a storms and headwind. Uh, it's going to take us on a different route. Um, this flight is uh, going to be three and a half hours. <laughs> oh. Which, you know, normally it's a, it has been a two-hour flight. Did he tell you they're going to hit a little bumpy air, a little chop? Uh, the beginning of the flight's going to be relatively smooth, uh, so we're going to turn off the fasten seat belt lights, and the flight uh, crew is going to come around and serve beverages and food. Uh, the second half of the flight could get a little choppy, a little chop. Mm-hmm. So you just told them chop, right? Yeah, yeah, I just told them chop. Why? Holy mother of fuck. Yeah, the microphone's still on. Uh, <laughs> you might want to shut up. <laughs> So, so yeah, the second half is going to be a little choppy. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the first half was very, very lovely. Lovely. With my fucking knockoff Pringles and, and water. Nice. Uh, finally, the booze cart came around, so I got, uh, I said, could I have... The whole um, cart? Yeah, yeah, exactly. One of those would be close like, to the cart. <laughs> can I have... <laughs> Just leave that here. <laughs> Just leave the whole thing. I opted for the Jack Daniels and Coke. And uh, I, I had her leave quite a few of those little bottles. Really? <laughs> quite a few of the little bottles. And uh, a couple of uh, cans of Coke and some ice. And now I'm just like, all right, this will make this shitty seat a little better. Yeah. Uh, sitting there. And then we, um, I'm looking out the, uh, the window now. I'm on the, left side, uh, the, the right side of the plane. So I'm looking. And we are, usually when you fly from Miami to New York, you're over the water for, for a certain period mm-hmm. of time. 
And I'm noticing a lot of land. Like, I'm seeing lights and shit. And this is out of the right side of the plane. So we went right. pretty far Way west. west. We went pretty far west. And the sky is fucking Dark. lighting up. No, it, but, but, dude, Oh, really? I've never seen lightning f from the air like that. It didn't stop. It was a constant barrage. Probably ten strikes every second. Jeez. It was like paparazzi. Going off in the clouds. Why the fuck are they flying at all? And all I'm thinking is, we have to make a right at some point. Into this shit. We have right. to turn and, and go to New York. You know, we're way over. We're pretty far west. So uh, we, we got to turn. And um, and then that wing dips. <laughs> and, 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 I'm oh. going, and then I go, okay. Here we go. Just relax, because here it comes. So I pull out the camera. And I... I shove it into the window and just hold it there. And uh, the shit you see in this fucking video. You got it posted yet? You hear, whoop, the plane drops. You hear, wow, like you hear screaming. Oh, people and yell. Oh, yeah, yeah. People were screaming. How, where's it this was, video? I'm just, I'm just, it's on my camera. Well, well, get I, it up online. Yeah, maybe my camera will uh, end up, you know, in, uh, uh, no, actually, I have my camera. Yeah, I carry camera. on. Wait, how bad of a one. In the 767, I've hit horrendous this turbulence. This is a 757. I, I, I'm not as scared on a gigantic plane like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 757 is, is not a bad-sized plane. That's no, a big no, fucking it's, plane. It's big. It's between the 67 and the 37, so yeah, it's, it's a big plane. But uh, the wings were flapping. They were flapping. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And, and the thing was doing that boom, dunk, jugong, dunk, where, where the wings are just, you know, the, you know the guys up front just, Keeping it level. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it level. And we're dropping uh, uh, a, a lot. We're doing a lot of that. Whoa, boom. And then you catch again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he accelerates to get back up to altitude. Fuck and then, that. boom, you drop again. And the plane goes sideways a little bit. And he's, and he's like, turning because he's, he's trying to dodge the fucking uh, storm clouds. And um, so now we're, we're coming uh, into final. And how it, long are you having this horrible fucking bouncing for? This could be for an hour. Oh, of just <laughs> an hour of, of just. Were you out of your? Were you freaked out? Uh, no, I didn't give a shit. At that point, I was like, "Crash this bitch! Crash into the fucking ground! Right. I don't care." You weren't freaked out. Come on. I didn't care. No, no. You hear it on the video. I'm laughing. I'm going, ha, 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 look at this shit. Did, oh my god! Could you just plow this into the ground? Other people freaked out. Yeah. You hear it on the tape. Yep. How was your chick? Was she nervous? Or oh, she... yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she, she let out a good gasp. At one point, you hear her scream on the video. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that was a good one. <laughs> I was like the crazy person on the plane. <laughs> wrong, yeah. The fucking lunatic. I didn't give a shit. I wasn't in first class. I had shitty potato chips. Crashed What's the plane. <laughs> yeah, it's lots of stuff. What's that? Uh, yeah. So, um... <laughs> Worst flight ever? Uh, uh, probably the bumpiest. Bumpiest? Yeah, yeah. yeah Dude, I was thinking of him close. because the wind was so bad in New it York. I'm like, crazy. I was texting him, like, he has to land in this shit. I couldn't yeah. believe they were even taking off and coming into this area. It, it was insanity. And then now we have to go, th th like, there's no more flying around shit. Right. When, you, when you've, you're on final, all right, he's, he's, he's now on final. He's got to now go into the clouds. Yeah. And when you fucking first see the clouds, I, and I know right when we go into them, it just gets even worse. So it was just, now you're looking out the window, all you see is white, whoosh, whizzing by, and, and you're bouncing like a lunatic. <laughs> and you hope when you pop out the bottom, there's a runway there because the magic man in the front knows how, how to make the runway show up in front of this wow. crate in the middle of this fucking weather. Uh, and lo and behold, there it was. But again, it was LaGuardia, so it was a bam, nice hard hit. Uh, er, and then the yeah, everybody just starts applauding. And that's when you should applaud. Yeah, yeah. they <laughs> applaud when it's the smoothest yeah. flight ever. And I the, hate the, the sunny applause. weather. It's like, why are you applauding? Yeah, when it's save like, that for this shit. Yeah, yeah. Do they have any? This is the worst when you're in weather like that, and they have to make banks. In that weather, like yeah, when you're yeah, coming in crazy. on final approach, when and every time you turn right or left, you're fucking you're like we're gonna flip yeah. over. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and, and the applauding just means thanks for not killing us. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> That's you what didn't that means. Kill us, thank you, thank you. Sir. All right. You're the best pilot ever for making us stay alive. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, well, we got down there, and then uh, I had to go and file my grievance uh, about the um, oh. the uh, luggage. 
and there's a line there. So now I'm waiting, and I'm hearing um, the guy behind the counter trying to talk to a woman who also needs her baggage. And she's saying, yes, my address, and I'll just give some uh, generic address. My address is 5 Elm Street in uh, Elmont, New York. 5 Elm Street in uh, the uh, Alma, Alma... And I, I, now I'm standing there. I actually went in this little room full of people. Holy shit! <laughs> this is good. I go, forever. we got a guy. I go, we got a guy that can't speak English that's trying to tell people where their fucking luggage is going. <laughs> and now everybody's looking at me like I'm a complete lunatic. The Some of the white people are looking like, yeah, motherfucker, I don't want to sit through this. And the Hispanic motherfuckers are looking at me like I'm the racist pig that I am. <laughs> yeah, look at, like, But you know what? Get a fucking English-speaking motherfucker behind the counter so that when I give my address, I don't have to go 20 times right. and, and have him write so scrawl something down that doesn't fucking uh, fit. That ain't my address, cocksucker. <laughs> so I'm just yelling uh, uh, that that w w why the fuck doesn't an English speaking guy well, isn't he working here? You're right though. You fucking the right. guy should be absolutely fluent in English if he's bilingual, so he can handle the Spanish customer uh, customers and the uh, English speaking customers. That's one thing. But he's tripping over his tongue trying to say Elm Street. <laughs> yeah. So you finally got up to him. I get up to him. Gee, uh, I wonder why he might have written Anthony's address down wrong. Yeah, perhaps that's why I don't have my baggage <laughs> yet. No, I didn't. It was I wasn't up to him. I, I went up to another oh, person okay. and uh, fill out all the paperwork, all the bullshit. You're looking at a a, a, a picture book of bags. Oh. You got to look at the picture book and go. That one looks like mine. That one's uh, that. So they're scanning the ones it looks like. Why would they do that? Just so they get a little more info on your bag. But you got. You, it's you, like there's a tag on the fucking there's thing. There's a tag on With it. My it's name's on it. And shit. Could you fucking just get it? And by the way, they should know what your bag is at every moment because yes. they scan it. Boop. Yep. It's a fucking computer system. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me it takes time for it. It should be yeah. automatically everywhere on the computer system wow. the second they scan yeah, it. Don't tell me you don't know where the fuck it is. That sucks. Mm. That's horrible. So, uh,. Then I'm I'm just waiting in front for a car service to show up in the pouring rain, and uh, I'm on the phone with him. Why don't you get one of those guys on the poster? Oh yeah, yeah, those guys do not accept rides from these two. <laughs> Why not? They they will get you to New York because I ha I had a guy set up now. Oh, I had pre preemptively a uh, Keith had set up one of his guys that he knows to mm -hmm. come to LaGuardia to get me, and uh, now I'm on a a iPhone. That it is saying one percent power, uh, oh, and, and I'm just, I'm just. Where are you? I told him where I am, and it's like, okay, he's driving around. Finally picked up, finally home. I, I sat down on the couch, and I was just, I was just beside myself, stunned. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Keith and and my parents got back to my house uh, like three in the morning or whatever. It what was. time did you finally get know. in? It was after midnight. Oh, okay, it so was, about three hours. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I fell asleep on the couch. They came in, went upstairs, went to bed, and then they left in the morning uh, without any bag at luggage or anything. And uh, and I yesterday spent the the day trying to find you know, your find my luggage, which uh, I didn't. And um, and that was the, the the great trip home. That that was uh, <laughs> and that topped off just a great vacation. They have a way of making you forget the great time you had. Yeah. Like, now I'm sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. I'm home for vacation. I have all these great memories. Hopi, I kissed a dolphin. Ugh. Oh, it was wonderful. What's wrong with you? You, oh. have, you have great memories. Now that dolphin has to have a, a fucking Valtrex put in its fish. <laughs> <laughs> in its fish. Before they drop it in its mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. But, but you don't remember any of that because... Uh, because of the trip Because now, now you need another vacation just from... Oh, the beautiful from your ride sweet. Home. The beautiful sweet I had was uh, uh, amazing. Oh, the movie poster. The memories, right? The memories. Look. Wow, we. See what I mean? And C is spelt S E A. Wow. The ship's going to hit the fan, and it's one of those back to back movie posters. 
Got you. Yeah, she's got me. Look out. She actually looks like she belongs on a movie poster, though. Oh, I know. You look like a creep that just wandered into the photo shoot. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. <laughs> That's exactly what the vacation was. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, all the memories that were all erased by American <laughs> Airlines. And your shitty ride home. And my shit ride home and my goddamn... Look, look at that. Monkeys. Me and Reverend Al... Oh, <laughs> me, I was on... I forgot. I, I was a different picture. It's a rest of a different one. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. We're there in uh, Cozumel. <laughs> Cozumel. And, and, and I got a little monkey on my shoulder. Look at how cute he is. Perfectly. It matches the six on your back. <laughs> 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 Jesus. Yes! Oh, gosh. The view from the balcony. Look at me, all sunburned with a nice bottle of wow. bud. What the fuck? Your forehead is really red in that one. That way. was a bit, yeah, that was like day two. That was two. early on, right? Day two, I got a big burn. Before you get the wow, big burn. Did a lot of excursions. Live, went through the, uh, through the uh, jungle. On a on a uh, an ATV, nice. Took an ATV, and it wasn't one of the. I, I did two ATV excursions. But you're speeding through all this. We should take a break, yeah. and then you should get to the regular vacation. Ah, because I want to hear about the. Portion. I want to hear about the suite. I want to hear about the gambling. I want to oh, hear about the Beautiful. dolphins, the ATVs, the uh, Mexican ruins, the uh, underwater shit, the ghetto. Yeah, why are you speeding through this? We is that ghetto. is that your suite? Well, that's half of it, Jim. Wow. If you walk down and then around, the bedroom and bathroom section is there, and then there's another room to the left. It was an awesome suite. It was the best suite on the ship. The balcony was giant. It was just, it, it made me sitting in that fucking seat on American Airlines with those, those Pringles knockoffs <laughs> that much worse. Brings you right back, though. It's almost it does. like it you, does. that was Radio Anthony. Yeah. But then you realize, like, wow. This is fucking Tin Knocker, Anthony. Yeah. And, and, and it kind of, as much as it's awful, hey, you're lucky you don't have to do that anymore. I know. It was, uh, there you you're go. right. All you're right. right. We'll break, because uh, then we could hear about your vacation. The, the good part. Yes, the good part, not the American air. And, and you better have my baggage today, bastards. Thank you, Kenny. I hate those people. Kenny would never have let that happen, by the way. Really? Yes. He, he needs his luggage. You don't understand. He would just talk to one person, and for some reason, they would actually they would drive to Miami and get it <laughs> just to stop him from talking to them. Yes. He's a fucking magician. <laughs> or he, he would have stayed behind and just grabbed your luggage. He would have. He would have actually went under the plane car. and gotten it. Right. <laughs> I'll do it. He would pull the door off like a big clumsy ox and throw it. Hey, <laughs> fucking just Herman throw it Munster. On the runway. Uh, Lily, my bag's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> fucking door pulls off. Oh, Jesus. What's that smell? This is the worst of the Opie and Anthony show on Sirius XM. Anthony back from vacation. <laughs> his uh, his flight home was a complete nightmare. And hey, oh, look, today would have been a nice day to fly, by yes, the way. Sir, oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful out there. Beautiful. But, no, I decided to fly on the day. Uh, I guess everybody was dying on the East Coast. Yeah, tornadoes. Tornadoes all over the place. All over the South. North Carolina, I think uh, Raleigh. Raleigh, right? Raleigh. Raleigh was hit pretty good. Raleigh. So, Raleigh. But the two-week cruise itself was great, huh? Oh, God, it was fantastic. What a blast. Just, uh, and uh, uh, you brought up a, a point. What? Um, that uh, I actually went on some excursions. Yeah, because we were talking before the show, and... Uh, I, I would assume you would just stay in your lovely suite for two weeks, but you were tweeting, uh, and actually yeah. you texted a couple times that, uh, yeah, I'm doing this mm. and that. Yeah, I usually don't, uh, you know, uh, leave uh, the ship go the, very far. I've done some things, you know. Now nah, you were you definitely did more this time than yeah than, than usual. No, yeah, went. Um, I Just got a so weird text from Anthony. It said, Dear Eva, never get off the fucking boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, just a fucking great weather. It's amazing when you can spend two weeks and not see rain. It's just not rainy. It's beautiful and sunny. It's weird to the see whole the time. It's weird to see the sun every day, right? Yeah, it was great. It was hot. Like, not just warm, just fucking hot. I love that jungle heat. It's great. You have monkeys running around. It's fantastic. Usually I wouldn't like that, but yeah, they're I fantastic. Know. No, I'm just saying. Everyone's they're... making their jokes. No, nah, well, I'm not. No joke. Yeah, but they're fun. They're cute. They weren't hurting anybody. It was fantastic. They're cute little face. 
Is it little hands and stuff? Where, where, where's this monkey from? Were you walking around the rainforest? It's from Mexico. But were you walking around in the rainforest? Or, or, was this, hell, yeah. or was this a controlled uh, situation? Oh, this was an environment, yeah. Oh, a, okay. a little monkey environment. Okay. But they had other things, too. You know, b birds. You know, birds. Stupid birds. Stupid birds. I fucking hate birds. And, you know, big zip lines and bridges and things. Did you that zip you line? Do. I didn't zip line. I saw oh, people zip line. Why didn't what you is zip line? Zip line? I wanted I mean? to hang out with the monkeys. What is zip line? You were scared to zip line. <laughs> no, no, I would have zip lined. I would have zip lined. Cool. I have a kid zip lining. I've never zip lined. What I want it? so badly. They set up these friggin' cables from treetop to treetop. And you hold on. And little platforms, and, and you click on, and. Like and the that. whole time you're walking around, you just hear. Why didn't you do are, that? People are zip lining around. It's like traffic up there. Why didn't you do that? I didn't want a zip line. How about no? Why would you? There's fucking bees all over. What are you going to zip line right through a hornet's nest? <laughs> What's <laughs> fuck would, that? That would suck. You imagine you zip line and all of a sudden you see a bunch of bees have landed on your location <laughs> and you're fucking doing 80 into them? Why wouldn't you want to do that? Never. Why? Why? Take the tram to Roosevelt Island. <laughs> safer. <laughs> <laughs> you got harnesses and stuff. You got a hard hat. Yeah, they give you a hard hat, a and harness, then, a safety and line. Z and they were just people zipping and zinging everywhere. That's cool. I can't believe you didn't do that. Watching some of the employees leave the tree on the zip line was kind of funny. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, it is kind of funny. They, they're they very good at it, is all I'm saying. Were some of the zip lines pretty impressive over yeah. some, some height? Over some major height. Fuck. And they were getting guys that get some speed up and Where stuff. Where can we zip line around here? Uh, I don't think they got zip line in Let's America. Let's get a zip line trip together. Would you this go, Jimmy? Lawsuit city. No, I would not go. Here's why they don't have it in America. Because no, it's not uh, safe. No, we have it in America. Let's <laughs> all relax. <laughs> I know we have it in America. Let's let's calm down. Do they have I, it in America? I'm sure. I'm sure that it's right upstate we could do some zip lining. I, I'm positive. You think they could do zip lining upstate? Yes. It's everywhere. It's becoming the thing. It's becoming a thing? It's the thing. In America? Yeah, with rope bridges and zip lines. Zip lining is becoming a thing. Zip lining is taking off. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful zip lining excursion. <laughs> Hunter Mountain, there you go. Cool. That's very close to here. Hunter that, Mountain that's does what, zip two lining? two hours away, maybe? I did not know that. I'm fucking zip lining this spring. Let's go. Who wants mm. in? Um, I, I don't think I'd zip line. You said you would. Especially in the U.S. No, no, I mean, it just it sounds like... It would be like, safer in the U.S. than Mexico. Yeah. It sounds like it would be cool uh, in Mexico or somewhere, but not there. Look, look at this guy, Carolina man. Oh, you're so right. Zip line in Hawaii recently, a quarter mile long, half mile in the air over a ravine. Fucking amazing. Why wouldn't you do that? I don't doubt that it's uh, quite Fuck. amazing. Quite amazing. But... Anyway, you decided to hang out with the monkeys instead of the zip liners. If yeah, I had the choice the between zip lining... And, and having a spike shoved up my asshole and being carried that way. <laughs> but, I'd take zip lining, but I'd have to think about it. But you don't do stuff. <laughs> Why don't do you a lot do of stuff? I, do, I always do stuff. I just don't swing from tree to tree by a fucking, by a rope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I do lots of stuff. Yes. You don't do stuff. I love doing stuff. You don't do much. Why, my nickname is the Stuff Kid. <laughs> you don't do much. <laughs> Let's be honest. You don't like doing stuff. I do. Yeah. I just do different stuff. What was the last stuff you did? <laughs> what do you consider stuff? Anything. Um, you went to a prison. Went to, yeah, a prison. went to a prison. That sounds right. cool, right? Yeah. Fucking. Uh, and then there was that one time you went for sushi. Columbus. I fucking went in <laughs> Canyon in Columbus. I did fucking morning press. Yeah. Oh, relaxed. Oh, okay, Did see. You... All right, so you're with the monkeys down there on uh, vacation. With the, the monkeys. Uh, that was just part of it. The ship was great. It was the uh, the uh, uh, Norwegian uh, cruise line. Epic. Do you feel the thing moving? Yeah. So when you're sleeping and stuff? Yeah, it depends on the weather. Sometimes you don't feel anything. But coming into, uh, I guess, like coming into Nassau. A little bumpy. Uh, we felt a little, yeah. It was it was rocking that but night. You don't really get seasick, right? That no, shit is no. old, old school, isn't it? I do get seasick on boats. If I if I'm on a um, let's say one of these charter fishing boats out of Long Island or something, well, of course, and, and they're mo it's moving like that, I will get seasick. But uh, on a cruise ship, never got seasick. Wait, wait, ever. wait, wait. So yeah. you do get seasick? Yeah, but not on these cruise ships. They're so big and just fucking. They, they have. St the shit these things have. I love watching the shows. Sometimes uh, at night, you're laying around. Even a bad show good on a cruise ship, right? Hey, why not? Not not a show show, a TV show. Uh, oh, on... I thought you meant you never went to... No, I went to some of the shows. Oh, okay. Let me, man, oh, boy. Yeah, but those are fun because they're so bad. That's true. A couple were really good. 
Uh, one, I, I refused. I absolutely refused to go to. Mm. Uh, but the <laughs> yes, um, but uh, the the ship itself, all the the workings and gadgetry that keep it moving and and keep it stable and stuff are really amazing. These modern day cruise ships. Is it are crowded? Sick. Um, not where I was. No, I understand that. But when you were just kind of no, it wasn't around. that bad. It wasn't that bad. I think the economies kept uh, the people down. I'm trying to talk. That's my, um, I'm trying to talk my girl into going just because I we've never been on you know a huge cruise ship. I yeah. I, I, I was on a cruise ship in uh, the Greek Islands, but that was a smaller ship. They yeah. had nothing like what you had going. This is these are cool as fuck, man. They they got water slides on them and rock walls and all kinds of fucking bullshit going on. Right. And then and then we were in the villas they're called the villas. Ooh. And they're the big suites Jesus. that are on the bow around the bow of the ship, or just over the bridge. And it's uh, could Sam get better pictures so I could follow along? Yeah, I know. Well, he's not just dance pictures. Go to the go to the official cruise site. I want to I want to see some pics. The villas. Sam's really terrible on the computer. How many villas yeah. are there? Um, the the ones I had there were two, and then uh, there are a few other ones around the perimeter. But then in the middle of all these is your own private area that the people with, from the villas are the only ones that could get into. And that's got a pool area and a bar and a gym. How many people have access to that? Other shit. Um, just the people 20, that are staying in the villas. 30? So, yeah, around there. Jesus. And, yeah, it's Did not crowded. Did you have crowded. the best uh, suite on the whole ship? Yeah, there's only two of them. And, you, and that was it. That's yeah. top of the line. You top, can't go any higher. Top of the line. Wow. How's the gym? Oh, it was uh, Wonderful. Jacuzzi and stuff? I did not Shit. go to the gym. Why would you go to the gym? I know. I, 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 Keith and Andrew went to the gym a couple of days. I was like, you know what? I'm on vacation. My trainer's coming over today. He's going to beat the shit out of me. But I was like, fuck that. Is he gonna, and then the excursions. Is he going to start by squeezing the alcohol out of you? Yeah. yeah how about that? <laughs> ring me out. It's going to ring you out and then finally get to your workout. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? It's going to give you a million bear hugs. <laughs> Ring me out. Please ring me out. That's the ship. Was there a lot of drinking? Uh, yes, yeah, some days more than others. Some days I just took, especially if I was doing an early excursion, I would try not to drink so much. That's a little crappy room. My God, what are you looking at? That garbage. Go to the villas. <laughs> you don't know how to work a computer. You really don't, you villainous fool. And, uh, Jeez. yeah, the, uh, the excursions were enough exercise, believe me. We went on some sure. some long walking excursions and shit like that. Uh, and then nothing is cuter than a dolphin. I got to tell you. I went to two dolphin excursions. I hate dolphins. I do too. Why? Because I fuck you. Don't, you don't. You don't like a dolphin cute a tuna net. <laughs> didn't we talk about? Didn't we talk? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> a cove. <laughs> oh Jesus! A bloody red. Exactly. Cove. Hey, uh, give me that fucking flipper, idiot. <laughs> Just slice his flipper off and kick him in the cunt back to the water. Fruit. <laughs> Did we talk about the dolphins when you were here before you went away? Where it's all it's a, it's bullshit. They don't. There's no real interaction going on between you and the dolphins. Yes, really. We did talk about that, yeah. It's the trainer behind you with the fish making it do all this stuff, and I'm thinking it actually wants to say hi to me. You think it's it's on its side, flipping its yes, flipper, waving? Yes, I want to think that. That he's actually waving to you? But it just moves the trainer moves. I pretty much... To make uh, you feel like you're having, to that. you're having a real interaction with a fucking fish. Yeah, I was... He's not a fish, he's a mammal. He's I, very intelligent. Is he in the water? Yeah. He's a fish. He's a fish. <laughs> he's a fish with a vagina on his back. <laughs> Stupid assholes. What a dumb fucking thing that is. They were great. Blowhole. I want to throw a dolphin into jello and watch him suffocate in deliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Spies them. I was all in with dolphins until I fucking went on one of those uh, excursions. Well, this is. And that. then swim out there and he's going to bring you back in. He's bringing you back in because he wants more fish from the trainer that's on the fucking shoreline. Well, that's how they train him. You know, you got you to gotta kind of, uh, you know. I want to think that he really thought. I was drowning, and he's pushing me back into shore. No, nah, that ain't it. I know. So go ahead. We went so, to two. Wow. We went to two uh, of these excursions. One in Mexico, which was just a ghetto-ass fucking really? poor couple of dolphins in a pond. What, what, what fish was it? And they said it was a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's a big fucking <laughs> trout. I don't know what this was. But no, no real interaction at all. They're like, yeah, you know. Wait, do you go in the pond? Yeah, you go in there. 
And you stand uh, on this little ledge thing against the wall. Yeah, no. and then the little guy comes around and you pet him. Oh yeah, that's and the, shit. That's the crap I did. That was the, no, it was the shitty one. All right, so maybe I should redo this. That was the ghetto one. And then I, I have this uh, underwater uh, camera case, you know, and you put the, your Canon HD uh, video camera in there, and you can put it under the water. Bloop, bloop, and I'm fucking taking some underwater uh, that's shots awesome. until the guy goes like. Oh, the dolphin uh, does not know what that is, so you cannot use it in uh, the water here. I'm like, yeah, right, what am I going to fucking mm -hmm. argue dolphin with the guy? Mm -hmm. Dolphin's looking at it. It was all cute and everything. His little dolphin face is right in the camera looking at this thing like oh, he's wow. freaking out. That's awesome. Man, I, 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 fucker, should let me continue doing it. It was fun. Yeah, what is the dolphin going to do to you? Nothing. I might try to fuck you to death. But... It, yeah, well, they do that with girls on their period. Really? There's a few videos oh, yeah. that are hysterical, oh. where boyfriend's trying to save his girlfriend. This bottle nose is just trying to shove his. Is there an bottle actual nose. video of this? Yeah, Please right find up a that. vagina. Fuck the stupid cruise pictures. Yeah, get that fucking uh, dolphin trying to trying to nose the the girl's vagina. He probably he's trying to probably push. He probably thinks she's dying. He's probably trying to push her to shore. Yeah, she's bleeding. I have to yeah. help this woman. <laughs> he thinks a great white grabbed her crotch. <laughs> <laughs> her fucking brains are leaking out. <laughs> mm. Dolphin eats pussy is the uh, is the title. Yeah, but this only has four thousand views. How good could this be? I don't know. There now now the dolphin's swimming around. He's he's, he's down there. They're in little. Uh, they got some some fins on. Oh, what are they snorkeling with dolphins? Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Well, that would see, be that's, really. But cool. that's what I got to do. Fuck. See, that's the one at Atlanta. All right, yes. I could accept that. Yeah. Now dolphin swimming around. I yeah. guess. Uh, Keep talking, and when we get to the actual... How long is this video? It's yeah, fucking just get endless. To the, get to the part where he's spearing yeah. her vagina exactly. with his bottle nose. There, see? Now, he, look, look. Oh, yeah. He wants that fucking pussy. Oh, ah, the dolphin's totally trying to get... Ah, 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 that's great. <laughs> She's trying to slam her leg shut and push the dolphin away. This dolphin wants her pussy so bad. Exactly. Nice. You got a rod? <laughs> does dolphin have a rod? It does. Look, it's try it's going to fuck Oh, my her. God. He has a fucking ball. A dolphin. Dolphin's dicks are not even that big. <laughs> no. Look, and his, his boyfriend's like, hey. Cut hey, blocker. you. Ah, he gets right in there. You're in his environment. What? Someone's filming this whole thing. Why doesn't yeah. the boyfriend punch the dolphin? Dolphin has a rod. I'd jerk him off. <laughs> <laughs> now the dolphin's trying to poke the guy in the dick. What trying to get fuck? to the Trying to get to her vag. A vagina. Well, that's a hell of an excursion. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, Get you raped don't by that. a fucking animal. R a dolphin rape excursion is not fun, and but who, it will cost you extra. Who's got the camera, and why aren't they helping? See, if I saw this happening and I didn't know those people, I you'd help. get perfect footage like this, yeah, too. Yeah, of course. You're right. I wouldn't help. You're right. Oh, but he is bottlenosing right <laughs> up her Oh, God, oh, he's God. right in there. That was penetration. <laughs> I think it, that bottlenose is pretty thick. And then he's going for... Uh, he what a cop dolphin. blocker. <laughs> that dolphin really wants some. Wow. And no one helps. No, nah, no, nah, no one's helping. Can't they just get out of the water? It, it looks like it's a pool. It looks, uh, no, it looks that, shallow. Uh, yeah. I think he's trying to protect it. Like, if they try to swim away, he's he's definitely fucking her. Right. Well, what happened? Now the, cam oh, the footage ended. Idiot. Right, just ends his stupid video. Wow. Dolphin probably fucked the guy with the camera right in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> So the second one at, at Atlantis, you got to do By this? By the way, excuse me, do you know how bad your pussy must smell for a sea animal to notice it in the ocean? Oh, my God. Do you oh. know the scent coming off your <laughs> vagina for it to be picked up underwater? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, the, the ghetto one was in Mexico. And then uh, the Nassau, uh, Bahamas, uh, Paradise Island, over there at Atlantis. Mm -hmm. That's a huge complex... Yeah. Got a bunch of different seg seg sections oh. and stuff. Man-made uh, cove, right? Yeah, yeah. Man-made little cove. Check that out last year. They got year. a lot of nice dolphins in there. And then you do the whole dolphin experience thing where you don't just stand there and watch them do tricks and stuff. You get to um, actually swim mm -hmm. around with them. They give you these little power motor little things in your hands, and you go... That's awesome. And you get a snorkel and the fins and a mask, and, and you go around underwater with them and, and, and touch them. And then, and then you give them a little kiss like that. You get a picture, Will. You give him a little kiss. I got you don't like that? I got one of those pictures. Yeah, I know. I'll post mine if you post yours. Then do you get the one where you put your arm on the bottom and the top of him, and he, he kind of bends up and no. smiles and does that? No, no. Got my a great dolphin one like was that. lazy. 
No, oh, got a great one. I and got the kiss one though. I'll tell you one weird thing though. When you look, when you, because you, you know, you think of it as a fish because it's kind of water, swimming around the water. It's got fishy little arms and a fishy fin on its back. But when you look at a little dolphin, the, the dolphin's eyes, mm-hmm. it's got that mammal thing going on. You know, when you look in a dog's eyes, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, this thing's thinking. Mm-hmm. You look at a dolphin's eyes, you're like, yeah, he's thinking. You're right. There's stuff going on. You're right. And he flips water at the trainer. It's like, bah, 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 and then they talk. They go. Bah, 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 bah. You throw them fish. Mm-hmm. They constantly throw them. It's fish. all about the fish. That's how they train them. You can't. Uh, you can't train them without the fish. Of course not. They love that fish. But they let you go in the cove without anybody really. Well, with there's you. a. There's a. Yeah. There's a, a couple lifeguards. There. Or whatever. There's, there's a, a trainer in boards. there with it, and then they. Uh, then they put you on this this uh, like boogie board thing, and you lay out there in the middle of the cove, mm-hmm. and then they go, okay, now put your feet together, and just hold on. You go, oh man! And this bottlenose dolphin takes his little bottlenose, tucks it right on your foot, and then just whirr, like swims really fucking fast, heads you right toward a wall, and and then goes off at the last second, and you just glide slowly in. Oh, they trust the dolphins to do the right thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> See, that's what you do. You go around with those things, and you swim around with the dolphins. Yeah. What's that thing he's holding onto? It uh, propels you. To see, dude. Goes, and then you, he pulls you through, so you ain't got to really see, Jimmy, swim. You, you don't do things. Dolphins are faster. There's than another thing you are. could be doing. What? Fucking watching some chick I'm with get raped? <laughs> and <a> fucking <laughs> an animal with an average heart on? <laughs> Jimmy doesn't do things. No, I don't. You know, I, I do. I fucking I watch Ozzy on YouTube. That's fun to me. That's what I like doing. That's it. Defend. Defend your things. Dude. I like to watch Ozzy on YouTube That's and fucking fine. videos of people holding hornets. Other people would rather watch their chick getting almost raped by a dolphin. Exactly. It was her yeah. salt. And assault. Was, exactly. All that fucking, assault. All that dolphin needed was a fucking a sideways <laughs> baseball hat. <laughs> Jesus. So that was uh, it for the uh, dolphin. Yeah, the dolphin uh, pretty much uh, sums that up. Uh, the, the, the Mexican one was real ghetto. Yeah. And... Uh, and the one in Atlantis. And the was one in cool. Atlantis was good. Hey, you the, walk around Atlantis? Uh, yeah, I was yeah. there a little over a year ago at this point, and it was uh, a lot of under construction. Oh, going it's on. fucking! It's the, it's great. They got their shit together again. I'd go, yeah, I'd be, I went down there for vacation a few times, and the I new would tower with the go back um, again with the adult pool, the cove, and over the, at the cove. Yeah, they call it the cove. It's the cove, a, right? Right. A place that area is really nice. No kids allowed, Uncle Paul. Huh? Not allowed. I hate the cove. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the place was a little shaky. They were really they were doing a lot of construction. Yeah, last yeah time they're down building there. it up. Is it Atlantis, Mexico, or no? No, nah, it's uh, Bahamas. Bahamas. You, you would like Atlantis. Paradise I would. I, that would definitely go there. You would, oh, Jimmy, nice. you would like Atlantis. You had nuts to go to Mexico. I wouldn't go near Mexico right now. I went to. Uh, yeah, it was. Fuck uh, that. This we took an ATV that, ride through okay. the jungles of Mexico, and it was like I thought. All right. This is going to be, you know, ATV. And I heard people going like, oh, ATV sucks. You know, you take you on the street. It's this, that, or the other. Why do ATVs suck? Because people were saying, like, they take you out, and it's just like with a guide on the street, mm-hmm. and you barely go anywhere. Mm-hmm. That wasn't this one. I went to the ghetto one also where, where you, you just go out on the street. What were you doing? One ghetto, one real? Yeah, it seemed to be that way. We went through jungles that were like... And I'm on the bus as they're taking us out there, and I'm just looking at some of these people going, what the f- you're 500 fucking pounds. You're not going to be able to do this. And I was right. They're just putzing along, so sometimes the guide would have to stop and wait. Blah, 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 blah. I'm doing it. And she turns into like into some bushes, Ugh. and then the guy has to tell her how to put it in reverse. Ugh. And I'm just like, bang, 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 bang. and bumps I, I, that were crazy. I hate going with other people. I was that's catching the, what they call fat air, fat air. That's the worst part of excursions. You have to go with other people. Yeah, yeah. I hate that. And more these than bitches wouldn't shut up for a second on the bus. Mm-hmm. They just. And then I was talking to my father, and, uh, and uh, he we has were, a tumor. And, this was, this, and it was, <laughs> was like, shut the fuck up for a second. Can I look out the window at the majesty of a fucking rainforest without your fat fucking face just just talking? <laughs> God, are they annoying? Well, ugly how, American. How long was the bus ride? About three minutes. Bah. Yeah, three minutes. No, it was, it was a good brrr, over a half hour, 40 minutes. How, wow. And how many people on the ship? Uh, on the ship, there's 
thousands. Them thousands. So if they got to just get a bus for thousands of no, people? No, no, no. It's only the people that want to do this one <laughs> Jimmy, excursion. Jimmy thinks it's, thousands of people. We'll on all ATV. go into ATVs. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have a choice. <laughs> no, there's a shitload of excursions you can oh, do wherever you are. Some people, stop. Uh, some people don't leave the boat. Some people just go to the beach. You sign up for excursions. They got like uh, places set up all over the place. Okay. This was about a bus. I'd say there were probably pff, 15 people on the bus. Okay. That was it. And they drive us out into the middle of this fucking Mayan ruins jungle. And uh, you see the ruins? Cru- yeah. Cool. Right? around. There's some fucking, yeah, there's like uh, some graves and shit that were opened up. And, and wow. yeah, really twisted stuff. Was the two of and, you on one ATV or each nah, on their own? Nah, separate. You could do two on one, but the separate. It was, it was so fucking treacherous and bumpy and like ruts and real holes and rocks that you're going over. See, they were fun as fuck. And they don't allow that in America. This no, is the, no. This is the thing we talk about. You get to do way cooler stuff when you're out of the country. No, it's Mexico. They don't have lawyers involved. Mexico. It's like, good luck to you. Here's your ATV. There's a lot of ditches and shit it's out like, there. Believe me, that's the have least fun. that could happen. So, yeah. so now you're ATV in Mayan ATV'ing ruins. ATV in the jungle, Mayan ruins. Dude. Are was... you allowed to climb up the ruins? <laughs> the ruins, <laughs> dude. Yeah, you climb up some steps and shit. That's and you see some rocks cool. and you're just like... Who put that rock there? A long time ago. It was a long time ago. Someone put that rock there. Shit. Yeah. But do they have the people selling all the shit? No. This is, dude, it's in this the was, middle This of was nowhere. one of the ones in the middle. Yeah, this was one of those where it, there was nothing around. It was it was really cold. Is there homeless people hanging around or anybody? No, not in the, this was the middle of the jungle. I was waiting for a cartel guy to come out and just blast us all. That's why you're fucking crazy to go near Mexico. The Mexican yes. jungle right now, you're in your mind. I know, believe me, I thought about it, but it was like, bah, what are you going to do? And then wait, we wait, went wait, to wait. the... So what, is it all just grown in and stuff? Yeah, it's, it's uh, there are the, the trails that you're on. Yeah, I got that. But uh, other than that, yeah, there's there's nothing oh, there but, but God, rainforest and trees and big iguanas hanging out in the trees. Oh, I'm jealous. Like, fucking iguanas. Did you check out iguanas, Jimmy? No, for what? <laughs> <laughs> fucking ugly lizards. Oh, look, he's sticking his tongue out again. We got it. That's what you do. I'm a fly, faggot. What would you rather do instead of look at, look at an iguana? Anything. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Name a thing, and I would rather do that. <laughs> it, this, the, the, right now, the choices, the world is your oyster. Mm. Name anything, <laughs> anything, and that fucking trumps iguana <laughs> by at least two things. But you do things. I love doing things. Yeah, Jimmy does things. I enjoy my yeah. life very much. I, I travel know. a whole got lot. He's a great life. He does travel a lot. Sure. He Constantly just doesn't gone. want to see an iguana. I have no desire to see no a iguana, giant no fucking lizard. Lines, no dolphins and no ATVs. Exactly. And no Mayan ruins. The Mayan ruins I would see if it wasn't for the fucking fact that people are being beheaded in Mexico. <laughs> that's true. That's that's kind of put the damn, the fucking kibosh on Acapulco I in Mexico for me. I took my ATV to go see Sosa. <laughs> in the jungle. <laughs> Do you get off the ATV and walk around the... the yeah, yeah, you ruins. go around and... Can you uh, go inside some of this shit a little bit? No, you just kind of crawl up on them and stuff. Okay. There's, there wasn't really anywhere to go inside. And then the guy gives you a little history on it. That's awesome. Tells you what it was. This is the Mayan temple of love and fertility. It was used for the... All right. Come on, back to the bumps. Exactly. Stay out. Get some air. In 5,000 years, people can be walking through our apartments. <laughs> yeah. How fucking horrible is that? They're going to dock a ship on fucking the west side, and people are going to walk through our apartments. Hey, this is where, you know, <laughs> you'd have friends come in who could have been men in dresses. <laughs> this is where they would put their big shoes. <laughs> I love all this shit, though. Our Dude, business. the ruins. <laughs> Remember that one, Bobby God. did that idiot looking for spirituality. All we were doing were Chip oh, and Bobby impressions. Oh, good. It's the same it was thing. All ch- every time it was like, what time do we have to come back to the ship? What's that? <laughs> no. The ship. No. Stop it. <laughs> every fucking two seconds. Look at that. It's the ruin. Who, who ruined it? Yeah, exactly. Mayans. <laughs> Mayans, Yorins. Who's whatever it is? is I don't it? know. That's who, funny. We don't even know who it is no yeah. more. Rainforest. It was all about that. And then... Bobby with the Mayan ruins, dude. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, because uh, uh, Keith and Ange went snoobing. Snooba, dude, you do your snooba. What is snoobing? It's a cross between <laughs> snorkeling and scuba diving. You don't know what this is? No. Bobby, Why, went, Bobby went off on this. We ripped the shit out of I, Bobby. I guess Jimmy was gone. That's probably day. gone. So when we were uh, uh, this setting is snoob- up to do this. <laughs> no, I don't think that's the one he did, is it? Now, what what they do is they have this big uh, <laughs> kind of a flotation device thing, and they put the scuba tanks on that, 
And then from that, a bunch of lines come down. Okay. And instead of having a, a scuba right. tank on your back, you breathe through a regulator from that sure. air air source. Right. <clears throat> so you basically, it's like a puppet show. You're all fucking... Yes, a marionette. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I didn't do that. I was just snorkeling with the snuba people. And I had the underwater camera, so I was able to take some pictures of the... Uh, uh, some video of the snuba, snuba people, uh, Keith and Angie and stuff, and, and fish. And How little... far down can they go in snubaing? They were down about 20 feet, I guess, somewhere around that, you know. And then with the snorkel, though, you could pretty much, unfortunately, you know, you got to breathe, so you got to come back up. But I was going down to the same level as the snuba people, holding on to shit because I didn't have a weight belt. Well, so cool. I'm like grabbing this door off of the Edmund Fitzgerald or whatever the fuck it was, and I have the camera in one hand, and I'm trying to. Like video of fish, and you kind of get you kind of get caught up in the moment where you're like, oh, I want to get a good shot of that fish, you know. And then you realize I gotta fucking breathe. And you look up and go, nah, nah, that's a long way up. You can hold your breath. I wonder that long? if I'm gonna make this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and then I get up and be like, <sighs> I, I don't. <laughs> you gotta blow the snorkel. I got <sighs> just blow it out. Yeah, I can't hold my breath that long. It was think. cool. You could tell in the video, and I'm trying to. Uh, get down because it gets all shaky because yeah, yeah. it's so hard you're to, trying to fucking push yourself, down. push yourself down and it's work you know and you're like you're not breathing but you're working and then you're grabbing onto something to keep your yourself steadied so it was pretty fucking cool though Did and they the bring their kids thing, or no uh no no See, yeah, sometimes you got to do that you got to just get yeah. away the atvs were good atvs were good and, and then we went to uh, more atvs on saint martin atvs which uh oh my god okay Good man, just go. And then you're on the street. You're on the street on these ATVs with fucking like tractor trailers in the other lane coming past you. Like this ain't like the jungle. Wow. This isn't like uh the fun thing. So where 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 are you supposed to go? It takes you around to some shitty beach. It looked like Crab Meadow <laughs> on Long Island. It was horrible. You don't like Crab it Meadow. Was, I hate Crab Meadow. It stinks of seaweed, low tide. Yeah, it's not And there's the no beaches. waves. It's just these little ripples that come up. And then you sit on this beach for a minute, and then he's like, all right, everybody, load back up. And you can't really get speed up and, 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 and shit. I'm trying all kinds of things. Like I'm, I'm fishtailing on the street, just what? trying to have some fun. And that was your second ATV ride? Yeah, that was the second one. Oh, that's a bummer because that takes <clears> away the first one. When that happens. No, it made me think, wow, that first one really ruled. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, the second one was just kind of like, uh, and and the, the the ATVs themselves were like street legal and not, they were like knockoffs. Mm -hmm. The ones we have for the jungle, like massive shocks sure. and, and like a two foot fucking travel on the shocks and everything. This one, it's like, all right, it's meant for the street. And I think they're trying to take the ATVs away from the people, right? Especially on Long Island. We could speak yeah. locally. I mean, they don't want you to jet ski on Long Island anymore. No, and, and I, no. I think they're trying to make it harder to ATV as well. Yeah, and that was real ghetto because they were just taking us through the streets. So we were just videotaping profound poverty. <laughs> it's amazing, the poverty in these countries. And all I can think is, like, this is literally paradise. You have beautiful beaches, mm -hmm. a lot of land that isn't developed, and uh, I think Keith said this This place, uh, two words describe it. Um, procrastination and, uh, uh, like, laziness or just, just not, it, I, I, it was cinder blocks. It's like guys went to work and said, let's build something. Mm -hmm. And he, they, they put up some cinder blocks and then go, ah, fuck it. And then they go, <laughs> let's leave. And by the way. Just leave the truck there, too. <laughs> Abandonment. That was it. Abandonment and procrastination. Why would you work if the beaches were so nice, though? But oh. that's just it. They could build these paradises. They live in poverty. What could they build? A fucking resort. Something. No, the the, the big guys from, like, America and Europe are doing that. I don't know. There's... And then they're getting the locals to work there for no money. Well, if the locals... They can't figure that out. Why can't the locals figure out how to build a resort... Kind of a thing. It doesn't even have to be a giant resort thing. It could be something that's more than three cinder blocks and a tin roof selling tacos. Isn't it nice to see that the resorts put a little money back into the island? Oh, God. <laughs> doesn't when, matter what island you go to. When you are you off drive compound, the, you, wow. Yeah, you drive through the ghettos to get to the most amazing fucking uh, oh. resorts <clears throat> and realize... Whoever owns those resorts takes their money with them. Oh, they do not spread the wealth nope. on those islands. And, you know, fuck them. They shouldn't. 
These people live in, in what I say, like paradise. You think they're sad, though? Oh, I've seen. We were passing I've, I've by I've seen people nothing but happy locals when I'm I like, go on vacation. What is this guy doing? One guy just stood there, mm -hmm. and, and we went by, and he goes, hey! And he held a fish up. <laughs> he just goes, hey! <laughs> and other people are just sitting on their patios and porches, just looking at traffic, doing nothing. But they're not sad. I couldn't tell. There was no expression. They probably have it easy. Yeah, I'm sure they're thrilled to fucking live in the shit houses they live in and watch fucking fat tourists zip <laughs> by on ATVs. Do you get to see blue water like that? That's what they get to see every day. Yes. How about Look you build aqua. something nice? That's all they blue. get to see is blue water. Blue water's How? nice, but it's not all you can see. It gets uh, old after a while. How sure about you build something nice? They don't know how to do that. And, and, and you use it uh, to make money for the island and yourself and... And what have you, you know, mm. uh, that part of it was getting me kind of a little eh. like Nassau, right? Nassau has a thriving little metropolis that's probably one block by one block. And then the rest is shit. Yeah. <laughs> but that middle part, it's wonderful. They got banks and the ride from the airport to and... Atlantis is. Oh, wow. Yeah. That yeah. should be an amusement park ride. Bad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's just total poverty. Yeah. It's. Uh... Uh, the the, po the poverty is just astounding, and uh, you know, you, of course, you got to show your ID to get back on the ship because I guess they don't want people piling on mm -hmm. where there's, you know, hey, it's our food, it's our <laughs> beer. What are you doing? <laughs> but it was uh, all in all uh, just a great, great time. Two fucking weeks in the Caribbean. I was like a pirate. It's fantastic. You didn't go where they are, right? Where? You went nowhere with this pirates. No, nah, no. Nah. Nah, that's the Caribbean. What what <clears throat> what islands did you hit in two weeks? <clears throat> Do you oh remember? God. Give me the All give right, me the like, quick list. Uh, yeah, Saint Martin, uh Saint Thomas, um Cazumel, yeah, somewhere else, like Honduras. And then uh uh else uh, Nassau. Uh and when do they take off? Like dinner time? And then you wake yeah, up around in, there. And then you wake up in another area. Yeah, you go. You, you go there all that. all day. You spend all day like where they stop, and um, then you get back on the ship, and the ship leaves. You have dinner. You go to the casino. Uh, you win money until the you know last couple of days that you're on the ship, and then you you pretty much give it all back. <laughs> oh really? Oh boy, did I have a bad bad. Uh, couple well, of days there. Well, you, I was doing really well. <laughs> well, you tweeted the one picture with the cash. And yeah. I, I saw that and I just, oh, there it is. That's a good one. And I shook my head. I'm like, <clears throat> he won that way too early in his trip. That's and that not wasn't good. near what I won. Really? Oh, yeah. That was crazy. You gave most of it back. I gave a lot of it back. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Were you, were you being cranky at the casino? Uh, a couple of times. For the most part, though, I was doing well, so I wasn't being cranky. I was, I, they loved me. I was Mr. Anthony to everybody. And apparently the casino staff are the same people that work at like some of the restaurants are the same people that like do the mustard drill mm -hmm. with the life jacket thing and, and the same people that are out showing you where the excursions are. So every day it was like, hello, Mr. Anthony. Hello, Mr. Anthony. Mr. Anthony. Mr. Anthony. Everybody. And I'm, I'm throwing money around like Ralph Cramden. <laughs> I didn't care. I'm, I'm tipping this one and that one. Uh, and, and they treat you when you tip these motherfuckers early on, you are treated like royalty. That's the way to do it. If you're so you throw out a shitload of money at the beginning, yep. and whatever you need. Like I was able to call my concierge, and uh, if it was seven o'clock, I'd be like, I want a dinner reservation for four at whatever restaurant I wanted it at uh, at eight o'clock, and they're like, all right. Whatever you need. And then, you know, there's a line of people waiting to get in. You just, just walk like, right in. All right, thank you. So now the food on the ships is supposed to be pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. What would they have like a lot of snacks all over the place? All over the fucking place. Ooh. It's snack city. I would love that. And and then there's uh, a shitload see, uh uh Norwegian is different than Royal Caribbean. Norwegian's more like do what you want to do. Uh, Royal Caribbean sets up like the main dining room and has these shifts of very elegant dinners and stuff like that. And then they have buffets and other things. Uh, this uh, The Epic had a shitload of great restaurants. You want Japanese at Tapanaki? Or you want Steakhouse, Italian, whatever, Jap uh, Chinese, 
the noodle bar, fucking just a shitload of great restaurants. And this is all floating. I know. Sometimes I don't you get sit it. there and just go I like, don't get it. sometimes we were sitting there eating at a fine restaurant and you look around and go, we're in a boat in the middle of somewhere. I don't care. Yeah. I will it's just never in the middle of the fucking that. ocean and you're just the amenities. Like when you're on a boat amazing. and you're with a bunch of buddies and you got some rods and what? And, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to stop maybe so you could have put that, that in a different way. <laughs> Three guys on a rowboat, maybe? You got, you got rods and you got some bait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's my the Jewish rods. friend. <laughs> that commercial for racism. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand that you're on a boat. Yeah. But when you're looking around, there's a sushi chef. What I the, know. Uh, this, that, uh, well, you're hearing the clinging of... of, of uh, Silverware on China. It doesn't make sense and, to me. And that, it's just, uh, it, it, it was great. Great food. Would a week be enough time? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. A week is plenty of time. You should yeah. do a cruise. I've thought of it, but uh, my it. days have to be used for other stuff. Oh, my God. Stuff. It was really fucking cool. And the, uh, like, the, you, t you tip the fucking butler guy? Holy shit. Every day when we came in from the excursion, our table was set with, like, little sandwiches and and fruit all over the place, and drinks, and whatever the fuck else you want. And then I hosted a little cocktail party for all our guests. I was like, could you please, concierge, could you please send an invite out to everybody? And have it? And then I went over with the butler, yes, I need some of this and that. Oh, and, Jesus. and I had a little cocktail party. I, and for how many people? Uh, I guess it was about uh, 12 Who 12 showed people. up? It was everybody that from our party. My aunt, uncle, mom, dad. Oh, you had more family there. Yeah, yeah. A uh, Dawn Patrick, uh, oh, my cousin okay. Anthony. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of people down uh, down there. It was it was a great time with, uh, with nice. that many people. It was fun, man. So it sounds like fun. Like I would love to do it for a week. I think two weeks would drive me nuts. Yeah, two I'll, weeks. You could get a two lot weeks done in a week. A fucking yeah, yeah. first class trip week. I would yeah, love yeah. to try that once in my life. I've to go go top of the line. Yeah, for a I, week, I, and I you'd, would. You'd fucking love it. Starbucks man, on the ship. Yeah, nice. But like, not, like yeah. it looks like a regular Starbucks? Yeah. And that's floating. Yeah, they got that. Can that's you floating. get snacks late, though? Anytime. Ooh. Anytime you isn't want. It, isn't it pretty much all you could eat on these cruise ships? Oh, fuck yeah. So you just wander yeah. around eating whenever there you are want. There are certain things that are um, completely... Uh, do you feel fat right now? <laughs> <clears throat> I do feel a little pudgy. <laughs> I did uh, I put on a little. That's why I, the trainer's coming over today to... To ring you out. Start this... Yeah, uh, it's going to ring you out. Start this over again. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to say? All right. Well, if time. anything else pops, you got to let us know. Yeah. I think we covered your cruise. Though. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a great time. Yeah, it's it's just one of those fun fucking things. You're listening to the worst of the worst of the OP and Anthony show. Right here. On Sirius XM. You know, I broke my leg jogging with Father Tim. We'd meet at the rectory. Do you know that story? Mm -hmm. Me and my fucking priest. <clears throat> He's 30. And uh, he was the new priest, and the, the, you know you get introduced to the new guy. Right. And he's like he's a thirty year old surfer. That's all right. What's his problem? No, he had a call. He had a girl. You know, he did girlfriend stuff, and he went. To, he was going to go to college. He used to party, and they used to be. Uh, he used to go to like Burning Man and shit. And there used to be a um, where do monks go? To the monk oh, place. So. Yeah. <laughs> they go to the, uh, the, 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 the uh, missionary. The monk monastery. No. I don't know. Monastery. The monastery. Hall? Oh. If you need the real answer, I like that monk place. Monastery. There's a, there a monastery, uh -huh. and uh, they used to go there when they were, like, coming down to, like, chill out before they had to see their parents. And then he realized he was going there on the way to the party, and not. then he was staying there for four days not talking. And he had his calling. He had a calling. So I meet him. Excuse me. And uh, I decide to haze the new guy. Like, I'm a, like a complete... How old are you? 40. I'm a complete jerk. This, this is recent. This is three years ago. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, I just got to St. Monica's, and it was home for me. <clears throat> but this is why. I go to him. I say, yeah, nice to meet you. Look, I want to ask you a quick question. He goes, what is it? I go, you know, I've always had a problem in the Bible with John 3.16. It says, those who love uh, Christ, the Son of God, shall have everlasting life. And the parenthetical of that is that if you don't believe in Jesus, the Son of God, you don't have everlasting life. Like Buddhists and Taoists and Muslims and Jews, like rabbis, pray more than I will ever pray in my life. Like they're all dying in a pit of fire because they don't believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Native Americans had no concept of the Christ. We put crosses in the ground. They thought they were blanket holders. They were like, hey, way to go. Everyone be born before 7 AD, because he wasn't born at zero. Uh, everyone born before Christ, or everyone's dying in a pit of fire, except this tiny group of people that's very country clubbish. It seems, 
exclusionary to me. And he just looked at me and goes, yeah, bro, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew I was home. Like, I couldn't believe he wasn't going to just I, go like, this is how it goes. Deal with it. He that, just goes, yeah. And then later through it, like, he did like three funerals that day. Yeah. That's, my, it, that's my biggest question right there, too. Exactly what you just said. Doesn't make sense. But so, it does, they're stories. Yeah, yeah but the and thing, I go. But I, don't I, think but supposed, I, I don't think you're supposed to say that here. But I, but I love how he didn't uh, bullshit. Yeah. And I knew I was home. Yeah. I'm like, this is my spot. Yeah. And so Tuesdays and Thursdays we'd run, uh, and Fridays and Mondays we'd go to Krav Maga. Like we we go <laughs> fight together. And I was always bummed out that he didn't. Uh, we'd surf together, and I was bummed out that he didn't wear his priest collar surfing, because I thought, how cool is that? Like everyone in the water is stoned. And you just see a guy in a priest collar. You don't see the board. You just see a guy like skimming across the water right. with a determined look on his face. Mass will be full, yeah. right? But but people wouldn't take him seriously. They would think, oh, look at the idiot that's making believe he's a priest as he's in the water. I, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Could be. No, Until they saw him slashing a Jew's tire. <laughs> right. like, this, guy's the, this guy's the real deal. <laughs> now, a couple things. We should call him. How old is he now? 30, 31? 32. Okay. Does he ever talk about pussy? No. Be honest. No. Or you can't go there. No, never. He never just talks like a man? No, no, he's not a man. He's a priest. He's, he had a calling. He took a vow. Yeah, come on. But the vow, though, man, though, you have to want it. Like, you have to see a little cow once in a while. Like, I'm not going to ask him, like, hey, do you... No, like, no, no, no I understand, not? but has he ever let his guard what down? You, why not? Hey, it's you, the most offensive thing. Do you I ever could... think about sex? That's a very fair question to ask another man. Yeah, How you... big's your cock? I would ask him all those things. <laughs> Is it heavy? No, you seem like you have a relationship with the guy, so has he ever let his guard down? He had to let his guard down. There isn't a guard to be let down. He's I don't truly, get that. He's an enlightened. I'm telling. Hey, I'm, full of shit. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> have you ever seen? I, look. Have you, you ever, know me? Have you seen him look at a, a nice ass on the beach? I'm Nothing. I'm telling. I say it in my show when I broke. We were jogging up the Santa Monica stairs and I broke my leg. And I looked down. I was like, man, my fucking leg is killing me. And I looked down. I had three kneecaps. And I go, uh-oh. And I go, Father Tim, I broke my leg. And he goes, whoa, that's not good, bro. And he just keeps jogging up the steps, not looking at chicks. I say it in my show. Like, there he goes, just running up the steps, not looking at chicks. And it's like mm. the place to be seen. And I'm telling you. Is he gay? No. Did he help you with your broken leg? I'm confused. He's not that's sounding very I priestly. I said if Martinia was here, he would have you know had this straightened out. And mo you are new. And you just said something else? I, I used to love the Santa Monica stairs. How great is that? It's I a prefer the Santa Monica no, elevator. Jimmy, you don't want oh, to say that. I had to lean in and say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dice turned me on to him. Santa Monica you, stairs? I don't know. You I don't run know up him. But There's I don't no, think he goes all the way up. You There's got, no way he's doing those fucking stairs. But by the time Dice he is an animal, though. He's a cardio animal. You, that fucking cocksucker can, can literally do a thousand sit-ups in a workout. How many, how many stairs is it? I forget. But It's got to be 50, right? By the time you get to the top, you cannot feel your fucking thighs. <laughs> right, Jay? Yes. <laughs> and, I'm just laughing at Jimmy because uh, it's funny. Uh, I would hate to have fucking that many you, steps. You have to go back down. You do more than one too, man. You go up and down. Uh, you take a break by. You take no, a break never, when you get back I've down. I've never spoken to him about that stuff at all because you never saw him let his guard down. You're on a beach. There's no guard. There's no guard. Surfing. I swear to chicks, you, there is no guard. Marijuana. To, there is no guard to be lowered. And he's a young he's guy. He's had a calling. He had a life, and then he had a calling. You really believe you just get the calling? How could you? How could you not? This whole, I don't know what I. But is it a real calling or is it something? And again, not with him, but in general, is it so something you, you tell yourself? Tax break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it a real calling or you just want a free car? And do, you, do you believe it? You or do you think that this guy's looking around, but he's he's making damn sure no one sees that he's looking around? No, he's not looking around. That's fucked up. And not only do I believe it, I know it. He's looking at somebody's crotch. You think? You're wrong. I think. You can't not look You're at You're wrong and out of line. You can't not look at pussy lips him. bulging and want to just fucking make a finger I'm breaking noise. your balls and you're right away you're getting fucking fresh. <laughs> <'Cause you're> right, <laughs> messed his suit up, hugging him. Because he's still a man. Yeah. He's a man of He's a man of God. Yeah. It's possible. I mean. Well, you're telling, if I call him right now, are you going to ask him this stuff? I would love to ask him. I, I would. Why? It's a very fair question because. Ask him in private. You know, I. Oh, we don't know who he is. Like, I don't know him. Jay, he's I, my priest. If, if you give me permission, I certainly would. In I wouldn't. I, I would do a ki no on the air. I'd be careful about it. I wouldn't to I maybe would get never... an answer, but to maybe get an answer about it because I, I don't believe that. How do you think you... a priest who we've already established what church he's at? He works for the fucking oh. Vatican. Let's not forget he's like right. it's but the I fucking rank and file organization. Look, Roland's like, yeah, I'm like he's uncomfortable. I would have. I, I would do it with respect. 
Yeah. Because I'm confused. What about sexual urges? I, I'm confused. The most by confusing it. part of the would, priesthood for any guy is the sexual urges. Would, How do you? This what is what I would do, Jay. Go. That's look. what makes being hold a on, priest a special, special thing. Jay, I would, I would do it this way. I go. You're on a beach with Jay Moore. You guys are uh, surfing. There's uh, beautiful girls around. I'm sure. Explain he gets, why he you're gets, not looking. That's all. I'm sure he's looking and saying, "Wow, there's a really beautiful girls over there." You don't think he gets turned on? Uh, you have to. I, I mean, he's a human Come being. Yeah, yeah he, right. What do you do with the sexual urges? Then when like, you what, get that, then how what does far he do? do you go with them? Do you wonder what her clit looks like? Do you want to, you know, that's what I would ask. I mean, I, oh I would try to keep it, you know, I would, I would be respectful. Lines, I'd go, do you want to eat her ass till the cows come home? <laughs> I'll do respect. You know, that's where we would go. To. Of course. I Jay mean, would give us a little. Hold on, yeah. Larry in Massachusetts. Larry! 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 Who's an animal? You're going to find your... You know, your mother's an animal. This gonna guy's, find guy's your mind me. seeing it dead Larry. in the hallway, Larry. Yeah, this, is, this guy just called me an animal. Yeah, <laughs> he can't believe it. Is Larry a good baby name? <laughs> no, it's one of the worst. Yeah, that's bad too, right? Victor, Victor Larry, Gary right. is also atrocious. Hideous. Like, picture a baby. He had a picture of the little onesie <laughs> with anchors on it. Why? I don't know why there was a nautical theme to little boy yeah, things. Exactly. Anchors and uh, tugboats. They're masculine. <laughs> this is my son Gary. <laughs> then you got to change Victor's diaper. This, you know, my son Larry. Oh, look at little Larry. Larry. Larry! Hello, little boys. The, All right. The priest that Jay's talking about, I don't know the gentleman, but making a making So based a on that... Faith, yeah, exactly. <laughs> making a decision of faith is an irrational decision. Right. For you. You're, you're making a decision... No, 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 wait, wait. It's irrational for you. No, no, no. No, he's not criticizing him. I think he's speaking in general. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand it, by the way, Jay. But I, to, I, I, if you, you don't make a decision of faith, you're called. We are a called people. All right, without talking to the guy, I'm not going to understand this, is what it comes down to. Can we talk? Call I apologize. Oh, no, no, no. Not after. What, what did Larry just what say? We, no, what if I thought we, he meant Larry. Go ahead, Larry. <laughs> what if we turn Jimmy's mic off? I wouldn't do that. No, Jimmy would be cool. A person who makes a decision of faith, whether they're called or not, is immaterial. It's an irrational decision. Now, and I'm not saying it's a bad decision, but the person that made the decision, in hindsight, to them it's the most rational decision they ever made in their lives. It, it, to them it gives them total focus, total dedication, and, it, and, it, and, and they're comfortable in their skin, and, and they're comfortable with their decision. That's why when Jay says there's no math to let down, he's absolutely right. There My, is no math to let down. I've always thought that a but lot. how is that irrational? If they have total focus and total control, how, does, how is that... That would make it a rational decision. I understand that, but if you're uh, if you make a leap of faith, faith is belief in things unseen. It is irrational by nature, I think. Yeah. When, when the Savior said to the to, to the apostles, "You have seen and yet not believed." How much more blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed? He didn't actually say that. He emailed that to Paul when the whole Corinthians thing was happening. Boo. <laughs> I just wanted to say Corinthians. Go ahead. But that's the point I'm making. It ultimately, looking at it at face value is an irrational decision because you make yeah. you make a decision to totally turn your back on everything you've been yeah. and become something that, that you have no idea really ultimately what you're getting into. That's marriage. And, 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 and in hindsight, yeah. you look back at the most rational decision like, oh, and then now, now I'm not trying to criticize Opie, but he keeps saying about the mask and how he used to do. He has completely turned his back on everything that he was and become a new creature in Christ. I think that um, I'm just trying to so understand. So Larry's sir. pro yeah. priest. Yeah, yeah, he is. Obviously. But, all right. Let me. Add, I was confused by the me, irrational decision. Let me go back to Jay. Uh, did this guy uh, ever get laid before? Yeah, like did Mother Teresa ever priest. fuck? I always wondered that. So you, so did somebody fuck Mother Teresa in the throat? Did she's one? So Why? She's just a lady. Did, when she was a young chick, did one guy lay her back on the bed and fucking hang her head over it, give her a good fucking throat yogurt? So now the, you guys just fucking trolling for another suspension. <laughs> Why? No, no, You're allowed right. to say that. This is actually all right. She's dead. I know now. I know the rules now. Finally. All right. I don't know. I would say that fucking no, anywhere. I, I, I mean, I guess we could clean it up, but if the guy was having sex before he became a priest, that seems like... How I didn't say that. Well, I'm asking if he did. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but if let's say he did. How do you how do you now move on from that? I don't, I don't Larry? understand. Larry? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, I live with a woman who made a decision of faith. I live with a fundamentalist born-again believer. And I understand... How it, how that decision is made, I, I, I understand it. 
that doesn't mean and, it, and, it, and it's not for me to make. I don't my wife or her beliefs, right? But, but she is a true and it, wor and it works for her. I, I understand that. And, and and my cousin Ronnie, the pastor, I was sitting next to him in the balcony of the church and not paid attention to the evangelist hmm. when when the Holy Spirit touched him and he went down and 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 made a confession of faith and became a pastor. He did that when he was five. I find that a lot of them, dude. A lot of them are running away. I understand. I find, Larry, I think a lot of them are running away from something, not consciously, but the reason that there's a lot of pedophiles in the church is not because the church is intrinsically evil, it's because people go there thinking it's going to save them from themselves. I, I, I feel there's just as many pedophiles, and I'm going to stick up for Catholicism here, I think there's just as many pedophiles in temples and Judaism, it, the, the Catholics have got, believe me, they've earned it, don't yeah. get me wrong, but it's getting the press, but if you're going to tell me that rabbis... Aren't doing the same thing, mm -hmm. and these the, like all these like fundamental Baptist preachers, you're born again evangelical, Ooh. like the Ted Haggarts of the world. Right. It's just that the Catholics. It, there's a, a deep rooted uh, prejudice no, I, towards I'll, Catholics. The Ku Klux Klan recruited women on the strict basis that you can come in here and hate Catholics because they, their memberships were so down. Because people weren't really into hating on blacks, blacks so much anymore. So the re the way the uh, the Ku Klux Klan got membership back up around a million people was, hey, the Catholics take their orders from Rome, which means they're not real Americans. That's how it swelled. You know how many Catholics died in World War II? Around six million. No, no, but I'm not coming from that place. I don't, the Klan does what they do. I'm, I'm saying the difference between Catholicism and a lot of them is the lack of sex you're allowed to have. Like, like right. rabbis, I think it attracts less me, deviance that's what makes it because more you can special. have sex. Mm -hmm. So I think deviants are less likely to become rabbis to escape their demons because you can have sex as a rabbi. I think someone whose sexual leanings are dangerous wants to go someplace where they will feel saved and, and they safe. they never have to address it. They never have to address right. it. That's why I think you have a higher level in Catholicism. It's not that Catholics no, are worse people. Or, or they just know how to keep it under wraps. Jimmy's better. wrong about that. <laughs> okay. I really think Jimmy's wrong about that. And it's because there are so many you, homosexuals in the Catholic <laughs> Church that there are seminaries that are run by homosexuals. They're called pink palaces. And I know that from a person who was, who, was, who was attacked by a priest as an adult going to seminary, and he is so angry at God about what happened to him in the seminary that he can't abide any Christian stricture of any kind. But the, 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 the Catholic Church is not a pedophile establishment. It's a homosexual establishment. Well, <laughs> ma well maybe there are a lot of... <laughs> Jesus Christ! But, <laughs> as long, all right, we straighten that out, then. All right, whatever it is. Jesus. You know what? Homosexuality, a lot of them, I think, are running from... Now I don't think it's a us. gay establishment. But a lot of them, I think, that become priests are running away mm. from that. Because I know guys that I knew on sober retreats who were priests who came out right. of the closet. Let's not let that take away from the few that truly are touched by the Spirit, and devote their lives to God. I'm sure there's, there's actually a lot more than a few are, are very ca Catholic charities. Catholics are fucking a good organization. Catholics started hospitals. Yeah, I'm not saying they're not good people. No, no, I said that but, aggressively. I didn't yeah. mean. The hierarchy <laughs> of the Catholicism, though, has brought it on themselves yes. by shipping these guys from point A to point B. Yeah. They have brought this wrath on themselves by being pigs and hiding it. And right. by fucking not addressing it. And, and that Pope right now, you're going to tell me the Pope is fucking a heterosexual male? Does anybody look at that Pope and listen to him talk and see him in his red shoes and think he's a straight guy? Of course not! Yeah, let's call my priest now. What? Come you, on, you can would, look at a guy and see that. We would be cool with your priest. I, would, I wouldn't be mean to your priest. I wouldn't be disrespectful. You're too, all right. I'm more respectful than you think. I mean, he, he's got you going back, right? He was the, was he the one that got you going back to church? No, I walked into St. Monica's and I just, I, I was overcome. I walked into St. Monica's church on a lark. I was in the neighborhood. I walked in, overcome. Hmm. I was overcome. And then I went back, and I went back again. And then I found out after the fact that's where my wife was baptized. And I was like, well, that's incredibly awesome. Like, my, my wife as a baby was baptized here by Monsignor, the same guy that I just watched a mass. Mm -hmm. And every time I go, it's like they read my file. And exactly, when I was a kid, church was incredibly boring, yeah. and I was given a pencil to draw during church because it's like a complete snore. At St. Monica's, every time, every homily, it's all, it's like they read my file. And whatever I'm, I'm going through, for some reason, they just pull some shit out of thin air. He might as well be going, Jay, let me, let me explain to you what needs to be done here. 
I've, I've never experienced that in my life. I mean, every, I'm talking every time mm -hmm. I go. Are you, do you have a problem with the organized religion, though, in general? No, I love, I love now, I'm, I got tired of telling people, no, but I'm spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I just put all my chips with that? into Catholicism <laughs> <laughs> because I love the structure. And it was the only, every part of my life uh, from my old self to my new self had had been had good structure to it and kindness and warmth and the only the only thing where I was wayward was um, I believed in a higher power and the great electron in the sky as Carlin said that doesn't judge doesn't hate whoa whoa <laughs> and uh, I just never had a place with this is this is how it goes and yeah. it's a great you sit next to homeless people there's a gay and lesbian station to the cross. Man, it's a very progressive church. Like Schwarzenegger's there, Joe Torrey's there, they accept Conan, the... Conan O'Brien is there, and there's homeless people and gay people. And they there. accept the gays. That's, the sign above that's... the door says all are welcome. That's and Monsignor Torgerson right? was almost fired because of the amount of gays and homeless people. Oh, well, that I like. And the he said, sign. He said all are welcome. How do you get past that? Because that's not just... really accepted in a lot all of places. Are wow. All are welcome. All right. He just stood there and kept saying, all are welcome. They probably made him put almost in front of that. <laughs> <laughs> almost all are welcome. You're a good a good percentage of you are welcome. All Five percent right. can go out and fuck their mothers. <laughs> Let, let's, let's talk to the young priest next. No. <laughs> you don't trust us? We're right. friends. We're friends. I would ask very respectful questions. I would, too. Like what? Because maybe you ever eat an ass? No, I would do it. Like, what's the matter with you? I would never do it. I've never done that in an interview. I would say, uh, what do you do with sexual urges? Because they have to happen... And was right there, I gotta cut you off. Right there, this guy. That's is disrespectful. Be so, he's a fucking priest. He's so what? Yeah, but I don't. I'm, How can that guy hear people's sexual confessions and hear without I'm not, being? I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not saying don't ask him that. If you and him are in in that room over there, I just maybe not ask him over the over airways there, in front okay. of a million fucking people. Where he's, I think he's that's representing a an incredible. He's he's representing. I think that's a great place because everybody wants to know that it's not disrespectful and it's a great place for him to go You know what? Here's the misconception people have and here as a man is what I do And here's how I humanize myself to people who are listening So a priest is not this this weird oracle who you can't connect to but a priest is a guy that made a decision But he there's so I love many, this juice. There's Good, right? so many people above him mm -hmm. That yeah, have one wrong move. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, you t you talk about sen not censorship, but you talk about like job oh, security. You're towing about. the company line. Okay, like hey, Father, T you, Father Tom, we heard you on uh, this show talking about your sexual urges. Like, what were you thinking? Yeah, right. And then he's at a fucking ice station in Alaska, preaching to Inuits. When it went, when it boo. That's it for the worst of Opie and Anthony. Well, gentlemen, another show. Well done. I knew what to expect. A douche chill moment. <laughs> and boy, did you deliver. <laughs> Check out the o a Show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Opie and Anthony. And catch Opie and Anthony live Monday through Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern on The Virus.